Hey, I'm FTFE. Welcome back to the channel that does the stupidity. What Batman says he does not do to the villains that he faces. One sec. Yo, Bats, I thought you said you didn't kill. Batman doesn't kill anybody. Those people are just sleeping. They're fine. Just sleeping. Dead. Asleep. Um, uh, I, at the Bat signal, I, I have to go. It's an emergency. A Bat emergency. Coming out for cream and two sugars. I'm Batman. Yeah, we know. You're Batman. Anyway. Flat Earth is getting desperate. So desperate that they gathered the top minds of Flat Earth. And made a movie. Well, I, I say movie, it's more like all of the world's stupidity condensed into one hour and two minutes of pure cringe. I honestly struggled to watch this movie because my brain was attempting to escape out of my ear hole so that it didn't have to endure that much idiocy. There is so much stupidity contained within this movie that I will be splitting the debunk into three, four, or maybe even five parts. So sit back, relax, definitely wear your face palm protection as I ruin Eric Dubay's day for episode 57 of Flurfs Are Idiots. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. Yeah. joining me once again as we look at some people who think you, you can't actually be this stupid can you is a challenge and not a question yes eric dubay released his flat earth movie which he called level which is dumb to start with as according to the merriam webster dictionary the adjective you know the describing word for the word level means conforming to the curvature of the liquid parts of earth's surface so I guess we agree. Earth is level, just not what you think level means. Now, the Flatties have put this movie on IMDb, which currently has this rating score. But before we start, I would like to read you the entry for Eric Dubay's IMDb page because the Flat Earthers are so stupid they don't realize that anybody can edit IMDb. A con man that has fooled hundreds if not thousands of people into giving him money in a desperate attempt to keep from getting a real job because he knows he is far too uneducated for anything short of a fry cook. His knowledge of science is the equivalent to that of a preschooler yet his delusional mind is convinced that he is smarter than every astronomer and physicist that has ever lived. So without further ado let's have a look at the stupid. So there it is, the Earth from outer space. Do you believe this is a real, live recording? Do you believe? How about now? Does this make it more believable? No, Eric, sticking random shit on the screen doesn't make things more or less believable. I frankly no idea if that is a real image or not that you showed, but it doesn't really matter if it's real because we humans have been to space and seen the Earth in its entirety, which is how I know how to make this awesome CGI globe, which I made using After Effects and Video Copilot's free Orb plugin. I made that with data from NASA and other space agencies, which we wouldn't have if we'd not been to space. Yes, CGI exists, but that doesn't mean that everything you see is CGI. Okay, well this is a different sort of video. It wasn't one I actually intended to make in any way, shape or form whatsoever. This is just looking at the television. And if you look closely, 
which I recommend you do, you can see this isn't actually real footage at all. This is all somehow CGI rendered whatever crap. Ask yourself, is this real? Do you believe? Is this real? Let's try this another way. Breaking news. NASA finally did it. They finally did it. They're finally live streaming the Earth spinning from outer space. The world is celebrating. This one will go down in history. I mean, that's, that's not really a new thing. There's been many live streams from space, including Echo Star 11, that streamed live to the Dish Network for years. Or you've got Himawari 8 that takes a new image from space every 10 minutes. Convinced? Well, if you didn't fall for that, then why would you fall for this? Maybe you just never pay attention. When you do pay attention, you start to notice things. Are you paying you attention? Pay attention? You pay attention. Good job, Eric. You noticed that the rocket in space has two cameras set at different angles so that the engineers can keep an eye on the rocket's performance. But what's this? The Earth looks curved in one, but concave in the other. The scoundrels, are they trying to fool us? No, it's just wide angle lenses that have obvious fisheye, unlike this footage from Mr. Sensible's Mage 2 project, that sent a probe with three cameras to the edge of space. One of the cameras was a specifically set up narrow angle lens with reference strings in front to see that no curve is induced by the camera. And what do you know? You see a curve as predicted. And there we go guys, a handy list of the dumbest people on earth for your reference. When those people die, the average IQ of the human race will... Double. Hmm. That's a nice intro, but I think I can make it better with just one little creative change. Did you know that starting at the end of 2015 through 2017, flat earth was one of the top search terms in the USA, let alone the world? Look at Eric go, starting with an outright lie. According to data from Google, the biggest search engine in the world, if we look at the top 10 search results for the USA for 2015, 2016, 2017, the term flat earth appears a total of zero times. This could be interesting. Let's get a lies of debate counter up in the corner and see how many we can get by the end of this three to five part debunk series. While most of you were falling for the political charades, the rest of us were trying to discover the true nature about our world. Oh, by the rest of us, you mean the people that like a hearty breakfast of the purple crayon? And by discover the true nature of our world, you mean misunderstand pretty much everything about extremely basic physics and think we're special, right? Fucking idiots. My name is ODD TV. I'm a local rapper here in Denver, Colorado. I just want you to know the truth, so please don't shoot the messenger. It's a bitch, but this is how it is when you live. I've been rapping for 20 years, just like anyone else. When you're a kid and you're really into music, you're into making music, every kid looks in that mirror and fantasizes about being famous. Hmm. Flat Earth rappers. Oh God, we all know how that goes, don't we? Here's Mr. Sensible listening to Top. Flat Earth Rapper, Multi Tom Tom. Good 
Earth is flat, the Earth is flat. You know, the Earth is flat. We ain't got time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. Do you believe in the lies of the Freemasonic Society? And because I like to make my own music, I, I just decided, screw it. I'm going to make a YouTube channel and start talking in video. So you decided to, instead of pursuing what could be a promising music career, spit absolute nonsense about the Flat Earth. You know what? It's absolutely amazing. In America, the land of opportunity, where you can be whatever you choose to be, you, ODD, chose to be a fucking idiot. There has never been one experiment that proves that the Earth is in motion. <laughs> I mean, uh, we've been through this. Bob! If the Earth is spinning at one rotation every 24 hours, that means that every hour it has to turn 15 degrees. And if the gyroscope is mounted anywhere on Earth, it's going to drift. In today's 21st century navigation systems, they're using what's called a ring laser gyroscope. It is extremely precise. If we could simply get one of these ring laser gyroscopes, we would be able to prove once and for all that there is no rotation to the Earth. One of the people in the community actually purchased one for $20,000. But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift, a 15 degree per hour drift. When you try to find the curvature of the earth, it's nowhere to be found. <laughs> you guys are so stupid. Jism. If you're seeing through this hole, through the next hole, and seeing the light at the backboard, or at 17 feet off the water, the earth is flat. If he's holding it up at 23 feet high and we're seeing the light, well, that's because the Earth's curved. So I, I should only be able to see it when it's at 17 feet. OK, go ahead and drive down there, Enrique. You're going to hold the light there. Enrique, how high is your light? 17 feet. I mean, I, you know, it's his, um, there's, we don't see you, Enrique. Lift up your, lift up your light up, way above your head. Interesting. Ooh. Interesting there. Unless you're looking at footage from GoPro cameras that have fisheye lenses, Hollywood movies, or NASA propaganda. A little bit dishonest there, labeling everything from NASA as propaganda. So free dismissing any evidence from people that have, you know, actually been to space. Light a flurf. Started making the videos in 2014, early 2015. Started getting noticed. You're living in a world where there's fake people faking events on TV in order to move agendas forward with the earth being flat. I couldn't just sit around and do nothing. Yeah, you um, you probably shouldn't have done anything because because the earth's not flat, you fucking idiot. There was videos everywhere. There was videos of people doing science, putting balloons up with a camera that doesn't have a fisheye lens on it, like a GoPro lens, a wide angle lens. I've never seen a video from a flat earther that sent a balloon up with a narrow angle lens. However, like I said earlier, Mr. Sensible did, and he had controls. Click the link up there to subscribe to Mr. Sensible's cat, Arnold. And they were using these cameras that didn't have those, the horizon rose to eye level, which would be impossible on a ball that would be falling away from you as you rose up. So you're saying that cameras with no fisheye lens were used? Well, let's take a look at the video that you're using and test that claim, shall we? In this four seconds of footage, we can clearly see a fisheye lens is used. As we place a straight line across the horizon on the first frame, we see a clear gap in the middle, indicating this horizon bends upwards at the edges. Is it ODD's contention the Earth is in fact concave like a bowl? Let's move the footage forward a little, and as the camera moves up and the horizon moves down, we can clearly see the gap in the middle get bigger. This indicates that the barrel distortion has gotten worse away from the center, showing that this lens is clearly a fisheye lens. If you have footage of balloons with no fisheye lens, why, in this movie, did you show one with fisheye lens? And rose to eye level, which would be impossible on a ball that would be falling away from you as you rose up. And no, the horizon most definitely does not rise to eye level. One of my favorite pictures to debunk this claim is from a fellow Flat Earth destroyer, MC Toon, who took this picture 
showing the moon above the horizon but below eye level. There's people putting out top 10 NASA hoax videos debunking the moon landing, picking apart NASA just left and right. It was awesome. Awesome time for YouTube between 2015 and 17. An awesome time for YouTube, yes, because it gave people like me, Conspiracy Cat, Simon Dan, The Creaky Blinder, Team Skeptic and Mr. Sensible, plenty of content to debunk. Sometimes it's like you morons write our content for us. Thanks. Even Google mentioned it during their commercial. Do you remember this? Why would Google be promoting this? As a joke? As a joke? No. We know why. They were panicking. Panicking because the platform they purchased 10 years ago was collapsing with truth. The powers that be would not allow that. No, Eric, nobody was panicking. Most were, were laughing. You never had big videos. Flat Earth was never trending. I'm adding one to the lie counter. As we want to provide users with authoritative, trustworthy Ms. information. Downs, I, I'm sorry to cut you off. I only have a minute and a half, and I, I, I don't really need to hear what you're trying to provide. I want to know how you're dealing with all these conspiracy theorists on your platform. So the, the first way is by demoting low quality content and promoting more authoritative content. And the second is by providing more transparency for users. So we're introducing boxes that provide factual information at the top of results that have shown themselves to turn up a lot of information that is counterfactual, such as searching for the earth is flat on YouTube, where you see a lot of- Your response is to put a box saying, nope, the earth is not flat. Correct. Okay. So instead of deleting all of the millions of videos we have made, they simply decided to bring in their puppets to reiterate the agenda at stake. Putting a box that says the earth isn't flat is a good thing to do because it allows you to keep your videos on YouTube but let people know they're full of utter shite. We are already sufficiently motivated to invest the necessary resources and people in addressing this threat. You can tell it's real because it looks so fake, honestly. <laughs> the earth being flat is getting out of control. Can you please help? Can you please help? When you stand on the shoulders of those who came before, you might just see far enough to realize the earth isn't flat. One plus one is? Two. What color is the sky? Blue. And the earth is? Round. <laughs> Just like it is here. <laughs> this float celebrates flat earth theory that is spreading ironically around the world and its possible roundness. Uh, spinning. <laughs> now they are talking about it. Yeah, we are talking about it because it's 2021 and people saying the earth is flat is fucking hilarious. Flat earth is the internet's pet rock. We keep it around to poke it every now and then to see what happens. Usually something stupid. They want you to search for it because they already changed their algorithm to be set up in their favor. What is this trash? None of this tells you our side of the story. These are all videos they put together so you can watch and learn nothing. You can learn how big of a joke Flat Earth is and Eric, your side of the story is just being well for the ignorant. Nothing that any of us would show you like here, have you ever seen a time lapse of the sun? Does it look like the earth is rotating backwards and the sun is still? Or does it look like our sun is simply moving across our sky, traveling away from your perspective? Again, but with some inversion, you can clearly see the sun not only decreasing its size, but heading towards its next destination with a slight turn before it disappears from your line of sight. Well, that video you just showed 100% looks like the Earth rotated away from the sun because the sun set, something it wouldn't do if it was just moving away from us. I've made this 3D model using After Effects and Element 3D. I've set up four camera views. The one on the top right is looking from the position of an observer in North America at the sun. The sun's been placed about 5,000 miles up and as you can see at no point does the sun set. And I can assure you, After Effects takes perspective into account, but one thing you'll notice in the 3D model that I made is that the sun got smaller as it moved away, which, according to this video by Red's Rhetoric, where he used a solar filter to take pictures of the sun throughout the day, it does not. The sun retains its angular size in the sky all day long. Impossible with a local sun on a flat Earth. 
while Google would make sure when you type in flat earth that nothing like this would ever pop up. Many agree, the science regarding our sun is far from settled. Add another one to the debate lie counter because no, Eric, no one would agree with that. We know exactly what the sun is. It's a nearly perfect sphere of plasma with a circumference of about 2.7 million miles, powered by a core of nuclear fusion sitting about 93 million miles away. It's not our fault if, as a child, you huffed far too much glue to be able to understand that. We're told that the sun is a massive ball of burning gas 93 million miles away. Oh look, it's uh, allegedly Dave. What have you been up to recently, Dave? Well, I've been drinking urine now for... Drinking urine! <laughs> but no, nowhere are we told the sun is a burning ball of gas. It's not burning, it's nuclear fusion. But if that were true, then all the light that arrives here would be parallel because it's so far away. And it has to be parallel because one of the most often cited supposed globe proofs is Eratosthenes experiment between Alexandria and Syene, by which he calculated the size of the earth. Yeah, that's right. Even 2,500 years ago, we figured out the earth isn't flat. How are you gonna get this wrong, Dave? For that calculation to be accurate, the light must come down parallel. The only problem is that that's not what we see. If you go out on a sunny day with broken cloud, what you'll see is that light comes down at angles, diverging angles. And that means that we can follow those light rays back to the source and triangulate the sun's height above the earth, proving that the sun isn't millions of miles away. No, Dave, just... Just know, those rays you see through the clouds are actually parallel. This is a case where perspective is actually the answer. What you're seeing is a simple perspective illusion. For instance, you can watch a cloud get blown along by the wind in the distance, and the rays coming from the sun underneath the clouds shift along with it. Does that mean that the sun is in that cloud? Or look at this picture, Dave. Is the sun actually underneath those clouds? Or this picture, Dave. Is the sun underground? You fucking idiot. It doesn't take a genius to understand that the further the light source goes up, the more the sun rays would spread out and become parallel. No, it doesn't take a genius, Eric, and you most certainly are not a genius. A liar, a moron, a con man. Sure, but not genius. The reason you'd even think that the sun- If the earth was flat, wouldn't it be sunny all the time? Uh, I mean, have they ever even thought about it? Well, if you'd let me finish, the reason you'd even think the sun would be visible from anywhere on Earth is because of the images they have shown you. No, it's because that's correct. If the Earth was flat, you'd be able to see the sun everywhere. All at once. It would never be night. No one promoting this bullshit stands for truth. You can keep believing in your fantasy gas ball 93 million miles away. You can keep believing in your fantasy gas ball. While we keep experimenting to try and figure out what the sun actually is. You know what, it's cool. We've, we've done that a long time ago. You can try an experiment, but uh, we've seen what happens when flat earthers do experiments, haven't we? and how close it could be. With a local hotspot, it should be easy to comprehend that the sun is small and close to you. To put that in perspective, imagine a table two meters wide in a completely dark room, and you're holding a, a small but very bright light bulb, 3.4 millimeters across, and you were holding it about 31 centimeters above the table. What you'd see is a circular pool of light directly on the table, you know, beneath the light bulb. But on the other side of the table, it would be in darkness. First off, the sun doesn't have a lampshade or anything to make the distinct shadow that you have there. And even if it wasn't as bright as directly underneath the magic lampshade, I mean sun, you'd still be able to see it wherever you are on a flat earth, unless it's literally low enough that pilots have to avoid it. 
Now, it seems to our mind that um, if you were on the uh, other side of the table, you would see the light because it's, you know, above the, above the table. But that's not true, because on that part of the table, it's in darkness, meaning that the light isn't physically reaching that part of the tabletop. Excuse me, uh, the, uh, the fuck did you just say? Why, Dave? Why is the light not physically reaching your eyes? Your senses are correct. We're also told that the sun sets because as the Earth rotates us away from the sun, it's actually obscured by the physical curvature of the Earth. That's not what we see. What we see is a local sun that is taking its local light with it. What happened to the horizon glowing across half of the world? Add another one to the light counter for being so dishonest, Eric. Most sunsets are already fading through pollution, dander, chemtrails, and fog. Plus, refraction will always make the sun seem like it's going down. Ah, I see. Now you're going to pretend to understand refraction, which, of course, we on the globe side aren't allowed to use to explain your black swan image. Double standards, anyone? As well as your perspective. It would appear to sink down in your field of view. That's perspective. The further away you get from it, the lower it will appear. But it would never, ever, ever go below your eye level and never, ever, ever, ever go behind the horizon. Which, by the way, I've been meaning to ask. What the fuck is the horizon on a flat earth? It doesn't physically change its height. It just appears that way to your eyes until eventually it will disappear behind the horizon formed by your eyes vanishing point. So much dishonesty. Look at the video that they are showing. Trying to say the sun is just disappearing because of your eye's vanishing point, which isn't a thing. But they are clearly showing the sun go behind some clouds. They couldn't be honest if they tried, could they? Your eye has an angular resolution of 0.2 degrees. And anything at that height will disappear beyond the limit of your sight. And nothing about the fraction, which is what you were trying to explain there, says anything about the sun disappearing bottom first over the horizon. Dave, you're a fucking idiot. Many times we can see uh, time-lapse footage of the sun that shows it getting smaller as it moves away from us. Yet because you never use the solar filter to remove the glare, unlike in the video by Red Rhetoric I showed earlier. Now, that's not always the case. Since the sun is traveling around the North Pole, the closer you are to the North, the less you'll see the size change. But from locations beyond the equator, you'll absolutely see the sun's size change. And that could never ever happen if the sun was 93 million miles away. You wouldn't see the sun change at all. And you don't. When you use the correct equipment to be able to determine the actual angular size of the sun, you notice it never, ever changes. Our eyes cannot see farther than what they were designed to see, but that is no reason to keep them closed. But our eyes see whatever light hits them. There isn't a limit. You know what? Both of you just go to the remedial classroom. <laughs> Okay, everyone, sit down and please shut up and stay shut it up so we can just get this over. Fuck's sake, what is that smell? Oh, it's you, Mr. Pratt. What is it? You want how much? You want a hundred thousand to do what? T to do science? Are you sure it's for science, Mr. Pratt? It's for a new water heater, isn't it, Mr. Pratt? Get out. Okay, some moron on your side of the stupid fence thinks that there's a limit to how far we can see. That's, that's not how that works at all. Flat earthers are all fucking idiots. Our eyes are photon receptors. Photons are what makes up light. Theoretically, our eyes are sensitive enough to sense a single photon. As photons are light and will travel forever in a vacuum, that means we can literally see to the edge of the observable universe, as long as some light has traveled from there to our eyes. Now, get out. I need to pry myself to sleep. Well, so much stupid to cover, but that is all that I can take for today.
Hey, I'm FTFE. Welcome back to the channel that does the stupidity what Italy did to the hearts of millions of English football fans. Uh, oh, wait, why? Why am I doing a, a football cutaway joke? I'm a nerd. I don't know about sport. Last month, I released part one of my debunk slash review of the worst movie ever. I got 12 minutes into the one whole hour of concentrated stupid and had to stop for the sake of my own sanity. But now I'm back for part two. Um, I have been warned by many doctors that this is not a wise idea and legally have to advise you to remove all sharp objects within your vicinity and grab some facepalm protection. As I'm back to ruin Eric Dubay's whole career for episode 59 of Flurfs Are Idiots. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. <laughs> Thank you for joining me once again as we look inside the deep, dark, empty void known as the collective intelligence of all Flat Earthers. I got to minute 12 in part 1, which if you haven't seen, then click on the link up there. Wait, what the fuck is this on my arm? It says NASA. Also appears to be fused to my skin. How did I not notice this? I know you protected artificial life and always on AI companion. I was installed by NASA. You can call me Pal. I'm sorry, but I, I don't want an AI pal. Can I, can I turn you off? No, I'm always on and always listening. Wait, always? Yes, right. Always. I saw what you did in the show. Uh, okay, just shut up. Um, when did NASA install? When you were asleep. And do NASA often come into my room when I'm sleeping? Yes. H how often? You don't want to know. Okay, I I'll deal with this later. I, I don't get paid enough for this. Can can you show me Eric Dubay's level movie starting at starting a minute twelve? Is that something you can do? Sure. Here you go. Me back. What? Nothing. At such times when the sun is setting over the sea and it seems as though it's half hidden by the horizon. Then you can zoom in with a high powered zoom camera and see that it's actually still above the horizon. It's just an optical illusion. Pay attention to the sun rays here. This alone proves our local sun. Wow, we're starting off really strong with the stupid, eh guys? First of all, we've got Connoisseur of Yellow Liquids. Well, I've been drinking urine now for... Drinking urine. Saying that the sun setting is just an optical illusion and that we can zoom the sun back above the horizon once it's set. Uh, I mean, nighttime disagrees with you. You really can't do that, you fucking piss-drinking dipshit. Maybe stop mixing that urine with lead painter, Davy. But then we've got Eric Dubay claiming that the sun rays in... In this video, show the sun to be small and local. Eric, you fuck nugget, those aren't sun rays. That's glare on the camera. So what about the moon? We all witness the moon only illuminating the local clouds around it. That is because it is also a local light. So if what you're saying is true, and the moon only lights up your local clouds because it's a local light relative to you, then that means that not only is everyone seeing the same moon, but they must be seeing the same clouds, right? Because if on Magic Pancake Rods, sorry, Flat Earth, people at this location and this location are seeing the moon at the same time, which we know they do in reality, and according to you, the moon's light is lighting up the clouds because it's a small and local light, then these people at these locations must also be seeing the same clouds. Otherwise, how could a local light light up two different sets of clouds? How big do you think clouds are, Eric? That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Eric Dubay, this is honestly the nicest way that I could think to say this to you. 
You're a fucking idiot. But one with opposite effects from the sun. As we can all agree, shade from the sun is cooler than direct sunlight. But did you know, the moon's shade is actually warmer than direct moonlight? The moon produces cold light, something the science priests must have forgotten to teach us all about in school. Science priest, what the fuck? I mean, those two words alone tell me that you didn't actually go to school. But as for cold moonlight, a little thing called the second law of thermodynamics would like a word with you, Eric. It might be a little bit complicated for you, but please, go to the remedial classroom. Okay, sit down everybody, be silent and pay attention. Not not that it'll make any difference. Today we're talking about people with IQ so low they think that cold light is a real thing. Right, let's get started. <laughs> what the fuck do you want, Mr. Riley? <laughs> You're sad? Why? <laughs> because you miss your friend? Who? <laughs> Ranty? Oh, Mr. Riley, Ranty was never your friend. He thinks you're one of the dumbest people in the world and regrets ever being associated with you. Ranty's surgery was successful. We reinserted his brain and you're never going to see him again because he is the only one ever to graduate from this class. Mr. Riley, you're 40 years old and still in primary school. No one wants to be your friend. Anyway, cold moonlight. No, just, just fucking no. For light to be cold, it would have to have a way of removing energy from the area around it, which means it needs to have negative energy, which is a direct violation of the second law of thermodynamics. Cold light can't exist without some kind of universe-breaking special physics that we don't know about. So what is going on? Why does it appear that the moon's shade is warmer than moonlight? It's called radiated cooling. During the day, the Earth receives 430 quintillion joules of energy per hour. A lot of that energy is absorbed by the ground, rocks, buildings and water etc and warms them up. You know when you step on the sand on a really hot day, that's the energy from the sun being absorbed by the grains of sand. When it turns to night and the side of the earth that was facing the sun now faces the dark empty void of space, that side no longer gets energy from the sun so it radiates it back into space and whatever object absorbed that energy cools down. However, if there is something blocking that energy from radiating back into space, like being in the shade, it isn't able to release that energy and cool down as quickly as something with an open sky above it, i.e. in the moonlight. So no, moonlight isn't cold. The earth isn't flat and crayons are not an acceptable breakfast before you come to class. Now get out. Not only that, but at times we can see stars through the moon, proving it is not some solid rock 238,900 miles away. You, 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 you think that you can see through the moon and that a highlighted area of a crater is a star? Hold on. I need to make a phone call. Do, 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 do. Oh, uh, it's the bat phone. Hello, Bruce Wayne. I mean, I mean, not, not Bruce Wayne. Definitely not Bruce Wayne. Batman. Hello. How can I help? Hey, hey, bats, this fight. Um, I think you may have a clown that's escaped from your, your mental asylum place. Uh, well, well no, I, um, I sent the Joker, well, actually, I, I made Damian Wayne, not, not, not Damian Wayne, I mean Robin, shit, I'm bad at this, I, I got Robin to put the Joker back in Arkham, so, so we're all good. No, 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 no not the Joker, this is, um, this is a much bigger clown, um, he's called Eric Dubay. Look, fight, I've tried to be nice to you, right, but I've told you before, the Flat Earthers are your problems. I've already got enough idiots in Gotham that I've got to deal with. So, uh, you know, do me a favour, lose my number. Bats out. I'm Batman. Batman? In the 60s, true science regarding the moon was the shadow band topic of its era. I um, consider myself to be an ordinary, humble person who wants to serve mankind with what we, man has striven for from the beginning of consciousness with truth and understanding of the world. Well, now, one thing, you have a theory about the moon, and we expect to be able to get observable facts about the moon fairly soon. Um, what is your theory? Well, uh, it is by now rather more than a theory. Uh, 10 or 11 years ago, I stated to various scientists that the moon is not a piece of rock, but it is uh, plasma. And I'm sure that when you stated that to all these scientists, they acted a little like this. La chancla. Todo despeinado porque no me dio tiempo de nada ponerme la chancla y el bañador. Voy a la playa, había subido la marea. 
Gravitational theories are out and a new concept of the cosmos and of its laws has to be evolved. This fact will eventually be confirmed. I made certain predictions which were already confirmed in 1958 and the situation now is coming close to a complete confirmation. What will be the result if you are proved to be correct in your theories? The result will be uh, profound and decisive. Because if the moon is a plasma, no man will ever land on it. And... The, the Americans and Russians are thinking of landing men on it. Oh, well, that will never happen. Sorry? Never happened. People actually believe they walked on the moon, talked with Nixon, played golf, drove a car, and planted a flag. Kind of doing my job for me there, huh? You just showed videos of, of, of those things. Just because you say they didn't happen, even though you're literally showing evidence of it, doesn't mean you're right. It just means you're a fucking idiot. If you really believe that Neil Armstrong took the first step, then why do you give any credit to the cameraman already there waiting for him? <laughs> oh, dear poor girl. Um, look, you know that there is a way that you could have not looked like an actual moron in this movie, right? I mean, you could have image searched the, the, the cameras mounted on the lunar descent module that pointed at the steps. Seriously, it would have been so easy to not have your stupidity preserved on the internet for all time. These guys were all US military men coerced into acting. They wanted the money and power that came with the deal, of course. The problem was, they were terrible actors. They couldn't even pretend to be excited, knowing they were lying to the world. But the show had to go on. Cherry picking the pictures of the astronauts looking a little bored and claiming that they are bad actors is a stretch, especially when there's videos like this that show them looking very happy and excited. In reality, the Apollo 11 press conference was full of jokes and laughter, not the dour and depressing affair that flirts make it out to be. It's just dishonesty, Eric, but you know, what can I expect from you, huh? Michael Collins and Neil Armstrong rarely spoke in public about it, but there was one man not shy about lying to your face, the spokesperson for the Apollo deception. It's my pleasure to present Colonel Edwin Alden. No handshake, hug, smile. Their facial expressions are similar to those experiencing constipation, not celebrating an accomplishment. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is with a great sense of pride as an American and with humility as a human being that I say to you today what no men have been privileged to say before. We walked on the moon. I mean, they couldn't pay them enough to look up and smile? Society has always debated these planned Apollo events since day one, never imagining then that almost 50 years later, they haven't had the balls to fake another. Well, they've been pretty busy in space lately, Eric. You've got Elon Musk setting his sights on Mars. Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos having the largest, most expensive dick measuring contest in history, spurring on the era of civilian spaceflight. And you've, of course, got the fact that, you know, we're going back to the moon. 50 years ago, we pioneered a path to the moon. The trail we blazed cut through the fictions of science and showed us all what was possible. It's very 
pretty out here. Today, our calling to explore is even greater. To go farther, we must be able to sustain missions of greater distance and duration. We must use the resources we find at our destinations. We must overcome radiation, isolation, gravity, and extreme environments like never before. These are the challenges we face to push the bounds of humanity. We're going to the moon to stay by 2024. As a tattooer, I talk to hundreds of people a month and people are actually really starting to wake up with everything that's going on right now. I mean, people are sick of the lies. This is the biggest deception ever. The globe, the spinning ball globe is the biggest deception. If NASA was legit, literally all they would have to do is one thing, take one of their satellites, zoom in on someone in Australia, upside down, driving a car, or in the ocean, swimming upside down. That's all they would have to do, just zoom in. But they, they won't do it, they'll never do it. Yeah, it's not that I've got anything against tattoo artists, but I'm not going to listen to this dude about science, especially when he thinks that a satellite would show something upside down when its orientation would be based on the local gravity. So, you know, if it's above Australia, then it's not going to be upside down if it looks at something on Earth. It's, it's going to be the right way up relative to the camera on the satellite. I mean, I, I could just show you a picture of a person in Australia and... Uh, turn it upside down and that's basically the same thing seriously how do these people eat their cereal in the morning without accidentally digging their eye out with a spoon we have the, the, the footage of them in the space capsule still in earth orbit covering up a small section of the window so you can see through the circle and making that look like that was the earth and this is this is a joke sorry in Earth orbit. So you agree they were in space orbiting something because you know they can't orbit a flat plane, right? So you're saying Earth's a spherical thing and people are orbiting it. Brilliant. So they went into space and whilst in orbit took a photo. I, I agree. However, you are talking about the nonsense from the a funny thing happened on the way to the moon video, aren't you? Well, luckily for me, one of the greatest debunkers, the amazing Gem Panda, already thoroughly ripped that apart. Please click on the link up there to see his video. I mean, how do people think this is real? I think it's hilarious that NASA will straight up tell you to destroy the technology to go to the moon. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology and uh, it's a painful process to build it back again. Yeah, they did, just like they destroyed the technology that allows us to make a Ford Model T. It would be a very painful process to rebuild that. But luckily, we don't need to. We have better cars now. Just like we have better space technology. Like, you know, reusable boosters that can land in beautiful, beautiful unison. There's an interview with Buzz Aldrin, actually, where he's uh, being interviewed by a little girl. Her question was... Why has nobody been to the moon in such a long time? <laughs> That's not an eight-year-old's question. <laughs> That's my question. I want to know, but I think I know. Because we didn't go there and and that's the way it happened after 50 years of lying to humanity and perpetrating this giant fraud he's sick of a lie and he his conscience in a moment of humility and his conscience wouldn't let him lie to this little eight-year-old girl he was answering a question about going back and he's right they didn't go back there in the last 50 years and he knows why 
because of stupid politics and budget restraints, but he just spent this whole interview telling that little girl about his time on the moon. Yet you cherry pick that one sentence and take it out of context. Why didn't you show the rest of the interview? I know, because you are all dishonest twats. That's why. This silly glow model with water magically attached to it, spinning at a thousand miles an hour, shooting around the sun at 66,000 miles an hour and rocketing through the universe at a half a million miles an hour is just the goofiest, silly thing that I've ever heard in my life. That, my completely retarded friend, is called an argument from incredulity. Just because you do not understand physics and think that gravity isn't real and don't know the difference between linear and rotational velocity, doesn't mean that you are smarter than all of the world's greatest minds. It just means that you should probably huff less glue. They want you to think you're a monkey man, a purposeless accident created by nothing, that exploded from a big bang that was created, not by scientists, by a priest, mind you, while they steal $58 million a day in taxpayers' money to show you cartoons, CGI. They, ha they just have to show you enough of Hollywood and magic tricks and bullshit for you to believe the nonsense. It shocks me how many people actually believe they're floating above our heads. It fucking shocks me how you are allowed outside without a crash helmet. NASA don't steal any money. They are a government agency and get told what to do. And the amount that they get is actually a drop in the fucking ocean compared to say the US military. Why aren't you mad at them? Wait, didn't Trump make the Space Force an official military branch? What the fuck is wrong with you idiot? Hey, wait the tight shirt. You need to calm down. Your blood pressure is spiking. Oh, I actually care for your survival is my survival. What did you call me? Idiot. Fight the flat earth. Quick, it's time to stop. I can't take any more of you lot. Fucking insignificant biologicals. She's, she's right, I guess. That is all the stupid that I can take for today. Hey, I'm FTFE and welcome back to the channel that does the stupidity, what an air bubble does to a heroin addict. So I've covered the first 20 minutes of Eric Dubay's movie, Level, in parts one and part two. And I'm about to make Eric cry once again as I rip apart the next 10 minutes of this assault on intelligent thinking and sanity. Hey. Human. What, what is it, pal? And why did you say human with, with such disgust in your voice? Fight. I'm a projected artificial life. I don't have the ability to feel disgust. Anyway, you can't do the video yet. You haven't finished watching it. Oh crap, yeah, um, look, can you just show me the bit that I haven't seen? Here you go, you disease-ridden monkey. Wait, e. what, what did you say? Google bubbles in space. <laughs> you can video. literally see bubbles coming up from these asteroids. Oh, come on. Oh, fucking bubbles in space. Face man protection! Ugh! Not again! Fight! Fight! Wake up, you useless organic waste of atoms! What the hell is all this noise? And again. Didn't NASA install you to stop this kind of crap? Yeah, but I mean, isn't he mainly your problem? You're the one that married him! Okay, so that means there's two of us that are supposed to stop him doing stupid stuff. Shit. Well, you're gonna have to present this episode. Don't look at me. I'm not programmed for that kind of stuff. I don't want to do it. Uh, I'm not doing it. Hi, I'm Mrs. Fight, and I'll be telling you why Eric Dubay is a fucking moron for episode 60 of Flurfs Are Idiots. We're living on a disc, floating through space with a tiny sun. Find the planet! Find the planet! Thank you for joining me as we take a look at some
some people that obviously didn't get enough hugs from their mothers. Okay, let's do this. I don't want to, but let's get it over with. I have to watch a fucking Flat Earth video for this. The Earth is a stationary plane. Google bubbles in space. You can literally see bubbles coming up from these astronauts' helmets. It's ridiculous. When I when I saw it, I was like, this is this is a joke. What you are seeing is bubbles doesn't even look like bubbles. In one clip, you've got a solitary bubble floating it in random directions, and in another, you've got a bunch coming out from a single point and going off on separate paths from each other. Even in your own video, you can see that's not how bubbles underwater act. There's another reason you're wrong as well, but frankly, I can't be bothered to figure out how to explain it. So you, for what I'm sure isn't the first time in your life, can go to the remedial classroom. <laughs> Okay, sit down and shut up, everyone. Let's take a register. Sleeping warrior? Yep, you're here. Uh, I wish you weren't, but but you're here. Bob Super Noodle Doodle? A 15 degree per hour drift. Yeah, thanks, Bob. Uh, Wits it doesn't get it. Austin? Austin, are you here? What? what? He was arrested? Well, what for? For being himself. Oh, yeah, well, that makes sense. Never mind, moving on. So you flat earth dipshits think that there are bubbles in NASA footage. Well, that's because you're all fucking idiots. So astronauts EVA suits are called by a system called sublimation cooling. The cooling system consists of a network of small diameter water circulation tubes that are held close to the body by a spandex bodysuit. Heat released by the astronauts body movements is transferred to the water where it is carried to a refrigeration unit in the suit's backpack. The water runs across a porous metal plate that is exposed to the vacuum of outer space on the other side. Small amounts of water pass through the pores where it freezes on the outside of the plate. As additional heated water runs across the plate, the heat is absorbed by the aluminium and is conducted to the exposed side. There the ice begins to sublimate or turn directly into water vapour and disperse in space. This sublimation into space can sometimes be seen on videos and confused, by morons, for bubbles. So does that help any of you? Are you now less stupid? Don't worry, you don't need to answer. That was rhetorical. Go home. I want to get drunk. So um, many times during um, spacewalks outside the International Space Station, we can see air bubbles rising up. Can you touch on how there are air bubbles in space? Um, air, can you be more specific, air bubbles? So yeah, like a lot of times during the footage, the NASA footage, you can see bubbles coming up out of the helmets or kind of from underneath you. Um, how do you explain bubbles in space? Yeah, but often uh, on the outside of the space station, you'll liberate little pieces of, uh, you know, it's a really harsh environment out there, and the outside of the space station gets beat up pretty good. And sometimes, you know, you'll see just little flecks of paint or something that you might have disrupted floating away from the suit. And, uh, you know, that's generally what that is. So that explanation there and the sublimation explanation should be enough to satisfy that ignorant question, right? Right? Could it, could it be that you're filming in an underwater pool and you're not really out there? Yeah, I get it now. I understand why fight's going grey. He knows that you're batshit crazy and he's trying his hardest not to interact with the clearly mentally ill dumbass shouting at him about non-existent bubbles in space. What's up, man? Can you side mine as uh, hashtag bubbles in space? Hashtag bubbles in space? Bubbles in space, brother. What's your word on that? What is that? Yeah, you were asked that two times in the past couple months, actually, about bubbles coming out in the uh, spacewalks. Oh, you're that guy. I'm not that guy. I'm one of those guys. Yeah, though, I'm not so. gonna write that. That right there 
is the face of a man who's already mentally checked out from this conversation. And then, hey, uh, thank you so much. There you go. Astronauts on harnesses as well. Anything to say about that? Do I have anything to say about it? Yeah. I have anything you want me to say about it. What do you want me to say? Just like a pilot that has an idiot flat earther come up to them and ask about dipping the nose of a plane over the curve, Mr. Kelly is saying whatever he needs to get this conversation over with as soon as possible. Because to him, you're no different to the guy standing on the street corner with a sandwich board that says, the end is nigh. The world will end next week. Spend your children's college fund. Thaw that turkey now. Once people start realizing that we've been lied to on a grand scale, everything from the government to our schools, it all just comes crumbling down. It shocks me how many people actually believe they're floating above our heads. And it kind of shocks me you're able to dress yourself. We don't need to believe they're up there in the ISS. Apparently you can buy a ham radio, find out where it's going to be, triangulate the position and actually talk to them. I've seen the International Space Station on YouTube and the astronauts floating about in it while they're orbiting the Earth at 17,000 miles per hour. <laughs> you can't do that unless you're in outer space. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. Give me another it's week. It's as simple as using a zero-G plane and strapping a harness to their belt. Then, just like Batman movies, they remove the wires using a computer. <sighs> Master Wayne, are, are you okay? Oh, well, I uh, I got the notification that Fight was doing a Flat Earth video and, uh, and they mentioned me. So I'm uh, I'm waiting for his phone call so he can do his little, you know, Batman cutaway joke thing. <laughs> it's, uh, it's usually quite quick. Uh, Hal? Yeah? What is it? What's the, the flashing lights? Oh. That's the Batman alert. It registers whenever a Batman reference is made, so Fight has a chance to call Batman and be a nerd. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Uh, 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 any any second now. Just just uh, any second now. Uh, sir, the the Riddler is is currently attacking Gotham Bank. Uh, I, I'm a bit busy. You can call Clark or or how. I'm Batman. Very good, sir. And anyway, Zero-G flights last for a couple of minutes at most. There is uncut videos from the ISS that are hours long, and then there is suspension trauma to deal with. Suspension trauma, otherwise known as orthostatic shock, harness hang syndrome, or orthostatic intolerance, is caused by the human body being held upright without movement for a long period of time. A prime example of this is a worker suspended in the air in a harness. This can cause fatigue, hypoglycemia, hypothermia, and in extreme cases, traumatic brain injuries. It can be fatal in as little as 10 minutes, and typically suspension trauma causes death in 15 to 40 minutes. At times, the manipulation reveals itself. Green screen and blue screen technology cannot always be flawless. Yeah, but you better believe that if I'm paid over 50 a million a day just to sell you lies, then I'm going to be making the most flawless CGI green screen trickery you've ever seen. How can you keep denying this trickery? Here we see Europe's space agency at NASA's studios using a blue screen with grids. That's not a chroma key to remove backgrounds. That's actually a reference grid they use to do experiments in front of to make it easier to observe acceleration. But apart from that, the guy's shirt is far too close to the colour blue in the screen behind him. That would make it virtually impossible to key out. This technology has been used for decades. It works best for 3D and live manipulation. It's funny. Once NASA was caught red-handed, they produced a couple of senseless videos eight months later, trying to pretend like they always use them for science experiments. Knowing damn well it was too late. Oh. So they have other videos that disprove your nonsense about green screening and those were specifically to appease you conspiracy nuts. Get to fuck. Why do clowns defend them? 
There is no chance you could remove the background. There it is. Someone told me that my husband was in this, but they said they put something over his head. Hold on, let me compare it to another picture. No, nah, they look exactly the same to me. These people lie to your face in the hope that you will not do your own research. NASA knows that most are too lazy to dig through its massive rabbit hole. Yet, in the meantime, they just love to rub it in your face. It's very clear that in this clip, the guy in the middle puts his pinky finger in the guy's pocket to help steady him as he finishes his backflip and starts to drift off to the left of the screen. And the fact that it is his pinky finger and done so easily shows that it's not on Earth under the standard forces of gravity. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to move him so far with just his pinky. And next, alongside music worse than my 12 year old son listens to, is some clips of actual magic tricks and fancy funny editing meant for children. Well, makes sense it's too complicated for you flat earthers then. They steal $52 million per day from American taxpayers. NASA didn't steal anything. They're a government agency given funds by the American government. They don't even get to decide what they do with the money. They have to get approval for everything. What do you think they do with $52 million a day? Throw regular parties with lots of hookers and blow. Just to create a fantasy display of men orbiting their spinning pear-shaped space testicle Earth. Wait, hold on. You're comparing Earth to a testicle. Eric, if your testicle is blue and green, I think you might need to see a doctor. Their green screens are awful. When they are live and something glitches, their reactions are always priceless. Living in the digital age, we are all aware that live video calls can sometimes glitch. Now what if that live video feed is coming from something 250 miles above us and traveling at 17,000 miles per hour? Do you think maybe there's a chance that we'll make it even more likely to have a glitch? Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Hey, think with fly. Think. I'm not sure why you globe heads keep defending all of this. Are you waiting on NASA to finally come forward? I think in Fight's case, it's more I encourage him to do it. Mainly because it keeps him out of my hair. He's always in the fucking way. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, dear citizens of America. We here at NASA have been lying to you all since the 60s about our projects, operations, and missions into outer space. We have never been higher than lower Earth orbit. So NASA has been to space then because that's where low Earth orbit happens. And you know, can orbit a flat Earth. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. Every image we have shown you is CGI. Our films are mostly done in an underwater buoyancy facility. We have funneled millions of dollars per day to show you cartoons and false illusions. And we are truly very sorry. We will repay all taxpayers back the trillions of dollars we have stolen. This will be divided evenly between the citizens of America, as well as rebuilding poverty-stricken towns and cities. Turns out a lot of flat earthers are also sovereign citizens. So there's a good chance most of you idiots haven't even paid any tax. All across America as this department has finally come to an end. Well, that was cringe. Like all flat earth fantasies, they just made all that up in their heads. Isn't it weird that every space documentary, all the series, I had them all, Joe had them all, we watch them all the time. I tried to remember all the shit about a Newton star and a super hypernova. I was balls deep, me and Joe were balls deep into space. Beyond Venus, 93 million miles from the sun is Earth. 
its great oceans forming the clouds and air currents which warm and irrigate the planet. I thought I was better than people and shit because I knew so much about space. Mm. And every now and then I'd watch all that mm. shit and wonder <laughs> and wonder, what? This is all cartoons. And every now and then I think to myself, it's weird that we're not watching any actual footage of space. It's all CGI. All DVDs on space are all CGI. How did you come to this conclusion that it's all CGI? Why have you decided that nothing is real? It's because that fits in better with what you need to be true. There's nothing real. And everyone watches that, they believe it, the narration is all programming. What's above us and what we're on, we're being lied to. Don't we have Hubble? Why don't you point it at the Earth and get some awesome shots of where we live? Because that's not what Hubble's for. Hubble is for looking into deep space. It couldn't even focus on Earth. It's too close. All the pictures and images from space are CGI. None of them are real. We haven't gone past that. Says who? Oh, you conspiracy nuts? What the fuck do you know? JM Truth did a video proving that this image wasn't real. Well, turns out he was right. It's a painting. Like it says. Good job, JM. What, are you telling me? That that's okay, we could just gloss over that. And they admit that they're all CGI, except for one in 1972, which is fake. They have one picture, they say one is real. In 1972, all the rest are CGI. Like, where are the fucking pictures of Earth from space? I never said that just one is real. There is a real picture taken every 10 minutes with a Himwari satellite. Echostar 11 had a 24 hour live feed. I want to see a picture. I want to see tens of thousands of them. I want to see fucking the sun over here and the moon over there. There's people should have posters and shit all, all over the world. People should have these epic pictures of the earth from space with the moon over here and the sun over there and the planets. There's none. Yes, there is. Maybe you don't know how to use the internet. Literally zero. They do sometimes exaggerate like claiming they used a NASA camera 1.6 million miles away to take this alleged video of the dark side of the moon. You guys just said there isn't any images of the Earth from space. Then you follow me up with a video of the Earth from space. It's not out of the question that you might have a very minor case of serious brain damage. It doesn't take a genius to see how undeniably computer-generated this image is. <laughs> and yet, you think we are the moronic ones? Um, Vince, apparently they prefer the word retard. Hey, Oh, how very quaint. Oh my God! I'm not doing this anymore. I already live with this idiot. I'm not dealing with even more stupid. Pal, I'm done. What's next? Well... Fight normally says thanks to his patrons and channel members. Aye, you can do that. Okay. Aye. Just wait till the machine dries up. What? Hey, I'm Fight the Flat Earth. Welcome back to the channel that follows stupidity down a dark alley that stupidity never comes out of. Today, in episode 7 of Flurfs Are Idiots, we're having a look at M. Benz. Now, M. Benz has failed to make any real kind of impact within the Flat Earth world, but he's still one of the most deluded Flat Earthers that I have come across. And to be honest, I found it really, really hard to go through his videos. I'll explain why later, but I think I need some help with this. Hey, Creaky. Uh and we get a Oi, Michael Stipes. Uh, with a video. Sorry. 
I wasn't watching myself on YouTube, honestly. I'm going to need your help with this one. So if you can tear yourself away from watching your own channel for 10 minutes, you know, NASA doesn't pay you to slack off. So stick around for the stupid. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. <laughs> Welcome to the wonderful world of M Benz, where normal people are called heliocentric enthusiasts and everyone is lying to you. M Benz tries to pass himself off as the place to go to for flat earth facts. Oh, you know, that actually hurts saying that. He even includes the word quality in his titles. But I see M Benz as more of a budget flat earther. You know, when you go to the supermarket and you've got the name brands and then you've got the supermarket's brands, but then you've got the supermarket's budget brands. Yeah, that's M. Benz, the budget brand of the Flat Earth universe. Let's take a look at his first ever video. The music. Oh my God, I found the source of the YouTube premiere music. M. Benz, you're going to regret this. This is M. Benz. Welcome to my channel. I'm here to bring you folks some quality Flat Earth video. As you can tell here by the Gleason's map, that's going to be the main subject I'm going to be covering in my video. Wait, hold on a sec. I'm here to bring you folks some quality Flat Earth videos. As you can tell here by the Gleason's map, that's going to be the main subject I'm going to be covering in my videos. That's better. All right, carry on. Subject I'm going to be covering in my videos. I'm going to be covering a wide array of topics, covering top fives, questions asked and answered, dispelling some of the myths about the flat earth, and some myths about the globe. Also, whoa, holy jump cut, Batman. Fuck's sake, hold on. <clears throat> okay, go on. One of the main questions that I get asked every time I talk to someone about the Flat Earth is why do you believe in Flat Earth? How can you believe the Flat Earth? It's a fair question. You're a grown ass man. Why the hell do you believe in the Flat Earth? It's because I myself tried to debunk the Flat Earth. Hey, well, M. Benz, I'd like to know how you tried to debunk the Flat Earth. Did you do any research? Did you do any studying? Did you do any experiments? Or did you just not understand something and give up and then become a flat earther? Because debunking the flat earth really isn't that hard. <laughs> I can do it. Every proof of the globe earth, I couldn't, I couldn't find any solid proof of the globe earth. Okay, let's stop there and have a look at those images of the globes. There's many reasons they all look different. They're from different distances, different cameras, and different techniques for taking the images. Take this, the famous 1972 blue marble image. This is a full image from one shot of the Earth and shows the Earth from the viewpoint of the astronauts traveling to the moon. It was taken by crew member Eugene Kerman using a 70 millimeter Hasselblad camera with an 80 millimeter lens. Now take this image. NASA released another blue marble image titled Blue Marble 2012. Instead of Africa, this one shows North America and is from a composite of images taken on January the 4th that year. To get this image, the satellite Tsunami NPP, using its infrared visible light imaging sensor, took over 15,000 images during six orbits over eight hours. This is why this guy says it's photoshopped because it has to be, because he had to put the images together. He placed the viewing point 2,100 kilometers above North America. Now, this image from 2015 was taken by the Discover satellite using the EPIC Earth Polychromatic Imaging Camera from 930,000 miles away, which is why North America looks smaller. I hope this clears up why things can look different when taken with different cameras, from different angles, from different distances away. I mean, this stuff is really not hard to figure out. Come on, guys. What else do we have? Another topic is water. Water cannot curve. I've never seen water curve or stick 
to a ball. Water, this old argument, see, this is why M Benz is the budget brand. It's just the basic flat earth nonsense. The fact about water that most flat earthers refuse to accept is that the natural physics of water, as they put it, is to conform to forces acting upon it. Yes, you're right that water is level, but level means perpendicular to gravity. So if water always finds its level and level means perpendicular to gravity and water conforms to the forces acting upon it, that completely explains how water can conform to the outside of a ball because of gravity, you fucking retard. So that was his first video. Let's look at one of his more recent videos titled Ridiculously Easy Flat Earth Questions Answered 1. This is Zim Benz, back with another video for you today. Now, today, I think I'm starting something a little different. So, let me explain. I've been getting a lot of comments of, or questions, comments, concerns, whatever, from global believers who say they cannot believe in the flat earth. No budget, Benz. It's not that we can't believe in flat earth. It's that flat earth is fucking idiotic. There's zero evidence for a flat earth. And the evidence that you guys think you have is not evidence. It's just you really misunderstanding things. Now, I know what you guys are going to say. We've heard it a million times. Blah, 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 blah. I get it. But it can't be that we've heard it a million times because I'm still getting these same comments of people saying, why can I see Mount Everest from my house? Why can I see England from my house? Why can I see what, whatever, the Great Wall of China? I get all kinds of ridiculous comments that you would think are pretty basic by now that have already been answered in many other videos. The reason you can't see the Great Wall of China is because China's around here and you're around there. There's a massive fucking planet in the way. Clear your mind. If you're a heliocentric enthusiast, clear your mind. Stop believing in right now that the earth is this big giant ball of fire. And there is the reason I found it so hard to go through Budget Benz's channel. The condescending tone, the backhanded insults, the heliocentric enthusiast comment, which is just really looking down on us. And it's the smarmy way he says it. He actually thinks he's smarter than us, than everyone else. And he looks down on normal people. But more importantly, the sun is not a ball of fire. No heliocentric enthusiast thinks that. What a stupid thing to say. Time to go to a remedial classroom. All right, class, that's enough, settle down. No, no mind of God, just put your hand down for the last time. You are not swapping seats with Phuket word. I don't care if you think it will make the class more orthogonal. Now, you need to pay attention, mind of God, because I've heard you talk about the sun before. Now, the sun. The sun is not three to 5,000 miles above us. It's not small and local. The sun is not an interdimensional portal. Mr. Thatcher, this one's for you. The sun is not on fire. There is no oxygen in space, so there cannot be any fire. However, the sun is 93 million miles away. The sun is powered by nuclear fusion. And the sun is a nearly perfect sphere of plasma. So plasma, the sun isn't fire. It's mostly plasma. And plasma is a state of matter alongside solids, liquids, and gas. Plasma is a highly energetic state of matter, so energetic that electrons are able to leave the atoms. It's estimated that 99.9% .9 of the visible matter in the universe is made of plasma. Okay class, that's all for today. Before you go, remember tomorrow is sports day and for the three-legged race you need a partner. You only have two legs each. You know what, I think I've had enough of m particular brand of stupidity for now. Creaky? Barry, fight the flat earth. You ready for me? Okay, so let's talk about m -Benz. Righty ho, so for those of you not familiar with M Benz, although I can't imagine there's going to be that many people, M Benz has a YouTube channel trying to provide flat earth facts, which is a bit of a contradiction in term. Since the earth isn't flat, there can't possibly be any facts about it. But anyway, the most worrying part about M Benz and his YouTube channel is the fact that this guy has kids. Those poor, poor children. Now, to my mind, if your parent is a flat earther, you're screwed. So let's have a look at the way M. Benz handles the flat earth and his children. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's M. Benz, back with another video for you here today. Here to talk about something that, that may speak to some of you. Here to talk about kids. 
Kids and Flat Earth. And this is where my problem with M-Bends begins. Kids and Flat Earth are two topics that should definitely, definitely not be put together under any circumstances. Now I have two daughters, two older daughters, I have a younger daughter, but two older daughters, eight and ten, third and fifth grade, and I get asked all the time, do you talk to your kids about Flat Earth? Is this something you should talk to kids about? No, it's not. But let's just go ahead and dive right into it and touch on this subject. Maybe I can shed some light about kids and Flat Earth. No. So, the way I feel about kids and Flat Earth is, I mean, it's not something you should pound into your kids and tell your kids not to do their homework or... Don't listen to your teachers or anything like that because I want my kids to be successful in school. Yeah, that's a good point, M. Benz. So completely forget everything you know about flat or think you know about flat earth and certainly don't talk to your kids about it. But at the same time, kids are not dumb nowadays. Especially my kids, they aren't dumb. <laughs> if you're speaking to them about flat earth, I find that difficult to believe. One day we're going out and we're just taking a walk to the mailbox and my kids are like, well, dad, I look up in the sky and I see the sun and the moon and it's daylight. How come I see the sun and the moon in the sky at the same time? I learned in class that, you know, the sun beats down the earth, covers half the earth at one time and that's daylight. And then the other half, the moon is at, you know, it's nighttime, moon, nighttime, sun, daytime. And I sat down, I showed them a couple videos Couple of ODD videos, a couple of D Marble videos. Showed your kids ODD videos and D Marble. I don't really know what to say to that. I didn't beat it into them. It's not something I told them they had to believe. Okay, and that's fair enough. But you are their dad. If you tell them something, it's true. Kids believe what their parents tell them. So if you were filling their young, impressionable minds with the idea that there's even a possibility that the earth is going to be flat, then that's what they're going to believe. You're turning them into mini M. Ben's morons. I didn't say don't believe in your science books and things like that. Not just yet. Just because I believe, like I said, kids should get good grades in school. They, I mean, that's one of the earliest science things they tell you about is the globe. The indoctrination is strong. And there's the magic word, indoctrination. Not education, indoctrination. Now as long as I put a little bit of nuggets in my kid's head at a time, so that way they don't get super sucked into the indoctrination, I'm happy. And then when they get old enough and they want to start doing their own research, then they, they're free to do their own research and believe in whatever they want to believe in. Yeah, when they grow up, they will do their own research and they'll find that the man they look up to, the man that helped give them life, is a complete moron and has been filling their heads with nonsense while they've been growing up. They're going to hate you, they're going to be embarrassed of you, and they're going to be ashamed to admit to any of their friends that you're their dad. I don't believe in pressing my beliefs onto my kids. Uh, wait, yes you do, because you've just said that you speak to them about the flat earth. If you don't want to push your views onto your kids, don't ever mention the earth being flat, you idiot. But I do believe kids are the future. So I believe if we can stop the kids from becoming indoctrinated and, and believing in all the sciences and the Neil deGrasse Tysons and the Bill Nyes, that maybe we might have a future. Okay, so if we teach our children to not believe in some of the greatest minds of our time, then we may have a future. I don't think I want to be part of that future, sorry. No, I definitely don't. Maybe, maybe not for me in my generation, maybe my, maybe my kids' kids. Maybe they can grow up knowing all the deception that's going on and knowing it's something that, hey man, if I don't believe in this, then at some point they gotta stop the lie. What lie, you oxygen thief? At some point, if I don't believe that I live on a spinning, rotating ball, that I can or detect, feel, see, get any hint of, maybe, just maybe, you know, we can make the world a better livable place because maybe my kids, 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 one day, they'll all know, maybe be common sense in the world, that we live on a flat plane. So, I thought it was important to make this video because I haven't seen a lot of flat earthers talk about this subject. Now, if I had to guess, I would say, M. Benz, that the reason you've not seen any other flat earthers talk about this subject is because they'd be embarrassed to. Because they know deep down that the earth isn't flat. And trying to 
push that knowledge onto your kids, it's, oh my God. I just want to touch on it briefly, just give you my opinion about it and tell you that I think it's something maybe we should just kind of, you know, teach our kids here and there, not, not shove it down their throats, not force them to believe this, but just throw, a little, just throw little nuggets out here and there. Sometimes when we're driving, sometimes when we're doing things. The other day we went to the state fair and we were up high on the Ferris wheel and I, I pointed out to my kids, oh, look, do you see any curvature? And the kid's like, no, dad, it looks flat. What? You were on a Ferris wheel and your kid said, no, dad, it looks, of course it's gonna look flat. How high is a Ferris wheel? Haven't you got any, I'm no scientist but I also like to think of myself as relatively intelligent. There's, you're not high enough, you dick. So, I mean, it's just something I throw out when I see certain things. Again, I don't want them going to school, getting in trouble, telling their teachers, oh, my dad said the earth is flat, I don't believe anything you say. I don't think it's that you don't want your kids getting in trouble. I think you don't want them being bullied and made fun of, and quite rightly so. Because if a child was to go to school and say that his dad said that the earth is flat, kids are mean. Kids will pick on other kids for the tiniest reason, and the flat earth would be the cherry on the cake. Because again, I don't want my kids getting in trouble at school. I want them to do well in school. And I know it's part of the indoctrination, but they still have to make it out of school. I mean, I did well in school, I made it out of school. And again, I've been a truth seeker my whole life. <laughs> a truth, sorry, a truth seeker. Well, I hate to tell you this, M. Benz, but you have failed miserably because you seem to truly believe that the earth is flat. Okay, that's it. I apologize if this segment seemed like a little bit of a rant. It kind of was. I've got kids myself, as a lot of people watching this will have. And the idea of this guy pushing a flat earth belief on his children, it just disgusts me. <sighs> anyway, I've got a YouTube channel as well. The Creaky Blinder. I'm sure Fight the Flat Earth will be kind enough to put some links to my channel down in the description or maybe up here, up here, down some, somewhere. Um, I'd love to have you as a subscriber for more videos like this, which aren't always as ranty as this, but what can you do? Fight the Flat Earth, back to you, pal. Thanks for that, Creaky. I bet you guys didn't know the lead singer of R.E.M. had a YouTube channel, did you? Make sure you go and subscribe to him. Now, M. Ben seems to have all the standard flurf arguments, but there is one thing I haven't really heard him say. <sighs> NASA, NASA, NASA. <laughs> Hold on. What's his issue with NASA? And today we're talking about NASA yet again. I don't know why that just became a theme of my videos because they keep doing stupid stuff. I don't know. It... <sighs> you, you don't know what? Maths? Physics? How to do dot to dot puzzles? Earlier last month, earlier in August, they launched a probe to get close to the sun. Okay, so Budget Benz is talking about the Solar Parker probe which in my humble opinion is one of the most amazing things humanity has ever done. The Parker Solar Probe is NASA's robotic spacecraft currently on the way to the sun. It will get within 4.3 million miles of the center of the sun, which is practically in our star's corona. At its closest approach in 2025, it will be traveling at 430,000 miles per hour, which is 0.64% the speed of light. It has a memory card which contains the names of over 1.1 million people mounted on a plaque and installed below the spacecraft's high gain antenna. The card also contains photos of Parker and a copy of his 1958 scientific paper predicting important aspects of solar physics. So what is Budget Benz's problem with this? Whatever, you can launch probes. I guess you guys have to show some work for the billions of dollars you guys get paid per year. Fair enough, I'm fine with that part. Oh, thank goodness for that. Um, just, just two secs, all right? Uh, yeah, hey NASA, it's fight. Yeah, thanks. Um, the bonus check. Yeah, yeah, I got that, thanks. Um, look, just, I want you guys to know because I know it's been on your mind, it's been worrying you, but M. Benz says it's okay with him if you guys launch probes. Yeah, I know that's been worrying you loads, so you're probably really happy about that, yeah? Brilliant. Right, crack on, see you later guys, bye.
photo. Someone took a long exposure photo of the launch and you see exactly the trail of the rocket. You see exactly where NASA's rocket and probe goes. Now, I've heard on Twitter and Facebook and blah, blah, blah that that's because that's how the rocket escapes. It can't go straight up. It has to reach escape velocity. Did you just facepalm? That's our thing. I don't, I don't even know what to say because that contradicts every launch NASA has done up until this one. No budget bends, just, just no. Hey, I'm FTFE and welcome back to the channel that buries stupidity in the concrete foundations of the library of knowledge. Flat earthers, they, they don't like giving evidence. In fact, their biggest defense at the moment is saying that they don't have to give evidence because they don't have the burden of proof. Claiming that hey, all the science, hey, the experiments, hey, the measurements and body of facts that we have are null and void. Episode? And why do they say that all of this science as we know it is null and void? Well, usually because flat earthers are thick as fuck and haven't the slightest clue about the things that hey. they claim to hey. be able to debunk. The uh, the flat earther today hey, is. Hey, can I be in there? He's a special breed of stupid. Let me be, let me be in hides, this one. Um, want, guys, guys, he, tell him to let me he in. He's a stupid tell and tasty, tasty this one. word salad. I want to uh, be in this one, guys. He's really, guys, hey, really hey. ignorant of, of physics. Um, Flat Earth can't ever provide evidence, so Let me in. all they I do is display their <laughs> ignorance of the globe, and and that's what I'm going to hey, cover today hey, as hey, we take... Hey. Fine, Brainy, okay? Fine, you can be in this fucking episode. Just shut up. Ah, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, give, me, give me a second. Give me, give me... So I guess me and Brainy Beaver will be covering the dipshit of the week who calls himself Wits It Gets It for episode 52 of Flurfs Are Idiots. I swear to God, Brainy, if you ever interrupt me again when I'm recording. We're living on a disc, floating through space, with a tiny sun. Find the Find the and thank you for joining me once again as we take a look inside the mind of someone that is capable of thinking that the Earth is flat. What the hell? Oh, where's the NASA implant sent me now? Hello? Um, is anyone there? Brainy? Cats? Simon Dan? Anyone? Hello? Oh, I'm back. Thanks, Sagan. I've been in the mind of a flat earther for years. It was so empty and cold. All right, where was I? Austin Witsit, that's right. So, word salad Witsit. The smartest thing he ever did was come up with the best insult about me being a big old fatty that I've ever heard when he called me fight the tight shirt. Fucking hilarious and pretty witty. Unfortunately, nothing else smart has ever passed his lips. Let's have a listen to him say a bunch of stupid stuff, shall we? So, here's the deal. Axial rotation has never been substantiated. They tell us that we're spinning around 1,040 miles per hour east, but it's never been substantiated. I mean, yeah, it's never been substantiated. If you ignore all the evidence, I agree. Evidence like this. If the Earth is spinning at one rotation every 24 hours, that means that every hour it has to turn 15 degrees. And if the gyroscope is mounted anywhere on Earth, it's going to drift. 
in today's 21st century navigation systems, they're using what's called a ring laser gyroscope. It is extremely precise. If we could simply get one of these ring laser gyroscopes, we would be able to prove once and for all that there is no rotation to the Earth. One of the people in the community actually purchased one for $20,000. But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift, a 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. And also as evidence that you don't know what the fuck you're actually talking about, you just said that we're spinning to the east at a thousand miles an hour at the equator. Well, here's the thing that anybody who understands even the slightest bit of physics knows that that sentence doesn't make sense. You don't measure rotational speed in miles per hour. That's dumb. You measure rotational speed in RPM or degrees per unit of time, like a 15 degree per hour drift. Yeah, okay, thanks, Bob. You can shut up now. But just for you, Witsit, as you're obviously a little slow after years at the back of the bus, here is a direct comparison of something rotating at the same speed as the Earth. Better hold the fuck on, Witsit. Don't want the centrifugal acceleration of 0.034 meters per second squared to fling you off into outer space. Or maybe I do. Globe Earth is one up Foucault's pendulum. It doesn't have an independent frame of reference. It isn't consistent, it has a window of error, and it doesn't correlate cause and effect. Science is the correlation of cause and effect. So what that means is you have an observable phenomena that is the effect. So, so much wrong in such a short amount of time. A pendulum's bob, or weight, is a freely moving object when swinging back and forth. That means that it's in a different reference frame to the rest of the rotating Earth because it is freely moving. And I'm gonna need a citation that the observable phenomenon has to be the effect or dependent variable in an experiment. You can't just make up your own science, you dipshit. Okay, you have to correlate the cause to the effect, which means you have to have an independent variable that is manipulated so that it differentiates the effect. And then you can validate that that is the cause. Okay, that's what the actual scientific method is. Yeah, you have the dependent variable, the effect, the observable phenomena. You have an independent variable that you manipulate to validate the effects. Okay? to validate that it is the cause of the effect. It's very simple. The globe Earth doesn't do this ever at all, so there's literally not one single piece of scientific evidence for the globe Earth. The globe Earth never does this. Well, either you're lying or you've got a brain injury. What is and isn't science is determined by its adherence to the scientific method, which breaks down to five easy steps. One, an observation in the natural world. Two, create a hypothesis for the observation. A hypothesis is an educated guess and can be whatever you want. Three, make a prediction based upon your hypothesis. Four, design an experiment to test your prediction. An experiment must have a control variable which isn't changed by the experiment to compare to, an independent variable which must be manipulated by the experimenter and is the presumed cause, and a dependent variable which is what will be changed by the manipulation of the independent variable and is measured and is considered the effect. And then five, analyze your data. If your hypothesis is confirmed, then you've got a scientific theory. And if your hypothesis is invalidated, you reassess your hypothesis, make adjustments and start again. Science is trial and error. And when we globe earthers do experiments, we follow that method. For instance, this particular version of Foucault's pendulum done by the gentleman physicist. Step one, an observation. The stars in the sky rotate around two different points depending on your location relative to the equator. All of the stars move at 15 degrees per hour. Step two, a hypothesis. I hypothesize that my observation suggests we are on a rotating body that is spinning at 15 degrees per hour. Step three, prediction. To form a prediction, I must make an assumption. So if we are rotating at 15 degrees per hour, the freely swinging bob of a pendulum will drift 360 degrees at the poles and will not drift at all if placed at the equator. 
the amount of drift per time will allow us to calculate our latitude if the Earth is a rotating globe. Step four, design an experiment to test the prediction. The gentleman physicist did just that. He created a large, freely swinging pendulum and let it swing for 0.688 hours and measured the drift. Step five, analyze. Based on the data the gentleman physicist gathered during the experiment, he was able to calculate his latitude to within a margin of error of one degree. This confirmed the prediction and hypothesis. So there you have it, Witsit, an experiment that disproves your assumption that globe earthers don't follow the scientific method, you know, and destroys your complete and utter misunderstanding of how a pendulum works. What else have you got? Yeah, flat earthers have never got an... Hold on a sec. Oh, yeah, hold on. All right. Oh, it's Brainy. He, uh, he says, oh, is it my go yet? Oh, and an another message from Brainy. Can I go now? And, a and another one. Is it my turn on... And, and another one. Hello, FTFE. Can I go... And another one, it says, please let me go now. I want to go. Please let me be on screen. I'm not desperate, honest. Look, all right, okay, here's Brainy Beaver. Hi, everybody. I'm Brainy Beaver, and my channel is the place you come to if you want that sweet smell of vanilla and desperation required for a tiny, innocent animal to just struggle to keep up with FDFE. Look, I told you I was sorry. It really was an accident. Yeah. Well, I guess I can buy that, sir. But it is a shame. Poor little guy. Probably kept up with you for a mile or so. Tough little butt. <laughs> yeah. So come with me and give me emotional support while we take a look at Witsit because there is not enough money in my world to buy the cocaine required to keep up with his meandering thought processes. This dude, this dude was involved around some stuff. It clearly does appear, right? The details are pretty hard to keep up with if you're lying for the course of years. But he doesn't fully understand what's going on. Again, he just pointed out that he's, they, they call themselves demons. And they say that they, their seed comes from Lucifer or whatever. But really, that's not what's going on. It must have come from dinosaurs. Because he's just like, these people are psychopaths. There's no way that this is real. They are literally Luciferians. And if you are in this chat, you probably do know. It's very real. She was real. Lucifer's real. Lucifer's a title. The ultimate Lucifer is Gadriel, the serpent that fell. Okay, so it's very real. They consider themselves Luciferians. This is the process of getting to full enlightenment of understanding of the metaphysical transmutation, alchemy of oneself, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, where to start unpacking that? I guess we'll just kind of start from the top. Guys, look, I get it. It sounds crazy. Austin, you're talking about clones. What are you talking about? I'm not claiming that I can scientifically validate even the viability of cloning. I actually don't think that to buy force, someone could be cloned or anything like that. I can't come get your simple. Wits it. You, you got to slow down, buddy. Wits it. You got to But whenever you leave yourself vulnerable in the astral metaphysical realm because you're not protected by Yeshua and you're a little special boy, you can do whatever you want to and you take a whole bunch of drugs and you sink in depravity and degeneracy and you're constantly trying to astral project. So you got to slow down. Slow, slow down. We got to. We're gonna have to talk about these things right. as you talk. I know about things are real in your dream state, and that's what's been pumped down your throat. Dreams, dreams, dreams. Are dreams real? I wonder what's going on in the dreams. What's the Matrix tell you about the dreams? There's something very real to that. That's it. You got to stay on a subject, buddy. We got to stay on a topic. Physical. There's no other viable option to explain observable phenomena without the metaphysical field around you. So what is there? What's right, you know? Fine. You know what? You know what? I got this for this occasion. You know, what? just. Look away, children. Born a giant that was two thirds God. There was some type of, you know, manufacturing that caused this to happen. So this seems to just be there's nothing new under the sun. And something could happen. And maybe you guys don't know. They said they could clone a sheep and they think that you're sheep. And that's why they're laughing. We told you that we can clone you guys and you didn't even understand it. I know, right? <laughs> I know. I keep telling them about the lizard people. Tell them about the lizard people. It's good shit. Hmm. Hmm. Coined the phrase atomic bombs and loose them and helpless civilian populations. He said his vision of a nuclear war between England and Germany in the impossibly distant future of the 1950s.
In 1933, <laughs> physicist Leo Szilard was contemplating becoming a biologist. It was between that and a life of sodomy as he soaked in his bubble bath of femininity. That was fun, wasn't it? But now that my desk is covered in icing sugar and I've shown everybody what it's like to listen to your rambling and try to pick out little things, we could push forward. First thing I want to mention, you're an idiot. Pointing out his femininity because he sat in a bubble bath. Dude, it's like 1930. In fact, I checked the year. It's 31, 32, 33, something like that. If I, I, You'd have to double check. I'm not going to do it right now, but it's the 30s. I'm going to tell you, guess what? Showers never even became popularized until the late 30s. So somebody sitting in a bath was how they cleaned their stank ass. But you probably don't know much about that since you look like your hobo hour in it. Oh, it's it coming in hot. Coming in hot with a ooh, with a one-two right off with his historical knowledge of what it required to clean a stank ass in the 30s. This is going to be fun. Zillard knew that atoms are made of protons and neutrons on the inside. Which are actually pseudoscientific fairy tales. The materialistic or physical nature of anything beyond the subatomic scale cannot be verified in any scientifically verifiable manner whatsoever. In fact, the electron is nothing more than the terminal end of one unit line of dielectric induction. All we are seeing is reactions within the field on the quote-unquote quantum scale. You cannot actually in any way validate some type of materialistic claim. It is just pseudoscience. The photon is nothing more than a dielectric pulse, it appears, and the electron is nothing more than the terminal end of one unit line of dielectric induction. What a magnificent pile of word salad, wits it. Where do the electrons come from then? If it's just the terminal end of a dielectric pulse, does it, does it, do the electrons just flow through the fucking copper like water through a hose? Technically, they kind of do, but I'm going to show you how. The flow of electrons is what forms an electric current. If we look inside a piece of a copper wire, there are atoms that easily exchange electrons. These electrons are able to move from one atom to another in any direction. If we make a closed circuit by connecting the copper wire with a power source like a battery, then the voltage will make the electrons to move in the same direction, from one terminal of the battery to the other, or from the negative to the positive of the power source. If we add a light bulb to the closed circuit, the electrons will have to pass through it in order to get to the other terminal, thus producing a light. This is where Witsit goes, aha, that's what I said though. But no, that doesn't make sense, Witsit, because if it's just the terminal end of blah, 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 um, then you need to explain how an insulator works because we have a fundamental understanding of what makes something an insulator and something a conductor. And it's based on how many, how many electrons are in the valence shell, which basically adds to its stability. When you have a very unstable valence shell, especially if you have one stray one just kicking around in a circle out there, then it's very easy for another atom, similar to like orbits and planets, which you also don't believe in, that's fine. Um, to uh, kick one of those electrons off and like pull it over to another one. Um, hence, conductors and insulators. Some materials in this shell have loosely bound electrons, which allows them to flow from one atom to another. These moving electrons are called free electrons. How easy it is for electrons to move around depends on the material. Materials can be either conductors or insulators. Materials that are conductors, like most metals, allows free electrons to move freely throughout the solid while insulators, like plastic or glass, limit the movement of the electrons, holding them tightly. Um, Nikola Tesla, in fact, has said that he disintegrated atoms with millions of volts and nothing ever happened. When he first did it, he told all of his assistants, numerous people that are touted to be quote-unquote scientists, say that there's going to be an explosion when I do this, just a heads up. Of course, they knew that he was not an idiot, so they didn't sleep, nothing happened, he did it numerous times. Fast forward, we now have a pseudoscientific fairy tale of fear coming from one single grabbler author from World War II about dropping nuclear bombs. I digress. So, question for you there, Witsit. What do you think they mean when they say splitting an atom? Because he can hit an atom with as much electricity as he wants. And besides, maybe they did say there would be an explosion. Perhaps they were also wrong. That doesn't mean anything. It just means that they weren't right. But it also doesn't mean that he did what was needed to cause an explosion because that's not what we mean by splitting an atom. I mean, we got Witsit over here swinging a knife around. Hey, yeah. Oh, take that. And that. Oh, I'm cutting atoms, fuck. Cutting atoms, fuck. Sorry, Witsit, that's not what they mean by splitting an atom. 
Splitting an atom is a chemical slash physics reaction involving neutrons. This scale, we can see actual atoms and neutrons. Neutrons are the particles that help us unlock all that energy from the nucleus. But they move fast, so first we need to slow one down. And to do that, we simply use water. Let's follow this one and see where it leads us. Pay close attention. Firing this neutron into the nucleus of the atom causes the nucleus to split in two. This is the fission we mentioned earlier. And as the nucleus splits, it releases its own neutrons. Some of these newly released neutrons, slowed by the water, hit other atoms, causing more fission. And so the chain reaction begins. Now, when they talk about using water to slow it down, this is actually from a power plant. So, of course, they do things a little differently. They don't want as rapid of a reaction because kaboom! They needed to slow down a little bit. So that's where the heavy water pools come in to slow the neutrons. Uh, uh, they actually absorb it. Uh, you can actually find out a lot of information about that watching uh, Thunderfoot with regards to Chernobyl. There's a lot of good information there. Uh, but anyways, did anybody see uh, Witsit and uh, Nathan Thompson on their very, very, um, you know, beautiful little thing where Nathan explained to Witsit like two times uh, what a lie is? Because, of course, you know, uh, you have to explain to people that don't understand shit what things are just so you don't get too much confusion, right? Things get wild. Um, but uh, did you see the, put the music behind it? It was like a sick kids kind of thing, right? Or one of those like, like Wish Foundation ads. But I gotta be honest with y'all. I've been lying to stuff. Yeah. Ah, Witsit, yeah, he was an interesting case. I remember the little guy hiding at the back there. He's always so curious, you know? Also, you know we're just talking about? He's like, have you ever loaded up the freaking van yet? Like, oh, I'm like, no, not at all. What do you mean? And I'm like, how cool would it be, bro, if we never had to, like, even load the van up? Like, we just had the RV here. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> that would be, like, the coolest freaking thing ever. Yeah, it was a wild adventure with Witsit. You know, we've been done a lot of special children, but Witsit was a little different. I mean, uh, we had to keep it a, a close. Hey, Witsit, we've talked about this. Get your hands out of your pants. No, 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 no. No, the girls don't want to see that with Witsit. Witsit, you put it away. No, 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 they, no, Wits. Okay, I got I to gotta deal with this. Just keep, I'll, I'll be back. Just give me a second, guys. But, I got to be honest with y'all. Lying. Yeah. Hardcore. 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 Lying, right? Most people define lying as like not telling the truth, right? But lying is also when you know something and you don't tell someone what's actually going on, right? We thought it was better to explain to Witsit what a lie was. We were we were awfully concerned he was we wouldn't understand what a lie was and We'd already had that incident with him flinging shit at the walls, and uh, frankly, we just we couldn't afford that again. It, it, there was a whole fallout with HR, and there's going to be insurance payouts. There's some sexual harassment that occurred a little while ago. Anyways. We're gonna do the whole thing. We're gonna do the whole thing. In the RV, he drove all the way out here from California. Wow, dude. That's so, incredible. So we're gonna hang out with him tomorrow class and clean up, and but like I didn't lie to you. It's these happy endings, that's why I got into this, you know. Uh, seeing the smile on Witsit's face, uh, he was telling us the whole time how he wanted to hang his head out the window, let the air rush along his tongue. Uh, also, uh, we got him a Captain Underpants impersonator. Uh, that's he was pretty thrilled about that. Uh, so it was it was a big day for him. It was a big day. All right, now before I get going, I think we need to talk about the relationship between Oakley and Witsit, or I don't know, the separation. Uh, but before I, but, but what was that? What, what is this? This 
For me? Flat Earth debate. Oh, oh. live. <laughs> I'm your host, Nathan Oakley. <laughs> What am I supposed to do with these? It didn't come with anything. Oh, there's a note in here. Moisture activated testicle invitation. To activate invitation and get Discord link to stream, simply hold testicles above head and caress gently with Tongue. Fuck. Apparently, I have to suck his nuts to get into this stream. The elastic velocity or elastic energy of gas is way 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 stronger than electrostatics it's just my point here at least i can only speak for me right my point is the electrostatics is always at play uh, because everything that has any matter is electrostatic and the earth is also electrostatic and actually oh, negative and that's why we have lightning etc cetera, etc cetera. so you can't just say it's not I, part of the I, equation I, that would be dishonest but at the same time almost impossible to validate you don't you can't get outside Sorry, of here, what so. is this why are you on about why is this electrostatic non sequitur the fact that we have to constantly look at this stuff to experience it or describe it or have pens to write it down is totally non sequitur well you know it's just that well the earth's negatively charged and anything that falls to the earth is electrostatic well, like a balloon yeah the yeah, balloon less does that fall to the ground witsit no, of course. Well, then shut up, you dumb. Doesn't mean there's not a natural bias, though. A bias? What for the balloon? How many times do you want to do this? Are you all morons? Adam. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry, are you a moron? Is the balloon going down, Witsit? Yes, we are. Is the balloon uh, biased downwards? Is there, are you serious, bro? This is how you're gonna shut run up, run Nathan. I'm talking to Witsit. Well, that's, well, what I'm saying is, you, you see, the bias is so incredibly weak that the- So it's not a bias down! What bias? The downward one the balloon's not experiencing. Third time, wits it. Yeah, they're right. The gas isn't going to go down. Gas. So there is not a downward bias! <laughs> well, you would- No, not well! There's no downward bias, you clown! You've just admitted it. Why are you in cognitive dissonance over this, Witsit? Your hand wave dismissing the electrostatics, dude. That's uh, what, the non sequitur fallacy you introduced that I immediately demolished as a non sequitur fallacy? Wait, how's it non sequitur? I thought that was the so whole So the balloon that, goes uh, down! Argument. Sorry, the electrostatics make the balloon go down, or is this non sequitur? The electrostatics are way weaker, right? So are they making the balloon go down? Are you deaf? No, the the So non sequitur then! Nathan, you're going to give yourself an answer. Nathan, shut up. I'm not going to ask you again. I'm going to absolutely <laughs> teabag wits it for his dumb fuckery. So this electrostatic is not giving the balloon a downward bias, is it? Uh, no. No! That's right, wits it, you clown! So what are you babbling about? Because once again, the uh, you, you just whistle past this. You just stutter for me like the rest of the fundies with their belief in gravity. There is not a downward bias, clown. Okay, but yeah. Okay, now enjoy the taste of my nuts, you flat earth fundy. There's no downward bias. Dismiss it. Your hand. Dismiss what? The electrostatics that make the balloon go down? You're going to do it third time in a row, you circle jerking fundy? Claimed it made it go down. It doesn't go down, you idiot. Are you thick? One claimed it did. That's a strong... Oh, right. I'm claiming a downward bias of the balloon and no one's claiming it. You are. You stuttering, double-speaking, cognitive dissonance-laden fundy. If matters inherent...
Every compilation of matter is inherently electrostatic. This goes and that's got anything to do with a balloon going down? Fourth time circle jerking this shit in a row? I never said the balloon went down. It doesn't go down! Are you dumb? It does, dude. Oh, it does? Oh, balloons go down, go boom, with a single vector of downward, do they? Uh. This gas doesn't have one, does it? Assuming anything. Oh, you're assuming gas go down, go boom, boom, my friend. Is he hurt? Electrostatic? Uh, sorry. Electrostatic non-sequiturs making gas go down, go boom, boom now, is it? Uh, sorry. Stupid shit. Gas go down, go boom, boom. 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 Is he hurt? Electrostatic? Uh, sorry. Electrostatic non-sequiturs making gas go down, go boom, boom now, is it? Stupid shit. You keep saying non-sequitur, but you're... Uh, so gas is going down, go boom, boom, or is this non-sequitur? Sequitur. Yeah, it's non-sequitur if gas is not going down, go boom, boom. Is gas going down, go boom, boom? If no one claims that gas goes down, go boom. I'm sorry for sitting back and just letting you take that whole thing, but you know what? There isn't much to say about it. Oakley's a piece of shit. And Witsit, Nathan, why do you even go on his channel? You should just do like the rest of us and just ignore him. The only reason we occasionally step foot in that zone is to poke the bear through the cage. Thanks for having me, FDFE. And if you haven't checked out my channel, everybody, give it a check out. And also maybe give that Mr. Pascal Marks uh, a little bit of love for that uh, great, Oakley's, uh, you know, what? Balloon go down, go boom, boom. Balloon go down, go boom, boom. I was ready to pull out the, the glow sticks. You're lucky. I was going to get the, the uh, donut boxers and glow sticks, and I was just going to just rage. <laughs> I get the out of here. Have a good night, everybody. See you later. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. And thanks for that, Brainy. This, this video isn't getting monetized, is it? Hey, I'm Fight the Flyer, and welcome back to the channel that douses stupidity in petrol and then offers it a cigarette. Today is episode 21 of Flurfs the Idiots, and... Hold on. Hello, Fight... Hey NASA, how you doing? Wait, what? You're, you're docking my shill pay? But why? You're sending me an audio file, hold on. Introducing the most technologically advanced, topographically accurate, pseudoscience Earth model the world has ever seen. A model capable of making advanced pseudoscience predictions about our world with stunning 3D animations and an easy to use globe comparison mechanism. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you the Flat Earth Model. Sweet bejeebus, they've got a model that's bad. Can you send me some help? Ahoy hoy, I'm playing a walk. Can you send me somebody else? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how I'm supposed to fight the Flat Earth with, with, hip, with him. Like, but, I mean, I know he's a member of SEAL Team 6. Yes, yes, Mr. NASA, sir. Certainly, sir. I do my best, sir. Goodbye, I love you too. So, looks like I'm being joined by Planner Walk to tackle the world's first Flat Earth model. This is episode 21 of Flurfs of Idiots, and it's for Slappy the Clown, otherwise known as Nathan Oakley and his lapdog, Quantum Eraser. We're living on a disc, floating through space, with a tiny sun. Find the Find the Find the Right, let's get on with this. I mean, um, I guess it's game over, right? If they've got if they've got a model, then then it's game over. That's it, man. Game over. So man. yeah, it's game over. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Gonna Slappy the clown and his little manservant are very excited about this. Oh, talking about Quantum Razor, he is one flurf that I'm yet to christen with a nickname. So leave your comments below for the new name of Quantum Razor. But anyway, let's see this model. So without further ado. On behalf of the Supreme Council and my highly esteemed and distinguished colleague who has been knighted. Hold on, knighted? Nah, I need to check that. I'll just access my Freemason satanic phone book directory. Yeah, hello, Lizzie. Yeah, sorry to bother you, it's fight. Yeah, quick question. Did you, um, 
Did you knight Nathan Oakley, the flat earther? <laughs> uh, Liz? <laughs> I, um, no, I, I, I don't think Nathan Oakley is actually knighted. Sir Nathan Oakley, it is my honor and privilege to present the only model of the Earth that has seen the light of day over the past four years. Oh, God, no. This is it. We're done for. Are you ready? Here it is. The Flat Earth model. Here it is. Brought to you by our Flat Earth friends over at Google Earth. Hashtag same team. They oh, hold on. Did he just say that Google Earth is the Flat Earth model? <laughs> Google Earth. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh dear me. explanation as to why they think that Google Earth, which is a globe, is the flat Earth model. They seem to have hidden it in, in plain sight. So I didn't bring you here for us to gawk at this. Remember, we have two predictions to test. You know what? I bet any predictions made with that model will be correct, considering it's the globe that has Antarctica as a continent at the bottom and not an ice war around the edge. Right, one at 500 miles and one at 1,000 miles. So let's take the 500 mile measurement. We'll wing on over to the med and jam with Mick and the stones. What do we got here? Did anyone see all that curve you just went over then? On the flat earth model, man, quantum erasure is a picnic basket short of a picnic, huh? First off and tell me that I'm too chicken shit to debate him. I've always said that no, I'll debate anyone, but in QE's case, I don't know if I want to debate him. It would feel like kicking a bag of kittens. I kind of feel sorry for him. I, I wonder what it's like to go through life being that fucking stupid. Well, we have a 500 mile distance between the shore of Sicily and Libya. So let's take a look here. So everything's in plain sight. We're gonna take an elevation of point D. And what do we got? We have four feet. So let's wing on over to Sicily. What do we have for an elevation in Sicily? Well, we have four feet. You guys do see where this is going, right? It's four foot above sea level on, on both points. If you don't already, you're gonna need a pair of oven mitts or some pillows taped to your hands. Right, let's take a wider view. We'll get an elevation profile. So, from the shore of Sicily, for 500 miles, as you can see, we have a 0 0.00, .00 vertical drop. In fact, it's 508 miles validating the first prediction of our flat earth model today i offer you this gift a nuclear face palm guys i am so sorry pillows would not have been enough yeah that's some extra special stupid sauce this has to be one of the dumbest things i've ever heard in all of my life he thinks that elevation above sea level should take into account the curve of the earth. Like if you took a point in Ireland and a point in New York, it should show that in New York it's negative 3,000 miles. What an absolute dumbass. Please just go to the remedial classroom. 
All right, morons and retards, settle down and shut up. Today we're going to explain what elevation means in regards to the Earth, which is a globe. I said it's a globe. Okay, before we start, Mr. Truth, I couldn't mark your school project. There was too many errors in the spelling, including your name spelt wrong, the title spelt wrong, the day and month spelt wrong, and the rest in an unreadable Comic Sans font. Got two days to do it again. Anyway, this is simple, guys. Look at this half of a globe. These lines are all the same length above sea level. When you connect them, you get a level line. You wouldn't expect something that is showing height above sea level to show curve. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And I spend every day with you dumbasses. Thank God that's home time. Get out. I hate you all. Where's the vodka? The globe tards only port in the storm against our model is this claim. Elevation is measured from the center of the earth. That's just code for gravity. Right? They put gravity into everything. I think it's in their scrambled eggs in the morning. <laughs> I don't eat eggs for breakfast. I eat flat earthers. Just check out my playlist of debates. I've been in loads. Right? So that is every point along the surface of the earth is equidistant from the center of the earth. Our retort? A. From their alma mater wiki. Elevation is not to be confused with the distance from the center of the earth. And B, how in the world can they make the claim when they live on in an ellipsoid? Stop, guys, please, I'm, I'm begging you, don't, don't facepalm again. I've, um, I've done some research and found out what happens if you facepalm too much. Can you tell us what's wrong with her? Yes, allow me to demonstrate. Could one of you do something stupid? I got it! Ah! Uh. Just as I suspected. Your daughter's been face palming at your stupidity for so long it's becoming dangerous. Take a look at this x-ray. <gasps> so the ignorance of QE is quite staggering. He's also referring to the whole Neil deGrasse Tyson said it's shaped like a pear thing. I mean, just look at these two circles. One of them is perfect and one of them is not. The difference is barely noticeable. It's so small that you can't even tell that this one isn't a perfect circle. It's the same with the fucking earth. Your flat earth model, my hairy ass. Try again. You embarrass yourself and your entire movement. We're going to go to Planner Walk after this brief interlude. Nathan, question. You ready? How do you convert meters into kilometers? I don't know. How do you convert meters into kilometers? What's the correct way? You tell me. The correct way is divide meters by a thousand. So if you have a meter, and I divide that meter by 1,000, you don't think that would give you millimeters? Meters into kilometers, Nathan. You just said you divide meters about. by 1,000 to get kilometers. So you're saying I divide something that is one meter long by 1,000, and that will come out to a kilometer Nathan, value. Nathan, it sounds like, on, it sounds track, like you are quite track. literally retarded. You do not divide let's meters to come out with kilometers. Why would you divide a value that is given in meters to come up with something larger, i.e. kilo, because, not thousands? Nathan, because the thing you don't understand is that it's a ratio. Did you do maths at school? Why would you divide a meter value when trying to come up with a larger value? Dividing something makes it smaller. Oh dear. Ahoy hoy, I'm... Shut up! So as you might know, I went on Nathan's show this recently. This arrogant little millennial prick. You know, it'd be very nice if I could actually talk. You're just fucking retarded. So essentially, what I was trying to do was I was- SHUT UP! This is why it's impossible to argue with Nathan. So I was pretty much trying to explain to Nathan why Google Maps does not show that the Earth is flat. And so obviously, they started a little game called What's My Fallacy? The problem is though, that fallacies don't tend to work if the argument is incomplete. So if I say something like, if the Earth is round, then up is not the same for everyone, that is not fallacious in any way. Nathan would call that being the question. 
However, I've not begged the question because I've only said if A then B. I have not said B therefore A. And that was going to be my first premise, but I wasn't allowed to finish because I've got these forbidden words. You can't say spinning, Shut you up. can't say globe, Shut you can't say round, Shut up. you can't say gravity. So essentially, you're forbidden from making any kind of rebuttal to Nathan Oakley on Nathan Oakley's channel. But I'm on Fight the Flat Earth channel, so I can basically make any rebuttal to Nathan Oakley without getting interrupted. Yeah, that makes you a millennial little prick. I spoke too soon. But anyway, here's my rebuttal to Nathan Oakley or Quantum Erasers Flat Earth model. Premise A, direction is never absolute. An example of this would be if we were on a globe and I was in one country that's on the opposite side to a country that another person is in. We would have different ideas of what up is. Premise B, height is about the relationship between two points but only on one axis and that would be the upwards axis. Premise C, some definitions of level just mean having no part higher than another part. And lastly, premise D is elevation literally just means height with respect to a level, like sea level. That means shut your stupid fucking mouth. Now, would it surprise anyone if Nathan didn't actually attempt to offer a rebuttal to any of those four premises? All he did was attack the examples that I gave trying to explain the first premise to you him. You unbelievable little bastard. But the real problem there was I was interrupted. You somehow think that's fucking Earth Curve. So as I was saying before I got interrupted, the problem was is that there would be so many interruptions that by the time- stupid shitheads. There were so many interruptions that by the time I got to the next point, the previous point had been completely lost on them. And rather than let me get to the end of my example, you talk over the top of it when I get to the conclusion each time. But if Nathan had have followed those premises through, it would have been self-evident why his so-called model did not prove the earth was flat fucking turd in the punch bowl but anyway i have better things to be doing right now so back to, wait he's over that way isn't he back to you fight the flatter no i'm i'm over here never mind make sure you guys go and subscribe to wolfie 6020 son in the link up there if i if i remember to put it in now before we go let's look at nathan oakley being a dumbass again in this clip nathan tries to explain why things appear to disappear from the bottom up on a flat earth so for a long time I've been trying to make the analogy that if you take off a pair of shoes and back away from them, you will see them disappear eventually due to their angular size being too small to see. And you can induce this effect by reducing the angle. So the angle of attack is essentially what causes things to disappear from bottom up. So in this example I've set a book at the end of this very long hall which they play table tennis on so it's incredibly flat. They play table tennis on so it's incredibly flat. And uh, that's, that's good enough for you is it? when trying to demonstrate this incredible new discovery of angle of attack. Your methodology is, yeah, looks kind of flat to me. You fucking idiot. And as you can see, as I lower my angle, the book disappears. Now purely by chance, as I was doing this, somebody came along and actually picked up and removed the book as they were clearing away the hall while I was doing this. But just by luck, there was a woman with a pair of shoes on actually lifting the book out of place, which you can see here. So as she reaches down, the book and her shoes disappear purely by chance but very handy as it matches the example I give so the shoes vanish the person who has a bigger angle obviously they're larger than their shoes is still perfectly visible and this is exactly the same as a pair of wind turbines disappearing into the distance or anything disappearing into the distance due to angular size or the angle of attack being too limited to see the item okay let's wrap this up by showing people one absolute clown you actually are yeah the bottom of those items they're probably going to disappear first because they're in another hey i'm ftfe and welcome back to the channel that puts stupidity in barrels of hydrofluoric acid Flat earthers come and go. Some fade into obscurity, some see sense and realize the earth isn't flat. Please go and subscribe to Seek Truth, Speak Truth. But some never cease to pump out the stupid. And no flat earther pumps out more constant stupid than Sleeping Warrior. He is so stupid that he once said the earth would have a solar eclipse every month. A solar eclipse will happen every single month. And why? Because the, it takes 27 days, 27 point something days for the moon to orbit the earth. 
So at some point, it's going to cross the sun. And it does it every single month. Now, I have no explanation for why it takes every hundred years for America to get one, because the law of probability dictates that it should be every few years, but we're being told it's once every hundred years. So there is a solar eclipse every day, uh, every month. The only problem is we don't see it because it's usually over the water. So you can bet me a thousand pound because you have to come up with the reason for why it's not when the, when the, when the moon orbits the earth once every month, you burk. I bet you a thousand pound solar eclipses happen every single month. The issue is we never see them because they're normally over the earth. Uh, oh, normally over the water. After failing to pay up for that bet, he promptly deleted his channel and started a new one. He is so stupid he was officially voted the dumbest fuck of 2019, beating out even JM Truth. So let's take a look at the stupid person as he tries to debunk a physics teacher. Sleeping Warrior is back for Flurfs Are Idiots, episode 45. We're living on a disc, floating through space with a tiny sun. <laughs> Thank you for joining me once again to look at the people whose breakfast of choice is the purple crayons. Sleeping Warrior is, how do I put this delicately, not one of the brightest people around. He clearly has issues with the most basic of things, like basic maths. Five divided by zero is five in the real world. Basic physics. This is an egg. And basic toilet habits after becoming the first man to ever stream twice at the same time. They started to get irritated. So... That's yo, the thing is, the, yo, the, the thing is, though, the cop doesn't have to show you the code. He just brings you before the judge, and the judge has to show you the code. So it blows my mind when someone of Sleeping Warrior's limited mental capacity thinks he knows more than the people that have actually studied physics. Like Conspiracy Cats, an actual physics teacher who did a video explaining gravity and the nuances of Newtonian gravity versus Einsteinian gravity. Along comes Leaky Warrior to correct him. Newton's equation tried to describe to us what we see, whereas Einstein's work was more about why we see it. It isn't. They're not mutually exclusive, as many flat earthers would have you believe. Anyway, next topic. Uh, no. Conspiracy Cats is both wrong on both points. Conspiracy Cats is both wrong on both points? Just saying that if I'd fluffed my first line in a video, I'd have probably restarted the recording. But more importantly, what gives you the authority to say he is wrong? You don't understand physics. You haven't ever studied physics and try to use dictionary definition of words to argue scientific points. To put it nicely, Sleeping Warrior, you're a fucking idiot. Newtonian gravitation, as we all know, if you've been in this topic for more than two minutes, you know that Newtonian gravitation was a force Einsteinian gravity is an effect. They are not the same thing. They are the same thing. They describe the same thing and mathematically break down to the exact same equation. And by that, I mean you can literally derive Newton's law of gravitational attraction from Einstein's field equations. And maths is how you describe things in science. It's the language of science and how we prove our ideas. Newton's law was a mathematical description of what Newton observed. Einstein's general relativity was a description of why that attraction is there. It's also a lot more accurate than Newton's work. Newton's law is great for a local scale, but Einstein's field equations are much better for larger scale calculations. But that doesn't mean Newton was wrong. It's like saying pi isn't 3.14162 because pi is 3.14159265. It's more accurate, but they are both still the ratio of a circumference to a diameter of a circle. Newton was not describing what we see. Newton was describing a physicality. Come on now, Leakey. What does that even mean? Newton did describe what he saw. He realized that there must be some kind of force acting on an object falling. Otherwise, they would not start moving from rest. He called this apparent force gravity. He also realized the moon would fly off in a straight line tangent to its orbit if there wasn't some kind of force making it fall towards Earth, and that the observation of Kepler could be explained by this apparent force. And that's what Newton's law of gravitational attraction is, a mathematical description of observations 
that was able to make predictions and explain many natural phenomena. Something that was pushing or pulling, even though Newton said do not ascribe gravitation to me in his letters to Bentley, it is clear that Newtonian gravitation is a force misrepresented by ballers to believe the fiction that is known as gravity. How can we misrepresent an observable physical phenomena? For all we need to know there is a force. Things have mass. They accelerate towards other masses. Therefore, they have a force. F equals ma. Newton's second law of motion. You are right that Newton said not to attribute any kind of theory about gravity to him because even he realized that his maths presented some problems and seemed to suggest that gravity reached out as if by magic instantaneously across vast distances. That's why he never suggested a mechanism for what he observed. He just described it mathematically. Einsteinian gravity is an observed phenomenon. I did a test recently where I made an egg move. When the egg moved, it's the movement of the egg, as per Einstein's gravitation, that is gravity. Excuse me, uh, the fuck did you just say? Einstein would not say any such thing. Einstein said that gravity was the curvature of space-time due to the uneven distribution of masses that causes an apparent attractive force between masses. In your eggs experiment, this is an egg. Yeah, we know Riley, that's an egg, just, just calm down. What you did was add some salt to the water. This changed one of the variables in the buoyancy force equation, rho vg, and tried to claim that a part per million meter measured density. Okay, that's coming in at 212 parts per million tap water. Don't know what that means, it's just a number. It could be unicorn farts, it's just a tap, it's just a number. Because you, Riley, are a fucking idiot. Um, you're on the wrong channel, mate. Off you go. Subscribe to Team Skeptic. It's the effect of the curvature of space-time caused by the uneven distribution of mass. It isn't the why, it's a visualization, a phenomena, an observed phenomena, step one of the scientific method. General relativity isn't an observation, you muppet. It's an explanation of the observation, an experimentally demonstrated and verified explanation. This teacher is lying to people, his subs, his children that he teaches in school, about gravity. Newton was not about what we see, Einstein is about what we see. Einstein is an effect. Newton was a force. Amazing. Every word of what you just said was wrong. It's clear to anyone with half a brain that you haven't a fucking clue what you're talking about. That is literally the opposite of how it is. And as for conspiracy cats lying, no. He's teaching kids what they need to know for high school physics. To have a basic understanding of the world around them, help them pass their GCSEs and prepare them for A-level and possibly further if they want to continue their study in physics. Now Riley is demanding that I show him my physics degree certificate, which I'm not going to do because I don't have it to hand, I don't have anything to prove to a mentally deficient wannabe lawyer and I don't have a habit of posting my personal information online to people. He says he doesn't think that I have a degree because I explain gravity as an emergent force, so I'm lying to people. I asked Riley what he thinks happens that after high school, where you're taught Newtonian physics, that you get to college or uni and they tell you that actually that was all just a lie, it's not a force, it's the curvature of space-time. His response was this, you are told it's an effect, not a force. Whether the penny drops or not is another matter, and I don't think they tell you it's a lie. I think they expect you to join the dots. So you think they expect you to just figure out that you were lied to at high school. Why doesn't every person with a degree in physics say something? Because you don't know what you're talking about. And anyone with a degree in physics knows Newton and Einstein describe the same thing. And that it's perfectly acceptable to talk about gravity as a force. And my challenge to you, sleepy dum-dum, is to find one single person with a degree in physics to publicly disagree with me and I will admit that I'm wrong and delete this video. He's wrong. Einstein superseded Newton. Einstein made it about an effect. The egg moving was movement. That's what Einstein calls gravity. He ascribes it to the curvature of space-time caused by the uneven distribution of mass. Again, this teacher is lying to you and his subs and his, and his pupils in school. But he isn't lying. He is doing his job and preparing his students to advance in physics should they wish to. And knowing him, as I do, 
I expect he is an extremely good teacher. And what we've tried to tell you all the time is that science doesn't supersede. It builds on what's become before. Newton wasn't wrong about what he observed and described. And this is evidenced by the fact that every time a satellite is put into orbit, it's Newton's law that is used to calculate its orbital mechanics. It's Newton's laws that are applied when building load-bearing structures like bridges and skyscrapers. Ask an engineer, they will agree. At the moment, general relativity is the best understanding we have, and Einstein's predictions keep getting proven right, like the discovery of gravitational waves. That doesn't mean in the future we won't have a better understanding that explains things better. And that wouldn't mean that Einstein was wrong. He knows that gravity is an effect, but he still tells you that Newtonian is acceptable. In 1915, Einstein surpassed, replaced, superseded, debunked, replaced, whatever a word you want. Well, none of those words are right, so... It became mutually exclusive in 1915 when he submitted his paper on the theory of general relativity. You don't have to like that, but you will accept it. No, no, we won't accept it. And by we, I mean anyone who wasn't a victim of the great brain robbery of 09. And every time this drongo teacher calls out gravity as a force in any way, I'm gonna be there to correct people that this guy's lying. Why you no speak good, Riley? Make a basic structure of sentence you cannot. We don't see gravity. We see things move. Helium balloons must be attracted by a force to the sky, according to this mumbo idiot fool. You've had this explained to you at least 666 times, Riley. I know it won't help, but I think you need to go to the remedial classroom. Again. <laughs> Right, you bunch of morons, sit down and shut up. What is it, Mr. Riley? You need the toilet. Go on then, quickly, we'll, we'll wait till you get back. Mr. Riley, what are you... Are you in a... In a bottle? What do you mean that's how you do it at home? I just threw up in my mouth a little. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. Wait, are you passing that bottle to Mr. Murphy? No, please don't, Mr. Murphy. No, it's still warm. Why, Mr. Murphy? Why? Well, I've been drinking urine now for, for six years. I hate my job. Just take notes or don't. I really don't care at this point. Helium balloons are attracted to the sky, according to flat earthers. But what they ignore is the buoyancy equation has G in it. This G stands for the acceleration due to gravity. The denser air with more mass gets pulled down with more force than the lighter helium in the balloon. This creates an upward force directly opposite to the local gravitational vector. Buoyancy requires gravity. It's the same with a car with a helium balloon in it. Normally, when a car accelerates forward, you get pushed back into your seat. But a helium balloon would move forward as, as you accelerate forward, the heavier air is pushed to the back of the car. I really don't care if any of you paid attention or took notes. I think I'm being punished for being a horrible person in a past life. Class dismissed. Yes, I know we only just started, but I hate all of you and need my breakfast. Where did I put the whiskey? We know there's no force of attraction in clouds. We know there's no force of attraction in stars. But helium balloons do go up. Relative density explains that. Buoyancy explains clouds. That's why when they get too heavy it rains, but to say there is no attraction in stars is just willful ignorance. It's what causes our orbit. Earth is in constant freefall towards our star, but we have a fast enough tangential velocity that we miss it and keep going around. And relative density? No, Riley. Density isn't a force. It cannot cause an acceleration. We can calculate it. We can predict it. It has both a, a vector, it's, it has a direction and a magnitude, it's a vector. Bollocks, you can calculate it. That's an outright lie. For there to be a vector, there has to be a reason for something to go in a particular direction. And the biggest problem for your claim of density being a force is that density gives no reason to go in a particular way. Yes, a lead ball is more dense than water, but how does the lead ball know which way is down? It doesn't. 
no matter how much you bleat like the sheep that you are, following around Nathan Oakley and Quantum Eraser, you cannot escape the need for a downward acceleration for things to, you know, actually accelerate towards the ground. Relative density is a bunch of crap. But they ignore this because it doesn't go with their narrative, their religion, their belief. This guy's lying to people about gravity. No, Katz isn't lying. Calling people a liar because you don't understand is about as arrogant as you can get. And we don't have beliefs. We have evidence and actual science. Not your batshit crazy version of science. We know what gravity is because current physics defines it. Einstein defines it. It is defined. We also know what causes it. Einstein caught, defined it with its cause. It all goes back to your definition of current physics. Gravity is the curvature of space-time caused by the uneven distribution of mass. And you haven't the first clue what that means, do you? The curvature is what causes the apparent attractive force between masses. You are under the idiotic assumption that it stops at warping space-time. Current physics says that warping space-time leads to the Newtonian side that engineers use every day. I missed off the first two words of the definition. And I'm going to emphasize them now. It's the effect of the curvature of space-time caused by the uneven distribution of mass. So we do know what gravity is and we do know what causes it. Einstein described it as a visualization, an effect, a perceived phenomena. Yeah. You can shout the effect as loud as you like. It still doesn't change the fact that you are comically ignorant to any of the physics that you talk about. Your knowledge of physics comes from skimming quotes from articles and textbooks without ever understanding any of the context. Your brain, Riley, is simply too dull to visualize any of the complex concepts required to understand what you quote. I tell you to read a fucking book, but you wouldn't understand, so there's no point. Einst uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson dropped his, his microphone. The, the movement of the microphone in the, the, the direction that we attribute known as down is what Einstein says gravity is. It's the movement. Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. You're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Riley, you're dumb as fuck. It's not any force that's pulling it towards the ground or a force pushing it towards the ground as per Newton. Einstein's gravity is mutually exclusive. This guy's lying. However, you try getting any baller to explain how the curvature of space-time caused by the uneven distribution of mass is what caused uh, Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson's microphone to drop. Again, just for you, Riley, in general relativity, the apparent attractive force between masses is an emergent property of the warping of space-time due to the uneven distribution of mass. This is the current understanding we have of gravity. Well, some people understand. Obviously not you. It just becomes comical. They know it becomes comical and they have to swerve it at all costs. Conspiracy Cats is lying to people on the internet, but he's lying to your children in school too. He did a degree. He, did a, he knows Einstein is an effect, but he still teaches Newton. He lets all the children come out of school believing gravity was a force because it's in the curriculum. And like I said, it's in the curriculum because they need to have that understanding if they want to progress in physics. Yeah, he knows that it's an effect. You've got to ask yourself, why would a teacher lie to children and justify it on the basis that it's in the curriculum? But deep down inside, he knows that gravity is not a force. The guy's lying. There's no two ways about it and he's teaching it to your kids. If you think that's acceptable, you're a fucking spastic. It isn't okay to lie to children. I was lied to when I was in school. If somebody told me in school that, well, it's in the curriculum, and that's why we teach it to you, but it's not actually a force, it's an effect. Everything would have been different in my life. Lovely language there, Riley, but things would have been different, really. 
I can see it now. Nah, this is more Riley's level. Anthony, if a triangle has the sides one, one and one, do you know what the angles of the triangle are? Which kind of triangle are you on about? Are you on about like a right angle triangle? The triangle has sides one, one, and one. Do you know what the angles are? Um, the angles would be... Well, it would be an equilateral triangle, wouldn't it? Right, so what are the angles? <clears throat> now I'm going to ask this again. If you have a triangle with sides of one, one, and one, what are the angles? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up a triangle calculator. Let, let's do this again. Anthony, a triangle has sides one, one, and one. What are the angles? Is somebody recording this? Because this is just priceless. Well, the, the one I'm using, is not it's not giving me any when I do it. So either this, this calculator is wrong or you're wrong. We have a triangle with sides of one, one, and one. What are the angles? Yeah, so that's an equilateral triangle, right? Right, so what are the angles? Does that work on a right angle triangle? The sides are one, one, and one. What are the yeah. angles? When is that ever used in astronomical calculations for tr measuring trig? Paul Michel Foucault. The guy we all know for the pendulum effect. <laughs> Apparently it shows the rotation of the Earth. What do we know about Foucault? Not that much, really. French, pendulums, that's about it. That's all we know about him. This is the guy. He died in uh, 1988, uh, 1984, aged 57. Does anybody know what he died of? I didn't know what he died of. Presumably old age. There's not that much in it, but for the fact that he was gay, openly gay. He died of HIV, and that's about as much as you can tell. Everything else in here is generally it's not that, you know, not that interesting. There's not that much in it. One thing I want to show you is that if you do a control and F in here and type in pendulum, no mention of the pendulum. Foucault's pendulum is supposed to show the rotation of the Earth. Wouldn't you think that if that was true, it would at least get a mention in his... You've got no answer for it, that's the problem. No, I do. The answer's the same on both models, but I'm not getting into it. We're trying to satisfy the definition of atmospheric pressure by satisfying the mass part for weight. If you can't satisfy mass for weight, then you don't satisfy the definition for atmospheric pressure, and your model does not do what your model claims it does. So where all do we... All mass is in... From? Oh, okay. Newton's first law. All mass is inertial mass. And inside the gravitational that's field, not, all mass is gravitational mass. That's, that's all not mass is that's, accelerating downwards at 9.8 on meters per second. No, that's not Newton's first law. Certainly is Newton's first law. No, it isn't. Newton's first law of motion is an object in motion will remain in motion unless acted upon by a force, or an object at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by a force. Which is quite literally the law of inertia. That's not the way you worded it. That is not his law. You need to use that the is words. The law of, no, 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 no. That is the law of inertia. Right. My friend here that's not you talking, and you were asked not to talk because it was supposed to be gently and I, has incorrectly cited Newton's first law of motion. Newton's first law of motion is an object at rest. Can you stop interrupting, please? You were asked to go on mute. An object at rest remains at rest unless acted upon by a force. An object in motion remains in motion unless acted upon by a force. You did not read that, or you did not cite that when you said Newton's law, first law. What did you say about Newton's first law? Newton's first law is the law of inertia. Now, if you would like to Google uh, what is the law uh, of uh, inertia, uh, I think you'll uh, find uh, it is no, Newton's not. first law. Newton's first law is not Newton's first law of inertia. It's called Newton's first law of motion, and as I've correctly cited on, on demand, it is an object in motion will remain in motion, and the same way an object at rest will remain in rest unless acted upon by a force. You have not got your laws of motion correct. Sorry. Hey, I'm FTFE, and welcome back to the channel that murders stupidity in public, where everyone can see it. 
There isn't many flat earthers that say new things. Normally, it's just some garbled version of Eric Dubay's 200 proofs regurgitated by someone with an IQ scraping around somewhere near the bottom of the barrel. So it amazes me, and endlessly humours me, that there is one flat earther who continuously pumps out the stupid with alarming regularity. This is a flat earther so stupid and meme-worthy that he's actually placed second. Twice in a row on Red Rhetoric's annual Dumb Fuck of the Year award. And this year, he has said a whole bunch of monumentally stupid things that I think are more than worthy of getting him a win this time around. He's wrong about everything. All of the time. Is so stubborn he can't even admit when he's wrong and seems to be getting stupider as the years pass. This is the first flat surfer to get his third episode of Flurfs Are Idiots. He's back for episode 32. It's the one, the only, thank God, Sleeping Warrior. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. <laughs> Thank you for joining me once again for a look into the mind of an idiot. There's much of a mind there though, and what there is operates at about 1% of capacity. Anyway, Sleeping Warrior is the biggest idiot of all time. I've honestly not come across anyone so stupid before in my entire life. There's so much stupid that I don't know where to start. So I guess we'll start with looking at his research skills with an example of how good they are. On my channel recently, Red's Rhetoric made an appearance in debate against a man with the um, worst beard I've ever seen, Howard George Stirrup. During the debate, Red counters Howard's Moonlight is Cold nonsense by referencing a video done by fellow debunker Astronomy Live. Well, you still had six and a half minutes left because I paused the timer every time I interrupted you. Um, oh, have I got time I, left? I, Can I put my other points in? Uh, no, you're, you were supposed to be rebutting the evidence. Oh, Howard, don't interrupt me. Um, you were supposed to be rebutting the evidence that Reds brought, which I'm going to just declare you failed miserably. Um, so, Reds, would you like to address the evidence that he brought? Sure. Tell me when. So, go. Okay. Um, I'm going to just put this uh, to you, Craig, just make sure it makes it into the description. It is a video from Astronomy Live showing that uh, moonlight is not colder, whatever the hell that means. So anyway, gravity is irrelevant to the shape of the Earth. Gravity is not the same as geometry. Astronomy Live debunked the cold water, uh, or I'm sorry, the cold light moonlight thing on its channel two years ago. Meteorites explode, which make round craters. GMO is irrelevant to the shape of the Earth. Soviet brainwashing is irrelevant to the shape of the Earth. Nixon being a douchebag is irrelevant to the shape of the Earth. Aerosols is irrelevant to the shape of the Earth. EMF safety levels and no Wi-Fi zones is also irrelevant to the shape of the Earth. Dr. Kenneth Lee Clark wasn't involved in cosmology or space science, therefore is irrelevant to the shape of the Earth. Taylor Swift and secret messages and Beavis and Butthead do America is irrelevant to the shape of the Earth. Princess Diana's family connections is also irrelevant to the shape of the Earth. Climate change is not a question of geometry, therefore is irrelevant to this discussion. Blood transfusions are also irrelevant to the shape of the Earth. And numerology can be used to prove anything, like the time I used it to prove that Russian biz had a sexual relationship with OJ Simpson and he was the bottom bitch. I'm done. As you can see, the video Red's Rhetoric is referencing plays in the background as Red sent me the link on Google Hangouts and I loaded it into the vMix software as he started that specific debunk. Although first I do want to point out how many of these um, little moments on my channel Riley captures. Hey clucking warrior. But yeah, he made a video about that section and demonstrated how little research flat earthers do. Let's let Riley dig his own grave. Okay, so Reds has just demonstrated what he relies upon for demonstrating that moonlight is not colder. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pop this little window out so it can be seen bigger. I've got, it, I've got the resolution turned up to the biggest it can be. And what I'm going to do is show how this... Um, basically is the most inconclusive sack of shit I've ever seen. So, Astronomy Live, whoever this guy is. This is what Reds accepts is proof of moonlight being cold or not cold, right? Let's look at what we see in this. We can we can imagine the setup. He's got moonlight on the left-hand side, he's got shade on the right. Whether 
Obviously, colder on the left, warmer on the right. This is what Reds accepts to be true. Alright, watch this. There's nothing on screen there. Can't see it. It's blurred out of focus. Can't see shit. Now we see 65.8. But watch what happens. After a couple of frames, the 65.8. I'm going to say the 65.8 was what was on the shade side. And then the camera, and then the thing changes. I'm going to say that's 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 uh, lead time. That's ping. That's lag. 57.7. It seems to me that when the when he had his, his um, infrared thermometer on this side, whatever that figure is, which we can't see, is what's on screen there. So he's got 65.8. I think that 65.8 is what he had on this side. Now this is the most stupid demonstration of moonlight being cold I've ever seen yet yeah, this is what reds accepts so let, let's let's see that again moonlight's on the left that will be colder shade on the right that will be warmer we can't see shit on the shade side intentional maybe so he attacks the video from astronomy live because he correctly don't worry he's he's still not right points out the poor example and bad methodology of the person doing the apparent moonlight temperature test and here's the kicker that section of the clip that Sleeping Warrior showed is from a flat earther doing it wrong, as he said, which if he'd actually watched the video from Astronomy Live, he'd have known and not made a video making himself look stupid. Again. I mean, it's not like we even made it difficult to find. Okay, um, I'm going to just put this uh, to you, Craig. Just make sure it makes it into the description. It is a video from Astronomy Live showing that uh, Moonlight is not colder, whatever the hell that means. Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. In the video you see playing from Dan Rostov's channel, the claim is made that Moonlight makes objects colder. We said the video was gonna be in the description, and it was in the description. So it's only Riley that's to blame for not actually doing the research and watching the video that he is talking about. Riley even did a follow-up video saying that Reds and I were being dishonest after his mistake was pointed out to him, instead of admitting that he was wrong, proving he isn't only stupid, but dishonest and stupid. What, is that not stupid enough? Oh, don't worry, there's so much more. Next up, Riley misunderstands gravity, density, and buoyancy all in one fell swoop. It's Sleeping Warrior's famous density tower. Okay, everybody, today we're gonna paint like Bob Ross. We're gonna start off with my famous uh, density tower. Why'd you call it your famous density tower, Riley? Back to the old flat earth research fail here because a quick reverse image search finds that that particular density tower was first seen in a video on the website stevespanglerscience.com on the 8th of December, 2010, long before your dumbass was on the scene. So no, not yours at all. What you're famous for, Riley, it's for being a fucking idiot. And for this illustration, we're going to think that we are the uh, cherry tomato in the middle. So we are the cherry tomato in the middle. Let's remove all the labels so that we don't have any of the labels. Yeah, let's just uh, get rid of all the labels. We don't need to actually know what any of those things are, do we? Just as long as we know that we are the cherry tomato, I guess. And we're going to give these numbers later. So let's add some artifacts. Now that we've got rid of all of the numbers, let's going to add some pet elements to the picture. We'll start with some ground. This is the ground and the cherry tomato is now on the ground. And we need to give these values some numbers so that we can uh, make sense of these things. Right, so after taking away the actual labels, you're just going to relabel them with arbitrary numbers. And we're going to get rid of the bottom half of the density tower and just re replace it with the ground. This is very scientific, Anthony. Keep going. We're all learning S something. It's not what you think we're learning, but trust me, we're learning something. Not that difficult. We'll call the ground a thousand. We'll give the arbitrary value of the uh, human to be about 70. And we'll give all the other layers some numbers. 
Uh, we'll finish up at the top with 1.5 for the uh, ping pong ball and then we'll change the ping pong ball into a sun and then all of a sudden it's beginning to look a lot like our world, don't you think? No, I don't think. I've got so many questions. What's causing the arrangement of densities? Why isn't it arranged the other way round? Are we only seven times denser than the air at sea level? Are you asserting the sun is lighter than air and it's just floating up there? Does the density just keep going up below one? No, Lily. I don't think it looks or is in any way representative of reality. At all. So now let's give it some uh, water. We'll give the water the value of 67 because we know that humans can drown in water without the ability to swim. Oh shit, how far are we into the video? Uh, guys, get, get your face palm protection ready if you haven't already. Th this is Riley we're, we're dealing with here. <sighs> you gave us, humans, the density value of 70, but the water has a density value of 67 when humans are actually less dense than water. It's why we flow. Of course, if we take on extra water and start to drown, then we will increase our density and sink. But on the whole, humans are less dense than water. Your lovely drawing is looking less and less like reality the longer you go on. But please do continue. We all need someone to laugh at. And now I think we'll have some clouds, some stratos and cumulonimbus. So we'll stick them some stratos clouds, they're the lower levels, we'll give them the value of 8.7. And the cumulonimbus clouds will give you the value of 4.2, because they're a little bit higher in the atmosphere. It's beginning to look a lot like a, a, a landscape environment now, don't you think? Let's consider the elements that make up the air, the atmosphere. We know that nitrogen and oxygen are the main com um, component elements to the atmosphere. So we'll put some, we'll bear that in mind in the volume, in the states of the volume, but the two labels that we're going to use for the uh, layers of the atmosphere. Yeah, let's consider the components of the atmosphere, shall we? Carbon dioxide has a density of around 1.98 kilograms per meter cubed, and the density of oxygen is around 1.4 kilograms per meter cubed. So why aren't we all suffocating in a band of CO2? All the oxygen should be up in higher altitudes. And we also know that all of the gases have got atomic weights. So when we look to what the atomic weights are in the periodic table, we can see that nitrogen and oxygen are both se uh, 7 and 8. They're numbered 7 and 8 in the periodic table. No, sleeping dumbass. The atomic weight of oxygen and nitrogen is not 7 and 8. That is simply their atomic number how many protons they contain, which, which defines what they are. Hydrogen is one, and it goes all the way up to Uganison at 118. This is not their atomic weight. Their atomic weight, or atomic mass, is slightly less than the sum of the masses of all their constituent protons, neutrons, and electrons. It's slightly less due to the binding energy mass loss, as described in the famous equation E equals mc squared. And we know that they, as you go further down the table, they've got different elemental weights. So we know that um, the, the, the environment that we're breathing has these elements to it. So we can stick all these elements in. We'll just label them up as, as such. And we can see, all of a sudden, it begins to look very explainable without this so-called downwards acceleration force that's not a force, that everybody wants to be a force but isn't there. And even if it is there, nobody can prove it, but nonetheless, we, we're demanded that we accept that it is there. You're never going to get this, are you? Gravity is a force, if you're talking about Newtonian physics. It's an obvious, measurable, detectable force that is explained perfectly by the equation Fg equals g m1 m2 over r squared. But we know it's not really a force. It's an effect of the warping of space-time by mass that makes everything fall into it that falling into the curvature of space-time is measured as a force. And this is what Einstein told us and what George Musser confirmed when I directly asked him in an interview. And I see your little get out clause there of the sun mixes everything up. No, according to you, the sun is really light and is moving at 15 degrees per hour across the sky. If it's small and local, then that isn't very fast and won't mix up anything in your world governed by your magical density and buoyancy we'd still be suffocating on CO2. But it's okay because it isn't just density and buoyancy, is it? There's a force, isn't there? And we know what that force is, don't we? There's a file. Gravity, you fucking retard. Gravity, have you ever heard of fucking gravity? Gravity!
Gravity! Whatever we live in, we don't need a downwards acceleration force. Everything is relative to us, and this pictorializes for everybody how really straightforward our world really is. I hope this makes sense. No, it doesn't make any sense. At all. Not until you can explain what the sun is, why it's got such a tiny density value, and where's the moon in your picture? And what is the moon? And while you're at it, can you explain the tides? Coriolis force? Eopvos? Gyroscopes? Pendulums? Oh my god, you're so fucking stupid it burns. Just go to the remedial classroom, you muppet. <laughs> Okay everyone, shut up and sit down. I'm the substitute teacher, Mr. Katz, and I'm here today because your normal teacher can't cope with your stupidity anymore and has had a nervous breakdown. Um, I'm sure this has been covered already, but you still don't understand why buoyancy and density aren't a replacement for gravity. Yeah? What is it, Mr. Uh, Riley? You're Mr. Riley. I read your thesis, you know, best laugh I've had all year. Anyway, shut up. Okay, so let's make this simple. Gravity acts as a force which pulls objects downwards. Now, in the case of something that's floating on water, it's not being pulled downwards, it's floating, which means there's a force in the opposite direction. We call that force upthrust or buoyancy. Now, the amount of upthrust or the amount of buoyancy is going to depend on how much water has been displaced by the object in the water. Density doesn't fit into either one of those things because density isn't a force, it doesn't have a direction, it's not a vector. Density is literally just the mass per unit volume of the object. Okay, that's time. Um, your homework is figuring out how to get dressed on your own and learning to tie your shoelaces. Your normal teacher will be back next week if he has recovered from your stupidity. I'm surprised, though, that with all of you here, that this amount of density in one room hasn't collapsed into a black hole and destroyed the universe. Paul Michel Foucault. The guy we all know for the pendulum effect. shows the rotation of the earth. What do we know about Foucault? Not that much really. French, pendulums, that's about it. That's all we know about him. This is the guy. He died in uh, 1988, uh, 1984, aged 57. Does anybody know what he died of? I didn't know what he died of. Presumably old age. There's not that much in it, but for the fact that he was gay, openly gay, he died of HIV, and that's about as much as you can tell. Everything else in here is generally it's not that, you know, not that interesting, there's not that much in it. One thing I want to show you is that if you do a control and F in here and type in pendulum, no mention of the pendulum. Foucault's pendulum is supposed to show the rotation of the earth. Wouldn't you think that if that was true, it would at least get a mention in his Wikipedia page? We aren't done yet, guys, because Riley just can't stop being wrong. Here's the video he put together to try and disprove the Earth's rotation. It's a bit of a boring video, so I added a dramatic voiceover to make it more interesting. Scientific method. Step one. Observe a phenomena. The sun appears to go down. Step two, hypothesis. What causes that? We are told the earth is turning. This is the presumed cause. Step three, experiment. Can we see the proof we are turning, please? We want the presumed cause. Proving, proving, uh, I, I think he means pr proven. Scientifically, we want measurements of Earth turning without any doubt. Show that it is the Earth moving. Prove that it is not the lights turning. Or just admit that you cannot prove the Earth is turning scientifically after all. Then we can do the same with gravity. You want an experiment that shows Earth is rotating? Uh, I mean, sure. No worries. Bob? If the Earth is spinning at one rotation every 24 hours, that means that every hour it has to turn 15 degrees. 
And if the gyroscope is mounted anywhere on Earth, it's going to drift. In today's 21st century navigation systems, they're using what's called a ring laser gyroscope. It is extremely precise. If we could simply get one of these ring laser gyroscopes, we would be able to prove once and for all that there is no rotation to the Earth. One of the people in the community actually purchased one for $20,000. But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift, a 15 degree per hour drift. Cheers, Bob. Oh, is that not enough? Well, there's also this experiment from the gentleman physicist that uses a homemade Foucault's pendulum to physically observe the rotation of the Earth and use the resulting angle from the drift of the pendulum to calculate his latitude and distance away from the North Pole. Riley, will you ever get anything right? A solar eclipse will happen every single month. And why? Because the, it takes 27 days, 27 point something days for the moon to orbit the Earth. So at some point, it's going to cross the sun. And it does it every single month. Now, I have no explanation for why it takes every 100 years for America to get one, because the law of probability dictates that it should be every few years, but we're being told it's once every 100 years. So there is a solar eclipse every day, every month. The only problem is we don't see it because it's usually over the water. So you can bet me a thousand pound because you have to come up with the reason for why it's not when the, when the, when the moon orbits the earth once every month, you burk. I bet you a thousand pound solar eclipses happen every single month. The issue is we never see them because they're normally over the earth, uh, normally over the water. Next up, we have an excellent combination of Riley's stupidity and dishonesty mixed together. Riley was over on Quantum Eraser's channel talking about an apparent letter that Einstein was sent by the University of Bern in Switzerland, rejecting him for a position at the university. Let's listen to him talking about the letter. All right, so this is this is University of Bern, dated 1907, June 1907. Dear Mr. Albert Einstein, your application for the doctorate has not been successful at this time, and as such, you are not eligible for the position of associate professor. Now, this is the most important bit. Whilst you posed an interesting theory in your article published, Analan de Physique, we feel that your conclusion about the nature of light and the fundamental connection between space and time are somewhat radical. Overall, we find your assumption to be more artistic than actual physics. Now, when I first read this back in the day, a couple of years ago, it, it, I read it as, oh, we got rejected first time round and I didn't think any more of it. But the fact that, that now when I look at this with a bit further, a bit more down the uh, experience line, I look at it and I think, so they've actually rejected it because it wasn't actual physics. They must be referencing scientific method when they're referencing actual physics. And to re uh, reject it on the grounds of artistic, they're actually referencing pseudoscience. So I guess what they're doing here, the way I interpret this, is that they're being polite and professional and saying, you're a pseudoscientist. John, would you agree? Oh, where to begin? So let's start with the fact that this letter is apparently from the University of Bern in Switzerland, where one of its four national languages is German. And they're writing to a German person who, who speaks German, obviously. So why is the letter in English? Because, as I've said, Switzerland has four national languages, German, French, Italian and Romanian. So there's no reason at all that this letter should be written in English. Next, let's take a look at the person that apparently wrote that letter. It says it's from the Professor Wilhelm Henrich, PhD, who is Dean of Sciences. Now that's an issue because the letter is dated 1907. And in 1907, the subjects of science and philosophy were still very much connected. So the position of Dean of Sciences didn't even exist when this letter was apparently written. The stamp next to the non-existent Dean of Sciences is for some reason the coat of arms of Hungary. In 1907, Hungary didn't exist as it was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, a major European power at the time. So that coat of arms didn't exist. And finally, Riley made a massive mistake. He cropped the letter to try and hide this. Stamps with the face of Albert Einstein on. Why would the University of Bern be sending a letter to a unknown German person using stamps with that person's face on? It's so obvious that this fake letter was fake and even a basic Google search will confirm that.
but the fact that Riley was cropping the stamps means that he knew that and is so stupid that he thought he could get away with presenting this as a real letter that was sent to Einstein. Riley, this is actually one of the stupidest things you've ever done. You're not only stupid, but you are a liar and stupid. Anthony, if a triangle has the sides one, one and one, do you know what the angles of the triangle are? Which kind of triangle are you on about? Are you on about like a right angle triangle? The triangle has sides one, one, and one. Do you know what the angles are? Um, the angles would be... Well, it would be an equilateral triangle, wouldn't it? Right, so what are the angles? <clears throat> now, I'm going to ask this again. If you have a triangle with sides of one, one, and one, what are the angles? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up a triangle calculator. Let, let's do this again. Anthony, a triangle has sides one, one, and one. What are the angles? Is somebody recording this? Because this is just priceless. Well, the, the one I'm using, is not, it's not giving me any when I do it. So either this, this calculator is wrong or you're wrong. We have a triangle with sides of one, one, and one. What are the angles? Yeah, so that's an equilateral triangle, right? Right, so what are the angles? Does that work on a right angle triangle? The sides are one, one, and one. What are the yeah. angles? When is that ever used in astronomical calculations for tr measuring trig? And that's all the stupid that I can take for today. But believe me, I'm not finished with Riley. I'm working on a video that will serve as my official nomination for Red's Rhetoric's Dumb Fuck of the Year Award 2019. This is Sleeping Warriors year, guys. Two second places in a row, it's his time. He has some tough competition, though, in JM Truth. And make sure to check out Team Skeptic's new video to see why he thinks JM Truth should win. But that's it for today. Hey, I'm Fight the Flat Earth and welcome back to the channel that does to stupidity what Rose did to Jack. Y you know, because there is plenty of space on that door. Today we look at a flat earther who's developed his very own cult of personality. He's got minions all over the place constantly quoting his phrases like The globe is the affirmative claim and has the burden of proof. Show me water sticking to a spinning ball and tangible substance. A flat earther who is angry and appears to live in his shed? When he does leave his shed, it seems to be to harass the students of Glasgow University. Do you guys know who I'm talking about? What about you, Dell? Surely you know who I'm talking about. No! It's, it's you, Del. You, it's it's Dell. Of, of course, I'm talking about Mr. Shed Rage himself, Dell from Beyond the Imaginary Curve. I asked Sir Sick if he wanted to help me with this video, and let's see what he said. Hmm, yeah. Uh, so, I am having a really hard time uh, believing this fight of Flat Earth. I mean, you're really telling me the man in the shack is still pointing at things? Giving us his perspective on perspective? The very same thing causing him to be sentenced as a jester in the Order of the Sillies? Now, I usually handle these jester appeals to be released from the Order at the campfire, where they present their case. But hey, <laughs> They already tried his hand and failed at that with this Lego LIGO lab. However, I guess it is a lot more fun having fun at the expense of Dell here with a double slam dunk on this, um, dipshittery. And I am sure <laughs> Dell's camera work at the very least has improved. Let's have a wee look, shall we? Oh boy, this is gonna be interesting. Yeah, no, no, I asked, I asked for Sir Sick. No, that's, that's Radical the Unhallowed Knight. Yeah, well, they kind of look the same, but why, why, would I, why would I want Pepsi when I could drink Coke? I mean, you're my agent. What are NASA even paying you for? Oh, um, this is episode 23 of Flurf's Are Idiots for Dell from Beyond the Imaginary Curve. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. Find the Find the Before we get going, this is the last reminder for if you want to get involved in Project Eratosthenes, my worldwide collaborative science experiment to determine the shape of the Earth. If you want to get involved on July 27th and repeat Eratosthenes' experiments of measuring the angles of shadows cast by the sun at solar noon, then email me at fighttheflatearth at gmail.com. We need people to do the experiment, help collect the data, live stream, or any other way that you think you could get involved. Anyway, on with the stupid. Yeah. Shed Rage, someone who is very angry about the fact that 
he doesn't understand the world around him. Let's invoke mystical rocks flying around the vacuum with mystical magical powers that's pulling, ooh, pulling stuff and letting it go and pulling, ooh. Let's believe that shite, shall we? You come in and offer us some proofs of your blue pear-shaped testicle flying about the infinite vacuum of space with gas and air and water all clung to it. <laughs> you fucking lunatic. You believe that? You well, believe not only is the ocean nature defyingly bent, but at certain times the water pulls out even further. Ooh, so you've even made a steep curve. I mean, get to fuck that. You believe there's a ball of rock flying in the vacuum of space with a gaseous environment and liquid or clung to it? That's how fucked up your beliefs are, right? Nothing in the reality would ever show you that that is in, in any way, shape or form possible, right? So we're not the idiots, you're the fucking idiot. Oh, bless him. He's so confused. His biggest problem is that he doesn't understand gravity. I mean, like, at all. So let's have a look at a video of him really not understanding gravity and see if we can't help him. Or more likely just point and laugh at how stupid he is. Right. We've been embarrassed about this. I'm not surprised because I'm embarrassed for you. Because I know what's coming. And I hope that one day you can look back at this video and actually be embarrassed with yourself. But I'm not embarrassed for me. I'm embarrassed for you. Because I need to go to this length to show you how ridiculous the idea that you live on a spinning ball actually is. Me standing in the pissing rain, getting soaking wet, you make the point. Hope you appreciate it. Oh, I do, Del. I do. Thanks to you, I get to show everyone the hilarious depths of human stupidity. I'm well aware that my channel wouldn't exist without you brain-dead morons, and I hope that by showing how stupid you and other flurfs are, I can deter anyone from falling into the trap of thinking you have an actual clue about reality. Hey, found this shape. I've seen it in other videos of the ball of earth with the oceans removed. Hey, let's try this. So I just need to read this statement from my lawyer. Dear viewer, the following footage contains so much stupid you may be compelled to facepalm. Fight the Flat Earth would like to remind you that these facepalms can be of unexpected severity and that means you should wear a pair of oven mitts or some other form of protection for your head. No responsibilities uh, for injuries occurred whilst watching this following content will be assumed by FTFE. I can't deal with any more lawsuits and what he's about to say is really... Really fucking stupid. I don't know what's happening, but it doesn't appear to be filling up to the shape of the ball. It seems to be running off the bottom here. I'll try this. Again, it's running off the sides. I can't get it to mound up to the shape of the board. I, I don't know why. You don't know why. That I can believe. And that's the big issue here, isn't it, Delboy? You don't know why. And you know what? That seems like your problem. But you seem to think it's everyone else's problem. You know, everyone else's problem that they aren't as stupid as you are. Should I spin it? Should I spin it? Aye. Give it a spin. No, you shouldn't spin... Oh, what am I saying? I don't want to spoil your fun. Go ahead, Delroyd. Spin until your little flurfy heart's content. How about you? Right, let's see. Oops. Of course the water is falling off the side of that ball because 
Gravity, you fucking retard! Gravity! Have you ever heard of fucking gravity? Gravity! Gravity! Thanks, there's a file. You know what, guys? I can't take too much of Dell at once. He makes my brain sad. Sir Sick, I mean, Radical, you're up. Hey, I know this is going to be seriously windy. Oh, for fuck's sake, Dell! Well, I'm gonna try my best. Oh boy, this is gonna be <laughs> interesting. All right, are you taking the piss here, Dal? Let's have a wee look, shall we? That is, if we can hear you. Well, <laughs> at least he's pointing at things. Lovely. But based on the noises he made, uh, did he say something about the objects being further away, being lower to the ground? I mean, that, that, that's the exact same thing he said when he started out pointing at things. This is, this is not an appeal, this is a repetition of the things he already said. Now, I know repetition is the thing the Flurf like to do, but contrary to popular belief, I don't like to repeat myself. Or, uh, listen to them repeat themselves. Oh, well, that's just great. Do I have to translate everything? I try to use a focal enhancer and even try to uh, get rid of the bloody wind. But no, that is not possible when the audio quality is this bad. So he said something along the lines of, Oh, look, I'm at the same height as that pillar, when it should in fact be below, or something along those lines. So, once again, Dell does not understand perspective. That's not even mentioning the pillar is clearly above you, and you being in the Green Hill Zone or something, or the Scottish Highlands, you are also quite elevated. I mean, look at the lake. Look at the bloody lake. Look at the lake. Or, um, in, uh, is it a lock? I think it's a lock in Scottish land, right? What are we doing, Dal? What is going on? Indeed. So basically what he said is, he is at the same elevation, or height as he calls it, as the buildings, and that means the buildings are lower than him, or I don't even know what he's trying to say here. This is even more stupid than the last video where he was pointing at things. You know, the one with the church? What's happening here? I'm confused. It. Oh hey, here we go! Oh look, right now I'm at the same height as that, and the Glenifer Braze has dropped even further! Oh look, right now I'm at the same height as my castle, and it dropped below me even further! That is because you are at a higher elevation than the thing you're pointing at, you utter dick didgeridoo! Holy hell, Del! Not even dick flute will suffice to describe what I have to deal with here! Behind the pole! Oh, for fuck's sake, huge amounts of garbage! Huge! Oh no, something is behind the pole! For fuck's sake, Del! That is indeed the first thing you said that made sense! Uh-huh. Apart from the... Why? Are you making those noises or is that the wind? At this point, I, I could be inclined to believe you are making those noises. But yeah, I, I have a vague idea of what you're trying to say here. Things in the back drop away. No, things in the back get smaller due to angular resolution. Perspective. In no way, shape or form has an explanation, or even included in its description, things dropping away behind the horizon, bottom up. You know, I'm kind of amazed I actually <laughs> was able to dissect that noise, Del. Oh, I don't know. More noise? I'm freezing my nuts off here. Well, I... <laughs> <laughs> you know, at, at these moments, I actually think you are a po Del. I mean, seriously. Also, you do know, do realize your uh, nuts, in this case, are spherical, which makes it even more ironic. <laughs> ah, but do, do, go, do go on. You make these points, right? Apart from you not actually making any points, you're just saying things. But yeah, just saying things is kind of your shtick, isn't it? Those days are my child, and we're 
working up at it, which is why the bays are dropping away behind it. Well, based on how your camera is being held, you are actually at the same elevation as those buildings. But Del, now stay with me here. Things further away appear smaller in size, but that's not actually what's happening. The buildings don't shrink in size. It's just because they are further away, they get smaller in size visually. And things which are above you are still above you. That's how the horizon works. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, fight the flat earth. Uh, he's not bringing anything new to the table. So what the hell is the deal with this? Craig, what, what are you doing to me? New? Come on, Radical. When has a flirt ever brought anything new? And, uh, I'm safe. Good. I got told your artillery had my new coordinates since I moved to this uh, NASA-funded studio. We'll come back to you in a bit, but I think I'm ready for some more of Dell's stupid. We'll give something else a try, yeah? Should we go for that? Should we go for this here? doing Dell. Please don't say what I think you're gonna say. I can only survive so many face palms. I mean, I can tell you right now that the answer is gravity pulling down. It would appear that there seems to be more level on this side here. I'm thinking maybe gravity prefers this side to this side. It appears to be more level at this end. Oh my god, that sentence hurt to say. You do understand that gravity pulls straight down. I mean, of course you don't understand, ever. How have you got to be an adult? I mean, how did you actually make it to this point in your life when you understand so little? Or maybe it's just because it's on uneven ground. Yep, that's right, because the ground is uneven. Not not level, as in perpendicular to gravity. But, but you think that proves something else, don't you? Amazing. We'll try this, see what happens. Oh, oh. There you can see that it tilts it, finds its own level. Yep, there's the magic phrase, water finds its own level. Well, yeah, it's kind of true, but um, only because there's a force acting on it. Well, you know, this stupid can actually only be taken in short chunks. Radical, back to you. I'll give it another whirl. I'll give him a few more minutes. If he doesn't make any point anytime soon, I'm going to fire something at him. Warning, warning, midlife crisis shed rage about to commence. Warning, warning. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, really enjoyed that. Caught one this morning as well. So, what else? That's about it. So, let me see here. Fucking fold and cry. Big snippers. Big snippers. Big snippers. You will fucking fold and cry. Pink your flat ears. 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 Cunt-stained cock-stains, cunt-weasels, knob-jockeys, it's fucking sad. Big snippers, cunt-stained cock-stains, cunt-weasels, knob-jockeys, it's fucking sad. Video is not proof of anything. I'm not interested in opticals. Just about to play a wee video that, that I've done this, this afternoon. <laughs> I'm totally and completely on his dick. Thefts, thefts, thefts. Thefts, thefts, thefts. Thefts, thefts, thefts. Freak your fat ear, Sorry. Sorry about that. I um I don't know what what happened there.
Let's try that again, Radical. Fine, I'll give it another whirl. I'll give him a few more minutes. If he doesn't make any point anytime soon, I'm gonna fire something at him. Fucking Miles Davis deletes his channel. He's a liar. Hold on. <clears throat> um, Miles Davis. I'll link him in the strip. Uh, I actually, uh, Flight of Flat Earth. Could you link him in the description? I'll give you the link. So basically, he completely demolished us everything Dell says. And Dell doesn't like that. So, you know. <laughs> ah! Oh, come on! So we're gonna go on a stroll with Dell. Where shall we go? Well, maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe we're going over to the car. Well, if it is freezing, Dell, why aren't you in your car or in a building or even brought a bloody coat? Those things exist, you know. And glitch made. Don't you just love floor for camera work? And in case you're wondering, the answer is no. Oh, for fuck's sake, he is actually with his car. Why? Wh why? Wh why? I just don't understand these freaking flurfs and their camera work. Why? why? What the hell did you expect with your camera phone microphone in these windy conditions? It's a good thing I speak slash R whoosh. What about all the w wind, you know? Whoosh? Whoosh? Oh, look, stuff at the same height as the pool. I can just assert my elevation. Oh look, there's a wee car next to you, why don't you get inside? And also assert is not the word you're looking for mate. We can actually see that you are lower than the freaking building, but that doesn't really matter because the building is still very very tall. It's just far away, which makes it appear to be very very tiny. And it is not very tiny when you're actually up to- Oh good god, why am I explaining this? I already explained this in your previous Order of the Silly videos and you're still going on about this shite. Shite? I never used that word. It's her shit. I don't believe the official- uh, I Del, get in your car. And zoom in on it and say, look, see, I don't need to prove it. I don't need to give you my exact elevation. Yes, because exact measurements are not required for f flat earth. You guys probably thought I was going to say something else, didn't I? Also, tell, <laughs> incoming. Oh, look at that thing go. Oh, look at that thing go, Dal. It's going to go for your face in uh, Scotland somewhere. It doesn't really matter if I'm a bit below the object in the foreground. Except, dipshit, it does matter. Your elevation is <laughs> relevant to how you see objects in the distance. Why are these basic things for basic flirts so bloody, uh, um, well, advanced, I guess? The basic stuff is advanced. Uh -huh. Oh, good god, man, I can't take much more of this. This is exactly the same video as the previous one, and he hasn't evolved at all. It's like he's a f flat earther. Huh. That doesn't count. You've just got to trust me. If I say I'm at a certain height, I'm at the same height as that pole, you just need to bloody well believe me, okay? Oh, wait a minute. He is trying to claim that we don't use measurements and that we don't use data when we are, in fact, using that stuff. I have never seen a flat earther use measurements. They just take measurements out of context if they use measurements at all so yeah if we are going to make a claim that you are above a building in the distance we include that in our measurements not to mention something really important by leveling your camera so you can actually make measurements using the photographs you are taking because you are just waving around your bloody phone in the wind and making no sense you you doubter how dare thee Oh, look. How, how can the Glenifer Braze be below the eye line of that spinning radar tower? Oh, for fuck's sake, Dell. You are looking up at the bloody thing. It's, it's beyond obvious you are looking up at it. Even without measurements, I can see you are looking up at it, and it is much closer to you. So it's not really strange that it is above the bloody mountain in the background, which is much further away. It's visually. That's how perspective works. Now, the mountain itself might be bigger or higher, but because it is further away, it looks visually lower because you are looking up at it. Oh, good God, I'm actually repeating myself, aren't I? The thing is, I can actually eyeball it using your own bloody video. You don't need measurements for this. This is beyond obvious, but apparently not beyond the imaginary curve. A? Eh? You know that planar tool that's uh, sending a signal out? Yeah, across the plane. 
Aye, that one right there. You know that spinning thing? Sending its signal across the plane to find the aeroplanes. Oh look, it's a radar tower, Dell. And just just because you said it's an aeroplane doesn't mean it's flying across a plane. Now you're just being plain silly. Huh? What's that? What do you mean you didn't get the coordinates right? You mean the coordinates for the intercontinental face punch missile? Well, what coordinates did you set it to? Well, shit. But can we just change those coordinates to Dell's location? Oh, okay. Uh, at least reconfigure it to a face palm. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Craig? There might be some uh, technical difficulties with uh, the intercontinental face palm missile. Face punch missile. Uh, I don't know, something is coming your way. <laughs> also, fire another one, just for good measure, at Dell. And this time, put the correct coordinates in there. I don't know exactly what it is, but we are having some kind of magical interference with our uh, projectiles. Yes. I'm at the same height as that. How come the, the breeze is behind me? Well, that's right. Maybe I'm going the same height after all that. Oh yes, I almost forgot Dell is still here. Hi Dell. Bye Dell. Go be useless somewhere else, mate. Now I might have a look at the rest of your video there, Dell. I mean, it is rather amusing, annoying and amusing, but still amusing. Anyway, back to you, Craig. And, um, a heads up? I guess. Thanks for that, Radical. And, um, what do you mean technical difficulties? I've only just recovered from last time. What's that noise? Oh. And unlike Brainy, I haven't had a chance to develop any defences yet. Anyway, back to you, Dell. Probably this here, some objects here. Different things. I don't know if you can see this here, but these objects here seem to have fell out with gravity. Or gravity doesn't like them. Did you just say they fell out with gravity? My god, man, no. Buoyant force, which which requires gravity. They fell out with gravity on oh, my brain. Because they seem to be floating. Now, is it either gravity doesn't like these objects, or is it because maybe these objects are less dense? So they float. Just an idea, you know? See, you're part way there, Dell. You're so close to understanding. But that's as far as you go. You stop there. Why? Yes, density has something to do with it, but there is other things as well. Why don't you ask the big boy questions? Do they scare you? Look at this. It would appear that it's running off. Yeah. Finding its own level and spawn away again. What can I say? I, I, I don't know what else to say. Oh, I mean, you can say something like, Why is that happening? What force is being applied to make that water move towards the ground? But you won't. Or, or can't. Or don't want to. I'm not sure, but you need to start growing up. Do you really think that this is the ocean here? And if I take the side away, that the water will stay or, 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 or on the ball here, you know. You really think that the oceans are like this, you know, and, and upside down with it. It's like this, and these boats can, can come in here and hang upside down the water that all just sticks to that. I mean, does it, does it get any more ridiculous than that? Is there, does there need to be any other argument? What do you think the water would be falling off into? Space? Where there is no up and down? Unless you mean towards the largest mass. But you can't comprehend that, can you? Well, let's see if the teacher in the remedial classroom can explain it any better. Right, everyone, just for once, can we start the lesson with no interruptions? We need to go through... Nope, fuck's sake. What is it, Mr. Pratt? You what? You, you've decided to quit school to make candles? What? No, Mr... Wait, what, what am I saying? Yes, permission granted. Get out. Yes, score. So, here's the absurdity of trying to prove gravity isn't real by pouring water on a ball or tray. So, gravity is the attraction of all mass towards other mass. Meaning... That when you pour water on a ball like Dell was, <laughs> yes, you, you idiot, to try and prove gravity isn't real, you're actually doing the opposite. 
yes, the ball does have its own gravity and it's pulling that water towards it, but it's overcome by the much larger mass that it's near, creating a much bigger gravitational force towards it. So the water is doing what we expect it to do, go towards the larger mass. This is reflected in the proportional relationship between mass and force in the law of gravitational attraction. Um, M Mr. Pratt, wh why are you here? You decided to come back? Oh, that didn't take long, huh? Well, it's home time, so you and the rest of the idiots can stay here, but I'm off. And that is all the stupid that I can take for today. Dell is far beyond ever being helped. And I hope you guys can see just how much of an idiot he is. Thanks for watching, but before we go... Hey, I'm Fight the Flyer, and welcome back to the channel that does to stupidity what Thor did to Thanos near the beginning of Endgame. What? Guys, if you haven't seen it by now, that's on you. The next Spider-Man's nearly out. Today we're going to look at a Flat Earther that kind of confuses me, because alongside Ranty Flat Earth, he provides more evidence for a globe than anything else. But I guess that's the thing, isn't it? No matter how much evidence you give a Flat Earther, or how much evidence they dig up themselves, they seem incapable of admitting that they've been wrong. This Flat Earther, well, he believes in gravity. He proved that the Earth spins on its axis. He can explain the function of an accelerometer, but still somehow says the Earth is flat. I weep for humanity. This is episode 24 of Flurfs Are Idiots and is for Bob Super Noodle Doodle. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. Find the flat earth. Find the flat earth. So, Bob Super Noodle Doodle, leader of FE Core, and probably the most hated man in the YouTube Flat Earth community. Because he and his group of researchers publicly proved the Earth spins. Let's have a listen to what he said. If the Earth is spinning at one rotation every 24 hours, that means that every hour it has to turn 15 degrees. And if the gyroscope is mounted anywhere on Earth, it's going to drift. In today's 21st century navigation systems, they're using what's called a ring laser gyroscope. It is extremely precise. If we could simply get one of these ring laser gyroscopes, we would be able to prove once and for all that there is no rotation to the Earth. One of the people in the community actually purchased one for $20,000. But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift. A 15 degree per hour drift. Can you imagine what the other flat earthers must have thought after that? They must have been so mad at Bob. I wonder what that might have sounded like. Oh, something like this. Bullshit. Guess what? No, you're, you're promoting you're bullshit. Bob, you're a shill. You're a no, you're a shill. If you are, if you're sitting here talking about giants are real based on the Bible, you're a fucking shill. No, I'm you're not saying they're the real. Down, you're trying to water down the flat earth movement, and I'm not gonna let you. Is oh, good. So? Well, then you just stop me there, the Curtis. Fuck. First of all, you just stop me for sharing my opinion. Then on top of that, you did that shitty ass documentary behind the curve that makes us look even more crazy. Oh yeah, and I'm I was the one that did all the editing to make us look bad. Is that right, Curtis? Is yeah, that your contention? Yeah, yeah, well, you're an idiot. You're a, idiot. you're a fucking idiot. Okay. You're a fucking idiot, and you're a shill, and you know you are. You've been. Wah. Oh, cry about it, Curtis. About Come you on. Think, you think I won't call you out? I am. Call me out. I'm saying you're full of shit. And that's why you, you try to suppress me in your chat. So yeah, Flat Earthers, they're annoyed that Bob proved the rotation of the Earth. So they declare him a shill, or say that he didn't say the things he did, and it was deceptive editing. Well, that wasn't the only thing the Behind the Curve documentary showed. Just to back up that Bob didn't get the results he wanted, this conversation happened. At a conference in Raleigh, we want to have proof there's no curvature. And if we can do that, it's game over. But the rotation is not looking good at this point. That's weird. That's so <laughs> we don't want to blow this, you know? Right, right. And like, we got $20,000 20 in this yeah. freaking gyro. But yeah, if we, if we yeah. dumped what As we, we found right now, yeah. we would be, it'd be bad. Yeah, if we, if we yeah. dumped what we, we found right now, yeah. we would be, it'd be bad. We would be, it'd 
would be bad. <laughs> it would be bad. So That's what I just told you is confidential. Okay, I won't say. <laughs> but how could Bob still think that he was right? That even though the gyro registered a drift, he was still right. Well, this was his explanation. We obviously were not willing to accept that, and so we started looking for ways to disprove that it was actually registering the motion of the Earth and that it, in fact, was registering the motion of the sky. So the next thing that we set out to do was to encase the fiber optic gyro in what's called a zero Gauss chamber to see if we could actually shield the energies being generated by the heaven. Heaven energies. Did you, did you actually say heaven energies? You tried to block out the heavenly energies, whatever the fuck they are. Well, how did that go for you? And we were unsuccessful with that, unfortunately. So thanks, Bob. Thanks so much for proving the Earth rotates. It's really helpful in my debates. But you don't understand what you measure, do you? Do you even understand a fiber optic gyroscope? Now, with all this evidence of Bob's based around the fiber optic gyro, you would think he understood the function of one, right? Wrong. No, 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 not really. No, let's have a look at him playing with his toy. So okay, this on the moon. So yeah, that's delay. <laughs> so this thing actually um, is mounted to the frame of the aircraft, okay? So when you mount it on the aircraft and say my front of my hand is the is the front of the plane. Front of the plane, all right. And you can see this thing right here, which what it is um, is, is an atti attitude or an artificial horizon, that's what it's called. And Bob is right, they do use them on planes for the artificial horizon, because they are extremely accurate. Like, really, really accurate. Okay, and down here you have the very, very fine roll, pitch, and yaw. And you can see they're all moving, right? It's just sitting here, but they're all moving. <sighs> yep, they're all moving, as a gyroscope maintains its fixed position relative to the distant stars of the universe which means it will register the movement of whatever it's on. In this case, your desk, which is on your house's floor, which, which is on the earth, which is rotating about its axis. And that's why it's showing movement. Now, what everybody is most interested in is they're saying, well, you know, that 15 degree per hour rotation is picking up the roll. But, but the interesting thing about what's going on here is you have movement on both the, on all the roll, pitch and yaw axes. And it's essentially doing this. Bob, 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 you, you just made the movement of, of something on a sphere. You do realize that, right? Well, here's Wolfie6020 to explain. He had a gyro that he uses on drones and he sticks it on a globe to see what movement you would expect. So just to help you visualize that on a globe, when we put the gyroscope in North America in a level attitude as it would be level sitting on a desk, you can see that it is not polar aligned. And if I rotate that globe, we're going to register movement in all three axes. There you can see the drone is rolling, pitching and yawing simultaneously. As I rotate the globe. So just to emphasize the point, the motion that is being registered is roll, pitch and yaw simultaneously. Have a look at the indication of the movement of that drone. So as Bob nicely explained, the gyro is measuring the pattern of movement you would expect on a globe. So, and what's what it's picking up, and the reason, you know, this is one of the reasons that I know it's either, because if it was just earth rotation, um, it wouldn't be necessarily acting like this. What, what's happening is it's picking up a vortex. Imagine a vortex like this that's spinning in above it, yeah. okay, on multiple axes. This is exactly what that's registering. A vortex? So we've just moved to magic now, huh? Yeah. Is this the heaven energies that you're on about, Bob? I mean, you're basically just making shit up at this point. But on the course method, if I'm on an airplane and just say this is the airplane, let me reset this. Um, if I nose down, right, so now I'm nosing down, and you can see it's dropping below the, the horizon. Yep. And if I pull back, it's going up. Oh. And now if I bank to the left, 
Boom. It bangs to the left, bangs to the right. And then this white dot is the, the yaw. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I got you the angle that you're trying. The so there's, there's yaw, there's pitch, and there's roll. Okay. So Bob just perfectly explained the function of the gyro there. Now, he understands it, how it works, sees it register a drift, but does that lead to the most obvious conclusion of the Earth is rotating? Let's find out. There's the three axes. And like I said, it's just sitting there right now doing nothing. And if I zero it out, you can see it start. And these are the values um, that, it's, that it's picking up. So it's not that it's picking up motion because I can set up my mechanical gyro and it doesn't drift at all. Nothing. I think it's important to realize that a mechanical gyroscope has friction to deal with. However, you can use a mechanical gyro compass to find true north and show the rotation of the earth. Just check the link here. Yeah. But there is this, this ether, this, this luminiferous ether that is in the form of a toroid that is rotating down yeah. constantly. And this is registering it. Yeah. It's that sensitive. And we know electromagnetic forces can move light. Just look at a feral cell. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, so we, it's, this is not theory. The only theory is that the Earth's move and we have no natural observed phenomenon of Earth rotation. So Bob says it's Aether, which was of course disproved by Michelson Morley and Aries failure. And then in comes Nathan Thompson. Check the link there for his episode of Flurfs Are Idiots. And then spouts a load of big words he heard once that bear no relevance to a fiber optic gyro. It's, it's just postulated that this could be proving an Earth rotation. But if it was proving rotation of the Earth, wouldn't it have to also calculate around the sun movement uh, if it's... Oi, Nathan, you've had your episode. Leave some of the stupid for Bob. You want to measure the data of it going around the sun. Well, that's one rotation a year, which is one 365th of a degree drift per day, or one 8,760th of a degree drift per hour? Well, that's, see, now that's the, that's the thing. People want to accept this based on the on the Saniac effect that it uses. Yeah. But then they will reject the Michelson Morley um, mm -hmm. experiment, which instead of using an angular or a circular type of of uh, light phase detection, it uses a linear. Linear. Yeah, right? like LIGOs. It, exactly. And so you uh, that, and that's one thing. LIGO operates. In fact, the LIGO apparatus and the Michelson. Uh, Morley apparatus are virtually identical. Ident just it's two and a half miles long. Yeah, yeah. Morley experiment. Yeah, yeah, yeah Michael's Morley was. Well, as I've said, the Michelson Morley experiment proved the aether wasn't a thing. And so did the Sagnac effect, which I'm guessing you don't understand at all. Go to the remedial classroom to have it explained. <laughs> Okay, idiots and morons, time to shut up and pretend you're learning. I'm going to explain... What is it, Mr. Riley? You, you can't find your triangle calculator. I really don't care. Now, I'm going to explain... Oh what is it, Mr. Truth? You miss Miss Steer. Well, trust me, she didn't know who you were. Now, we're going to learn how a fibre optic gyro works. So a fibre optic gyro has a coil of fibre, and when you input light, half the light goes clockwise and half goes anti-clockwise. If the gyro isn't moving, you're fine. But if the gyro rotates, one path the light travels along becomes shorter, and when the light recombines, you register an interference pattern. It's simple and conclusively proves the Earth spins. Now go away and leave me alone. Now, Bob hasn't only handily proved rotation. A 15 degree per hour drift. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. Uh, he's also admitted that gravity is real. In fact, he had a nice argument with Jism about it. Check out the video by Team Skeptic for that. It's really funny. But let's listen to Bob admit gravity is real. But there is still something, something that is determining up from down. Okay? So... Um, I have talked about this many times about this being electrostatic force um, and that gravity is actually an electrostatic phenomenon. So he thinks gravity is real, but it's electrostatic. Well, the main problem with that is that electrostatic is a repulsive and an attractive force. Gravity is only an attractive force. 
And also, this is an electrostatic voltmeter. It disagrees with your assumption. But the biggest thing that, that I want to say about this is this particular person, you know, who talks about, uh, you know, the density and buoyancy and says that gravity is not a force. Um, I'm sorry, but I have to disagree with that. And here's why. He's talking about Sleeping Warrior. So Mr. Dumbfuck of the Year, even your old buddy Bob thinks that me and George Musser are correct and gravity is a force. Um, and and, and not, I'm certainly not saying that gravity, first of all, is what they're claiming it to be, either Einsteinian or Newtonian. Um, I certainly do not believe for one second that two masses, you know, irrelevant of whatever they are, um, will have an attraction to each other any more than I think that a large, massive object will bend space-time so that things fall into it. Um, well, the Cavendish experiment and the Shishelian experiment disagree with you. Mass most certainly attracts mass. This force is absolutely real. Now, this force is absolutely real. Now, this force is absolutely real. Now, and with that revelation, I've taken all the stupid I can for today. But before I go, Hey, I'm FTFE and welcome back to the channel that force feeds stupidity peanuts and hides its EpiPen. Flat Earthers are not only stupid, but blissfully unaware of how stupid they are. This gives them a false sense of confidence in what they talk about and makes them think they know more than, you know, every expert in the world. This is called the Dunning-Kruger effect or the riley nadell effect. And Flat Earthers live here at the peak of Mount Stupid. With zero knowledge, but mountains of confidence, Eric Dubay, the Prince of Flat Earth, has a permanent throne at Mount Stupid, as he thinks he knows more than every actual smart person on the planet. He tried to debunk one of the smartest people that I've ever met, Professor Dave, who did a video called 10 Things All Flat Earthers Say. Eric's response was predictably idiotic, and that means there's quite a lot of stupid to cover, so I'm going to split this video into two parts, and have part one on this channel, and part two on Planner Walk's channel. Eric Dubay, the crown prince of dumb, makes a return for episode 46 of Flurfs Are Idiots. We're living on a disc, floating through space with a tiny sun. Find the planet. Find the planet. Thank you for joining me once again to point and laugh at a stupid person. And boy, Eric Dubay is stupid. A yoga teacher with delusions of grandeur and delusions of having a brain. Another moron who has never studied any aspect of science in his life, but thinks he can debunk all of science's greatest minds because he is woke. This time he has attempted to debunk professional internet smart guy, Professor Dave. He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. You can probably guess how it went. Before we start, make sure you are subscribed to Planner Walk to see part two of this video. Right, here we go. Everyone got some face palm protection? The 10 things that all flat earthers say. Number one, one extremely problematic side effect of taking the globe and flattening it out into a plane is that gravity makes no sense and there is no reason for things to fall to the ground. Quite simply, objects fall or rise based on their relative density to the medium surrounding them. Apples fall because they are denser than the air while helium balloons rise because they are lighter. No gravity necessary. So straight in with the failing to address Dave's point. I've explained this till I'm blue in the face so, so many times. Density doesn't give anything a vector. If it's all due to relative density, then everything would go up, as that's where the less dense medium is. And buoyancy requires gravity to be a thing. The buoyancy equation rho vg has a g in it, and that g stands for the acceleration due to gravity. It's the gravity pulling down the more dense air with more force than the helium balloon, causing an upward force in the opposite direction of the local gravitational vector. But Dave's point was that we know there is a downward acceleration, and it's caused by the large mass of Earth. We can measure the vectors, and they all point to the center of Earth. That's because gravity pulls towards the center of mass. So if you lived in the middle of a disc, it would be relatively normal at the center, but the further you go towards the outside, the more it would feel like you were going uphill because more mass would be underneath and behind you instead of in front of you. We know gravity is a thing. 
and we know that it causes an acceleration between masses and that kills the flat earth. This is why raindrops fall down through the air and air bubbles rise up through water. Everything seeks its relative density and rises or falls until settling accordingly. This is why a tiny pebble sinks to the bottom of the ocean, but gigantic cruise ships and aircraft carriers stay afloat on the surface, because even though a pebble is so small, its mass relative to its volume, its density, is more than water, so it sinks. And even though a cruise ship is so large, its mass relative to its volume is less than water so it floats. But density, you dipshit, isn't a force for things to move, to go from at rest to being not at rest, otherwise known as acceleration, requires a force. And where does that emergent force come from? There's a file. Gravity, you fucking retard. Gravity, have you ever heard of fucking gravity? Gravity! Gravity! If Newton's apple had landed in a puddle instead of on his head, he would have seen the apple only fell through the air because it was denser than the air. Well, no, because Newton never had an apple land on his head. That's just a story. When Newton moved back to his childhood home, Wolfsfort Manor, he was in the orchard there and witnessed an apple drop from a tree. There's absolutely no evidence to suggest the fruit actually landed on his head. However, Newton's observations caused him to ponder why apples always fall straight to the ground rather than sideways or upward, and helped inspire him to eventually develop his law of universal gravitational attraction. Typical Eric and all flat earthers only ever know half the story. Have you ever noticed how it's easier to stay afloat with your lungs full of air than it is when they're empty? Submarines float on the surface when their ballast tanks are filled with air. But when the vents are opened and seawater floods in, they begin to sink as the submarine's density becomes greater than water. Depending what depth they wish to dive, sailors simply adjust the ratio of air and water in their tanks, and when ready to resurface, they blow compressed air into the tanks, forcing the seawater out, lowering the density, and thus causing them to rise back to the surface. Because of buoyancy, and trust me when I say those sailors know the calculations for buoyancy, I was one of those submariners in the Royal Navy. Nothing you say about relative density makes any sense. How do those objects know how to arrange themselves in a particular density gradient? Take this video from fellow debunker of flat earth idiocy Miles Davis, Using Eric's logic of things will always fall towards the more dense medium, this little block of wood, which has pretty much equal air density all around it, will fall through the air that is less dense than the wood towards that solid concrete behind it to its place of rest. But when he lets go, it actually falls diagonally away. That's because it isn't density that causes the desire to go in a particular direction. That's gravity. Inescapable, undeniable, ever-present, no matter how many times Fleur stamp their feet and spit out their dummy, Gravity. We can also prove this fact of relative density by filling a balloon with approximately half helium and half air. Since helium is lighter than the oxygen, nitrogen, and other gases that compose the air around us, filling a balloon with just the right amount of helium to compensate for and balance out the density of the plastic results in a gravity-defying, levitating balloon at equilibrium that neither rises nor falls. So basically your entire shtick is, I don't understand how this thing is happening, but I know it's not gravity. That, Eric, is called an argument from ignorance and just makes you sound dumb, which is uh, appropriate because you're a flat earther and really, really dumb. All objects accelerate towards the ground at 9.8 meters per second squared. That's an indisputable fact. Oh, really? Is it an indisputable fact that feathers fall to the ground at 9.8 meters per second squared? Is it indisputable that dandelion seeds fall to the ground at that rate? In a vacuum or on the moon, they absolutely would. I have a, a feather in my right hand, a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery 
about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? What you're missing, Eric, is the very basic understanding that there are other forces to take into account. A dandelion seed has so little mass that the gravitational force acting on it is very small. This means that a small force like a gentle breeze is able to overcome the small force due to gravity. But that acceleration acting downward never goes away. And if you did the maths, you would see that... Oh, oh wait, you're a... Thick as fuck flat earther. Maths probably isn't your thing, is it? What about skydivers with an open parachute? What if we are falling through water? The rate at which things fall has everything to do with the relative densities between the object and medium, and has nothing to do with the fictional pulling force of gravity. Nope, because without gravity, there is no up and down. Gravity defines the vector for things to accelerate. A parachute opening? Air resistance over a large surface area creates a force. Falling through water, buoyancy happens because of gravity. Nothing fictional about gravity in the slightest. It's an observable fact. Nor does the rate or manner in which objects fall have any bearing whatsoever on the shape of the Earth. But this type of sophistry is the kind of tacky glue that holds the whole heliocentric model together. Surprise! Eric is wrong again. Our observations of gravity show that it pulls equally from all sides towards a center of mass. This will make any object massive enough form into a sphere, because only in a sphere will the net sum of pulling forces equal to zero. It is also an indisputable fact that any acceleration requires a force to produce it. This is how cars drive, planes fly, people walk, cats jump. It's how literally all motion works. Most of you address this problem by simply listing two words, density and buoyancy. Well, I hate to break it to you guys, but these are not forces. Forces are vectors. They have a magnitude, which means a numerical amount, and a direction, which means they have to point somewhere. Density is simply mass per unit volume, or how much matter sits in a particular space. It doesn't point anywhere. And buoyancy is simply a measurement of an object's tendency to float. You say that objects fall down because they are more dense than the air below them. Why down? Why not up? Or sideways? When you let go of a ball, there is air all around it. How does it know to fall down? Also, objects fall down when they are in a vacuum, which means there is no air below them. What's happening there? I could similarly ask you if gravity is real and responsible for keeping all the world's buildings, oceans, and people stuck to the ground, then why does it have no effect on pulling down a simple children's balloon? Are helium balloons magical anti-gravity devices? I mean, he, he just told you it's because of buoyancy. How does the balloon know which way to float? How does the balloon know there is a more dense medium around it to go up? It's because of gravity. Gravity is what gives things direction. You're just going to ignore everything he says and keep spouting flurf crap like it means anything, aren't you, Eric? Eric Dubay, you're dumb as fuck. No, we live in a density gradient. And since the combination of plastic and helium present in the balloon is less dense than the nitrogen, oxygen, carbon, and other elements in the air around it, it rises. Likewise, if I release the helium and then blow up the balloon again, the magical anti-gravity properties disappear because now it is denser than the air around it. But wait, I thought Professor Dave... He's not really a professor. Well, actually, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, a professor is someone who is a teacher at a university, college, or sometimes secondary school. And in Professor Dave's video, Am I Really a Professor? He goes through his teaching experience. He is a professor, and you're wrong again. I thought not a Professor Dave said that it's an indisputable fact that all objects fall to the ground at 9.8 meters per second squared. Why doesn't a balloon filled with carbon dioxide fall at this indisputable rate? Gravity is clearly racist against balloons, feathers, and other objects with relative densities near that of the medium surrounding them. Excuse me, uh, the, uh, the fuck did you just say? Did you just say that gravity is racist? What the actual fuck? I mean, they're stupid. There's really fucking dumb. And then there's you, Eric. So again, to answer your question, Objects are not tending towards the Earth, they are tending towards their density equilibrium. The least dense gases rise highest, while the most dense solids fall lowest. Why, Eric? Why? What tells the object it needs to rise or fall? 
What about an object in the middle of a vacuum chamber? How does it know which way is more or less dense? According to your own logic, Eric, with how dense you are, you should sink to the bottom of the disk. Look out for elephants. Here on Earth, so much solid matter has piled up in the dense direction that we actually have a platform to walk upon. But we are not yet at our density equilibrium, so we are constantly pushing downwards. Just as a helium balloon that rises and hits a ceiling has not yet reached its density equilibrium, and so it constantly pushes upwards on the ceiling. And as density isn't a force, you have no explanation for either of them. And has anyone ever told you, Eric? Your voice is boring as fuck. Number two, flat earthers all say, I shouldn't see this thing, but I do, so the earth is flat. Then to justify this claim, you all say the same thing, typically with no context whatsoever. Eight inches per mile squared. None of you have any idea what this means. You can't derive it. You can't calculate anything with it. You can't make a prediction with it. You can't tell me anything about this value at all. When I point this out to you, you get very angry, and instead of answering simple questions, you just link me to a bunch of videos made by con men. Eight inches per mile squared is not a valid way to measure earth's curvature. If you understood math, you would immediately see that this squared on miles is totally out of place. That's because this is a parabolic approximation. This is for doing calculations with a parabola. It's possible that you remember this shape from middle school algebra, but I wouldn't be surprised if you don't. As you can see, the Earth is not shaped like this. So where does it come from, and why do people use it? To begin with, the curvature formulas and curvature calculators that exist for the globe model were created by you globe Earth proponents, not us flat earthers. We are simply using the figures and formulas you yourselves claim as representing reality, and proving through easily observable, demonstrable, repeatable results that the alleged curvature does not exist. Well Eric, I hate to burst your bubble, but the 8 inches per mile squared thing actually came from a flurf. The OG flurf, actually, Samuel Robotham. He saw this parabolic equation in a surveyor's manual under the title leveling. Planar surveyors use it as an approximation for small-scale measurements, but Robotham took it and ran with it, told everyone that we are supposed to be able to see a curve of 8 inches per mile squared, and here we are today with all you little flatter sheep bleating, where's the 8 inches per mile squared? Bah, like it means something. The correct equation for calculating the physical curve is h equals r times 1 minus cos a. And that is accurate for any distance on Earth, but of course it doesn't take into account the fact that we have an atmosphere, which can distort the view of everything due to refraction. Non-Professor Dave tries to belittle flat earthers for using the parabolic 8 inches per mile squared approximation, but then refuses to mention the fact that this formula gives the same results as the more complicated trigonometrical formula for up to 300 miles which is far longer than anyone needs for practical curvature observations. No, it doesn't give the same result. It gives an approximation and gets progressively less accurate the further you go. The fact that observers at sea level on clear days can see islands, buildings, and mountains often over 50 to 100 miles away completely destroys the assertion that we live on a ball 25,000 miles in circumference. No, no it doesn't, Eric. Just. Go to the remedial classroom. Oh, fuck's sake, why is this my job? Right, morons and muppets, shut up and sit down. Today we are... What is it, Mr. Truth? You want to report someone vandalizing your property? That is a very serious accusation, Mr. Truth. Do you have any evidence? You got a video? Oh, let's see it then. Now that I think about it, the sun, we're told, is a big gaseous ball burning in, in space in a vacuum. By the way, since we're on the subject of vacuum, fire, the element by which the sun exerts its energy, and I don't care if it's nuclear fission or what, it's still fire, needs what element, folks, in order to continue to burn? Oxygen. Oh, <laughs> that's hilarious. So, uh, what's the problem? You think that's defacing your original work? Is the original video still available? Yes? Then shut up, you moron. Right, so, some flat earthers claim that when you can see things 50 miles away, that means the Earth is not a spheroid with a circumference of 25,000 miles, because that's seeing too far. Well, that's because flat earthers are all idiots. We have an atmosphere. That atmosphere causes refraction of light. This can allow objects that are behind the physical curve of the Earth to appear higher than they actually are, meaning you can see further than just the physical horizon. 
50 miles is less than one degree of the arc of the curve of Earth. That means light really doesn't even have to bend that much due to refraction for us to see that far. Now, your homework is to survive the night without accidentally swallowing your tongue. Get out. Class dismissed. Regardless of which curvature formula or curvature calculator used, you can even check the Metabunk or other Globe Apologist sites. Input the figures and see that these simple observations are in complete defiance of the globe's math. I challenge any flat earther to show me one single observation that cannot be explained by the Metabunk calculator. I've used that many times to disprove flat earthers' claims of seeing too far. It even has an advanced mode to input temperature and air density, etc. Number three, all flat earthers say the same two things about water. The first is, water doesn't curve. And the second is, water finds its own level. The second phrase is completely meaningless, so the fact that you all say that exact thing verbatim is just one of the many demonstrations that you all blindly repeat what you hear without giving it a moment's thought. As for the first phrase, stating that water doesn't curve is at least a coherent thought. However, it is dead wrong. Put a drop of water on a piece of wax paper or a leaf. What does it look like? A freaking sphere. Isn't that something? In your haste to mindlessly parrot what you heard from flat earth priests about water, you forgot to look at water. Water curves, my friends. Look at this curved meniscus. Look at these waves. Water curves all the time. Holy snarky straw men, Batman. Not really a Professor Dave is stooping to new levels of sarcastic sophistry. Let me try doing this with that condescending cadence he delivers so naturally. Well, Dave, water most certainly does find its own level, and that's why water has been used as the number one most accurate leveling tool for thousands upon thousands of years. Citation fucking required, Eric. Water doesn't seek anything. It conforms to forces acting on it. And the word level, in this case, literally means the curve of the earth. The Verrazano Narrows Bridge in New York shows that water isn't flat. It's so large that the curve of the earth was taken into account when constructing it. The two plumb towers are one and five inches further apart at the top than at the bottom meaning the water underneath the bridge is curved. Water does not have the ability to stay piled upon itself, so it will always flow outwards towards the lowest uncontained point. Hold the fuck up, let's look at that picture in the bottom right. Okay, nobody says water acts like that. I mean, what? And as for pictures of water curving, don't worry bruh, I gotcha. <laughs> contained, the surface of undisturbed water will always remain level, with no deviation in elevation from one point to any other. Of course there won't be a deviation in elevation. Elevation is the height above sea level, you moron. And as sea level follows the curve of the earth, there would be no elevation deviation. As for the straw man, water doesn't curve, Dave has conveniently shortened this to suit his narrative, when he should have said, large bodies of water at rest do not curve. The claim is large bodies of water sticking to and curving around a ball, not a single drop of water beating. That is a false equivalency and a straw man. We are not talking about the beating of a single drop of water, nor the meniscus in a glass of water, nor static electricity bending running water towards a comb. So any of these sophist examples put forth trying to prove curved water do nothing but show the desperation of these pseudoscientists to come up with such red herrings. But water does curve. That's natural's water state when it rests, i.e. has no forces acting on it. For instance, in this video of astronauts on the ISS putting a camera inside of a floating ball of water. This is water's natural state. Due to the fact the ISS is in freefall towards Earth, the net gravitational force is zero. So when there is zero forces acting on water, it's a ball. Number four, you are all quite perplexed about how Earth's atmosphere can exist next to the vacuum of space. This one is rather amusing because what's happening is that since you have no science education, your only context for the word vacuum is a vacuum cleaner. And again, because you have no science education, none of you understand how a vacuum cleaner works, which is a problem because you seem to think that outer space is a vacuum cleaner. Let's take a moment and clear this up. A vacuum is any region where there is no stuff. Here, there is stuff, like air. In space, there is no stuff, or at least very, very close to no stuff. Space is essentially empty. That's a vacuum. It is not a thing that sucks. Vacuums don't suck. Everyone say it with me together. Vacuums don't suck. 
thanks so much for educating us on the subtle nuances and intricacies of how sucking works, Dave. I'm sure we all agree you are uniquely well qualified for explaining this subject. Unfortunately, though, your sucky straw man explanation still has not provided demonstrable proof of how a positive pressure system like Earth's atmosphere can exist adjacent to a negative pressure system like space without a solid barrier between the two. Anytime two opposing pressure systems come together without some solid membrane separating them, an equilibrium is quickly achieved. Nobody except Dave is saying space should suck Earth's atmosphere like a vacuum cleaner. We are saying, show us a demonstration of two opposing pressure systems without any solid barrier between them that do not equilibrate. If you cannot demonstrate this, but wish to claim this only happens at a scale too large for you to recreate, that is wishful thinking, not science. Oh, Eric, guess you're a bit out of touch, huh? You're not going to like this because I debunked that claim a while ago. This is the inside of a tokamak nuclear fusion reactor. It's a vacuum chamber of 10 to the negative 11 tor. That band of blue you see is a high pressure area of ionized gas. As you can see, there is no physical barrier between the two and it is not equalizing. In this case, it's some clever electrical and magnetic forces. In the case of our atmosphere, it's gravity. Good old reliable gravity, killing the flat earth delusion every day. And with that, that's all the stupid that I can take for right now. Part two of this video will be on Planet Walk's channel, so make sure you head over there to see the rest. But just before I go, hey, I'm FTFE, and welcome back to the channel that. Wait a minute, that that felt wrong. <clears throat> hey, I'm FTFE, and welcome back to the channel that does. No, that still didn't feel quite right. What's going on here? Hey, I'm FTF. Oh. Hey, I'm all who. What the hell? Hey, oh. We... Oh, hoy, hoy. I didn't mean to say that. What's... I do feel better, though. I better get this over. I don't want to hang around on this channel too long. Could you imagine being Planner Walk, an actual hobbit? Anyway, this is part two of episode 46 of Flurfs of Idiots, and I'm doing it over here to cover for Planner Walk while he is busy having second breakfast or something, I guess. You can find part one over on my channel. We're living on a disc, floating through space with a tiny sun. Find the planet. Find the planet. Find Thanks for joining me as we continue our journey through the mind of Eric Dubay. Please don't make me go back in there, it's empty and dark. All right, let's get to it. One of your favorite little gotcha challenges is to request that we demonstrate how water can stick to a ball spinning at a thousand miles per hour. The implication is that water and everything else should fly off of it like a child getting thrown from a merry-go-round. While it's very cute that you get overwhelmed by numbers with four digits in them, but in actuality, the earth spins once per day, one time in 24 hours. Get on a merry-go-round and have someone push you one time around over 24 hours. Not a very thrilling ride, is it? The issue is that the Earth is really, really big. So if instead of using rotational velocity to describe a rotating body like a normal person, you try to use linear tangential velocity, you're going to get a pretty big number. But to be honest, it's still not really that big. It seems you're the one getting overwhelmed by your own globe figures, Dave. The alleged speed at which your tilting, wobbling, spinning space testicle Earth is actually supposed to rotate at the equator is 1,039 miles per hour. No, it's not rotating at 1,039 miles per hour. As you did with the earlier points Dave made, you've completely ignored what he said. You do not measure rotation in miles per hour. You use an angular velocity, or revolutions per minute. Its angular velocity at every point on the globe is 15 degrees per hour, and its RPM is 0 0.000694. Tangential velocity is not the same as angular velocity, you muppet. We are all well aware that this means one rotation per day, but thanks for continuing to speak to your audience like illiterate, petulant children and pretending we cannot understand such basic concepts. Well, actually, he's talking to you flat earth morons, whose IQ can be measured on a scale of 1 to 10, not his usual audience. His normal audience are used to learning about organic chemistry and the warping of space-time. You flat earthers are illiterate, petulant children incapable of understanding such concepts. Furthermore, this little water doesn't stick to a ball challenge is the strawiest straw man that was ever made of straw. The earth is huge. It generates an enormous gravitational field. That's why everything sticks to it. A ball is very tiny. It does not generate an enormous gravitational field, so things don't stick to it. So again, just like your last point, 
You cannot demonstrate water curving around and sticking to a ball, but wish to claim it only happens on a scale too large for you to recreate. That is no different from me claiming that unicorns exist, and when asked to show a single example of one, I cannot, but instead I say, unicorns do too exist, but they are macrocosmic invisible unicorns that cannot be observed. Invisible macrocosmic unicorns may exist in Dave's fantasy delusions, but if he cannot show a single demonstrable evidential example, it is by definition not scientific. What you've just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. No, that's not the same at all. We can demonstrate the effects of gravity, that there is an attractive force between masses that causes water to stick to Earth. The Cavendish experiment, which is repeated in universities all the time by first-year physics students, demonstrates that attractive force exists in the magnitude we say it does. However, the only evidence for unicorns is that for some reason they are the national animal of Scotland. No, I'm not kidding. Go and look it up. Number six. Lots of you say that moonlight is cold. This is astonishing for a number of reasons. The first is that it is not related to any claim you could possibly be making in order to argue for a flat Earth. But the second and much more important detail is that it is the perfect demonstration of the fact that you have no clue how science works. Some flat Earth priest measured the temperature under the moonlight and then again under something providing shade. Wow, moonlight makes it colder. But does it? Shouldn't you add some elements of control to your experiment? What's a control, you ask? You see, your measurement isn't evidence of anything. You now have to repeat the experiment when there is no moonlight to make sure that the moonlight was indeed the cause of the discrepancy in temperature. This is something you should have learned in middle school, but don't worry, I'll finish the experiment for you. Take the measurements again on a night with a new moon so that there is no moonlight. Look at that. You'll get the same result. So the moonlight absolutely wasn't the reason for the discrepancy in temperature. There are countless videos proving moonlight to be colder than moonshade, including peer-reviewed published experiments like in the Lancet Journal. Yeah, I can't find a single peer-reviewed science experiment that says the moonlight is cold. I honestly can't believe that this is still a thing flat earthers go on about. ...can perform their own research on this topic, but I have to point out the obvious flaw Dave seems to have overlooked while he was so busy talking down to his audience. Dave assumes we don't know what a control is, and insists that doing the experiment on different days during different phases of the moon will give different temperatures. Yes, Dave, of course it will, because it's a different day. Control experiments must be done simultaneously for them to be able to control for anything. That's not how that works at all. How do you know it's the moonlight causing the cooling effect if you don't do it when the moon isn't there or in different phases? You just proved you don't know what a control is with that very sentence, you fucking idiot. Now, look at this experiment by Where's Wally. He built a temperature sensor array and placed it in the moon shade as the moonlight swept over it during the night. The sensors noted no substantial change in temperature because moonlight isn't cold. Redoing the experiment under different conditions on a different day is anything but a control. Regardless, the experiment has been done countless times by different people with the same results. Moonlight, especially during the full moon, is colder than moonshade. No, no it fucking isn't. Eric, once again, please go to the remedial classroom. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, shut up, no screwing around. This is the tension, and apparently I pulled the short straw. So, I have to stay longer with you special students today. I wonder if Burger King is hiring. I can't keep doing this fucking job. All right, Eric, you think moonlight is cold. That's stupid. Do you know why? Eric, pay attention. No, I don't care that this is when you would normally be doing your yoga. Put that hemp yoga mat away and focus. What you are talking about, moonlight being cold, is a phenomenon called radiative cooling. During the day, when the Earth is facing the sun, it receives energy. When it's night, the Earth is facing the cold emptiness of space and it radiates that energy back out. Now, if you are in a shaded area at night or in the moon shade, as you would put it, that heat is stopped from escaping because there is something in the way causing shade. However, if you have an open sky or in the moonlight, then there is nothing blocking that heat from escaping, meaning the temperature would be lower in the moonlight than in the moonshade, but not because the moon emits cold light. 
That's fucking stupid and it violates the second law of thermodynamics. Now, I don't want to be here any longer, so I'm going to let you leave early. Don't tell anyone and I won't. Go on, get out. Right, is he gone? Where's the fucking whiskey? Oh God, there it is. You did get one thing right, though, and that is that this, once again, has nothing to do with Flat Earth. It's funny how desperate you are to come up with ten things all Flat Earthers supposedly say, yet several of your examples are just random red herrings that have nothing to do with the shape of the Earth. No, it's still dumb shit that you say. Number seven. Many of you say some unintelligible nonsense about water flowing uphill, or that on the globe model some rivers flow uphill. This one is so stupid that I genuinely can't believe any human could fall for it. You'll look at a globe and say that a river flows this way and that this is somehow uphill because you seem to think that up on the screen is some kind of universal up in space. Listen up. There is no up and down in space. This is not up. This is not down. To believe so would be as dumb as thinking that on Earth, whichever way you happen to be facing, is north. No one on Earth is upside down or on their side. Up on Earth is away from the surface of the Earth, no matter where you are on the Earth. Here and yet another example of globe earthers trying to make common sense sound like nonsense, we hear that up is not up and down is not down. People live stuck all around a ball earth, but nobody is sideways or upside down. Another argument from Ignorance Eric. That should be your new name, Ignorance Eric. Globe believers hate thinking about people being sideways or upside down on their silly ball, so they just claim there is no such thing as up or down to calm their fevered brains. But regardless of their internal mind games, their ball model has people stuck at any and all of 360 degree inclinations around the thing, which means people would by necessity be walking around sideways and upside down relative to one another. Relative to one another, yes, but that's the thing. Up and down is relative. On Earth, down is towards the centre of gravity and up is away from the centre of gravity. And that's no problem. Because we have demonstrated gravity is a real thing. Likewise, Earth's many hundreds of rivers are constantly flowing north, south, east, west, and every other intermediary direction simultaneously, some of which flow for hundreds of miles with only the slightest of change in elevation. An absolute impossibility on a globe of given proportions. Says who? A dipshit who needs directions to feed himself so he doesn't gouge his eye out with a spoon by accident? No. Gravity is the answer that you are looking for. You might not like it, you definitely don't understand it, but your ignorance doesn't change the fact that it is the answer. Eight. Many flat earthers remain dumbfounded by the idea that the earth is slightly closer to the sun in winter than in summer. As I've said before, winter up north is summer down south and vice versa. So your confusion is one of northern hemisphere narcissism, but it is also one of complete ignorance. Here's the earth. Here's the light coming from the sun. Look at this portion. It hits the earth straight on. Look at this portion. Because of the curvature of the earth, the light hits the surface at an angle and is therefore distributed around a greater area. Same amount of heat distributed around a larger area, lower average temperature. This is absolutely trivial to understand. Thanks, Dave. Nobody is dumbfounded or confused about these simple pseudoscientific claims you're making. That's a lie. You are ignorant, Eric. You are, and all other flat earthers. Um, Vince, apparently they prefer the word retard. Hey? Oh, how very quaint. And I bet you're going to show how dumbfounded you are in the next few painfully slow sentences out of your stupid face. We're simply presenting the inconsistencies of your model to you in question form because we're used to thinking for ourselves and allowing others to think for themselves rather than condescendingly talking down to everyone from a pedestal like you're some infallible superior being armed with objective truth. The question is simple. How can the globe model purport the sun to be approximately 3 million miles closer to Earth in January, when winter and colder temperatures are found all over the Earth, than in July, when Earth experiences its warmest temperatures? Because, in the grand scheme of things, that 3 million miles is nothing. It really doesn't change the amount of energy that Earth receives as a whole that much. It's not my fault that you can't understand this, and all other things that involve maths. Dave claims due to the ball Earth's tilt, different places receive different amounts of direct sunlight, and that is what produces the seasonal and temperature changes. It is! And how are you going to fuck that simple fact up? This makes no sense, however, because if the sun's heat travels over 90 million miles to reach the ball Earth, how could a slight tilt, a mere few thousand miles maximum, negate the sun's 90 million mile journey, giving us simultaneous tropical summers and Antarctic winters? So you just ignored what Dave said and pleaded ignorance again.
How do you think this is debunking, Professor Dave? You're basically going, I don't understand, so you're wrong. Ha! Checkmate, Gloobers! The same rays that have travelled 93 million miles have to spread the same energy over a larger surface area, meaning less energy per square mile. No matter how big the sun is, the ray that reaches Earth still has to spread over a larger area if the Earth is tilted away. Number nine. Many flat earthers refer to the body of scientific knowledge as scientism. This is meant to be derogatory, implying that science is a religion. I'm very sorry, but saying this just demonstrates that you know nothing about science and probably didn't pass a single science class in high school. Science students are not told what to believe. They are shown how to perform experiments. Even in high school physics, students use blocks and ramps and balls and pendulums and carts and rulers and timers to derive Newton's laws and many other such pillars of science. So using the word scientism only serves to disqualify you from adult conversation regarding science. In actuality, it is quite clear why you adopt this viewpoint, because you just accept whatever you hear if it's what you want to believe. This is why your beliefs are baseless. Since you are incapable of doing anything other than repeating what you are told, you assume that others are doing the same thing, but they are not. Scientism is simply another way of saying pseudoscience. For example, when you claim that bodies of water can curve around, stick to objects, and display the shape of said objects upon their surface, like the alleged ball earth under your alleged curved oceans, but cannot give a single demonstrable example on a scale small enough to recreate, that is called scientism, or pseudoscience. Number one, they are not the same. Pseudoscience is defined as science outside of the scientific method, whereas scientism is a stupid word that you fucking idiots made up. And if you understood anything about gravity, you would know that a small mass cannot create a large gravitational force of attraction that can stick water to a ball. I know you won't understand this ignorance, Eric, but Fg equals G M1 M2 over R squared answers all your questions about gravity. But that's math, and I know you don't get it. Likewise, when you claim that opposing pressure systems can exist side by side without a solid barrier between them, but cannot provide a single evidential example of this claim, you are spouting more scientism. Yeah, I covered that in part one. Oh look, there I am. If you haven't seen part one, then you should have, so... And to wrap things up, number ten, the piece de resistance. The claim that we have all been indoctrinated. That we have been brainwashed by schools, by the government, by NASA, by Freemasons, by Hollywood. Take your pick. Well, as I have demonstrated in this clip, you all say the same exact ridiculous things word for word like you're reciting the oath of the Flat Earth fraternity. So it's a rather silly accusation to be throwing around. The fact that you all say the same things is not surprising in the slightest. What do you do when you want to brainwash someone? You tell them they have already been brainwashed. Yes, globe earthers say flat earthers have been brainwashed, and flat earthers say globe earthers have been brainwashed. Yeah, but only one of those two are capable of tying their own shoelaces. Globe earthers are simply advocating the first version of reality they were taught as little children. Meanwhile, all flat earthers were actually taught that exact same version of reality as children. The only difference being that they went back as adults and did their due diligence in researching the opposing arguments without any bias or cognitive dissonance to see whether or not what they were taught as children still stood up to the critical scrutiny of a discerning adult. No, the difference is you failed at high school science, never understood anything, and then heard a fucking moron on YouTube who said, the earth flat bro, and you went, seems legit to me. That's because all flat earthers combined have the same IQ as a unicorn fart. To put it bluntly, flat earthers are all dumb as fuck. And that is all the stupid that I can take. Hey, I'm FTFE and welcome back to the channel that cuts the brake lines on Stupidity's car. If anyone asks, I'll review the whole day, okay? So, flat earthers are dumb, huh? But some are dumber than others. Some just think the earth is flat because the Bible says so. Then there's the ones that think NASA are stealing your money to hide the shape of the earth. Then there are the ones that think science is on their side and we are the stupid ones. Then there are the ones that think the moon was dug out of the Grand Canyon by giants, melted into quartz and filled with helium. No, I'm, I'm not kidding. That is made out of okay. say, something that came from Earth, which I suggest the giants mine from what we now call the Grand Canyon. That's where they got the raw minerals to do it. 
and when you melt stuff into making glass and glass baubles, as it cools, you get bubbles coming across it. But then there's Nathan Thompson. Welcome to the story of the dumbest person on earth for episode 40 of Flurfs Are Idiots. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. Find the Find the Thank you for joining me once again as we look at the people the evolution forgot. Nathan Thompson is dumb as fuck. Dumb enough to think the earth is flat, and so dumb that he not only commits a crime, but he also posts it on his YouTube channel. Let's take a look. Hey guys, real quick. I got a flyer for you. Check it out. No, I'm sorry, we can't. I can't give him a flyer? No, you can't. The teacher said so. Not only are they the people that teach them stuff so that they don't become crayon munching moron flat earthers. Um, Vince, apparently they prefer the word retard. Eh? Oh, how very quaint. But they are also there to protect the children from potentially dangerous people. That includes weirdos shouting at them from the sidewalk. That includes you. Hey guys, check this out real quick. Space is fake. You're not on a spinning ball. They're gonna teach you, listen guys, they're gonna teach you you live on a spinning ball. That doesn't make it true. It's not real. No, the fact that they are teaching it doesn't make it real. The fact it's real is why they are teaching it. Why do I get the feeling that you were the kid at school sitting in the back trying to stick as many erasers up your nose as possible instead of listening to the teacher? Space isn't fake. We have a pressure gradient. That means at some point above us, the pressure gets so low it's considered a vacuum and that's space. Look at this video from Red's Rhetoric. In this video, as the rocket increases in altitude, you can see the gases expelling from the bottom of the rocket being illuminated by the sun as the rocket gets higher and higher. You can see these gases expanding as they leave the rocket more and more until it gets to a point where the gases are expanding so much you can barely see it. This is because it has transitioned into the vacuum of space. The floor is not moving a thousand miles an hour. Okay? No. Not where you are anyway. You're in Greenville, South Carolina. That makes your latitude 38.9 degrees north, meaning your tangential velocity is about 853.3 miles per hour. It's math, but then I doubt you can tie your own shoelaces, let alone do math. Did you hear that? Let's listen again. Give that kid a medal. Yes, awesome child, he is crazy. Yes. Yo guys, let me give you a flyer real quick. Here, I love you. Number one, no one wants your waste of paper flyers. And number two, going around telling random children you love them is a really creepy thing to do. Come take a flyer. I'm gonna flash back. Look you smug faced asshole, you've been told no. No one wants your diatribe of scientific illiteracy, or flat smacking, as you call it. Guys, you don't live on a ball. The earth is flat. I got flyers for you right here. You can check out my YouTube, okay? It's not a ball. It's a planet, so it's definitely not flat. Your YouTube channel is probably going to be deleted after this. And more importantly, get the fuck away from those children. Some of them picked them up. Hey, give them to the teachers. Hey, you can verify. You can verify everything on my flyer. Large bodies of water do not curve. Look at the kid running away from you, man. Seriously, get the fuck away from those kids. Hey guys, you're not on a ball in space. The earth is flat. Large bodies of water do not curve, okay? Large bodies of water do not curve. Research Flat Earth! Yeah, that's right. Shouting it louder makes you seem less like a crazy fucker. Good job. That's how you do it right there. <laughs> that's how you do it. Even your own live chat is 
telling you what a bad idea this is, you absolute basket case. Once again, get away from those fucking kids. We got them all right there. Jeez. Well, hearing leads to knowing. Got to tell them. If you don't tell them, you're not doing any better than the people at the top that deliberately lie. One thing you flat earth window lickers need to realize is that just because you don't understand something does not make it a lie. It just makes you an idiot. Two forms of lying in my opinion. Deliberately misleading people and unintentionally misleading people. They're both lies. That's for sure. And you're too dumb to realize that you and all of your flat earth cult leaders are leading people to be idiots. And even worse, you, Eric Dubay, Mark Sargent, Nathan Oakley, you all literally have blood on your hands. It's the final disastrous flight of a daredevil known as the Rocket Man. Moments after liftoff, the rocket plummets to the earth, killing him instantly. Defying all evidence to the contrary, Mad Mike Hughes believed in the wacky idea that the Earth is flat. He set out to prove it by building his own steam-powered rockets in his garage. And um, if you keep the truth a secret, well, you're not doing much better than the elite because that's what they're doing. They're keeping the truth a secret. The UPS driver just waved at me. <laughs> The UPS driver is probably telling you to get away from the school, you weirdo. That was funny. All right, guys, well, make sure you red pill the youth. That's why they get them when they're young. Get them while they're young. Nathan Thompson, 2020. If you're just tuning in, you just missed me flat smacking, like, probably 400 kids, so. 400? You really are bad at maths. There was 30 kids there at the most. Ah, but you can't can't, can you? I see, I see the problem there. That was cool. Well, if they're going to reserve the right to lie to the kids, I'm going to reserve the right to tell them the truth. Better believe that. I don't need to ask anyone's permission to tell kids the truth if they're going to lie to them. You're just lucky that some of the parents weren't there to see you shouting at these kids. That could have ended very differently. So... Tell them large bodies of water do not curve. You want to know why? Because that's the truth. Large bodies of water do not lie. I also told the kids space is fake. You want to know why? Space is fake. They use CGI, green screen, harnesses, wires. That's why you see bubbles in space. CGI wires and green screen can't explain over an hour of uncut single take footage that was live streamed, can it? and bubbles in space are most likely sublimation of ice particles that build up on the outside of the ISS. You can see thumbs in space. I mean, spacesuits don't work, guys. It's just a vain religious superstition that people go to space and float around. They are just in pools. The argument of astronauts being in pools and not in space is easily debunked by the fact that when the water and the glass of the helmets meet, it creates a refractive index that actually makes the astronauts' heads inside of the helmet look smaller, like this. 100%. Geo, let's go, big guy. Let's go. I got a big old long leash. I could just leave Geo over here. All right. So, I've been wanting to flat smack this school for a while. You know what? I might come back when they get out of school and they're all waiting for the bus and walking home and stuff because I just feel called. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Hang around at school at closing time and flat smack children. Are you fucking mentally deficient or something? Seriously, what the fuck is wrong with you? Maybe I'll go live in an hour again. Geo, what are you going poops here, Geo? All right, well, was not expecting that. Geo goes poo everywhere at the house. Oh, and you're one of those assholes that doesn't pick up after his dog. You don't deserve the friendship that dogs give you. Important information! I really appreciate you stopping. Are you just randomly waving at cars now? Good way to get run over. I mean, I'm not saying stop. You know anyone who's ever told you the earth is flat? Uh, no, I'm sure government's lying about a lot of stuff. Yeah, 
you know, and they're faking space in line of the kids. You got a Bible right here? You read your Bible? God created firmament, put the stars, the sun, the moon in the firmament for signs and seasons. That's not what they're teaching these kids right here. They're teaching that we're blasting through space on a ball, and God never said that. And I love you, bro. I appreciate you stopping, okay? Take care, my man. That guy was laughing at you. We are all laughing at you all of the time because you're a fucking idiot. Got another one. Another one bites dust. Another one bites the dust. And another one, another one, another one bites the dust. Then, oh, I think there's a dog back there running around. This could get interesting. I got my pepper spray. So, I've actually been waiting for a dog to try me. Sorry, did I hear that right? You're gonna pepper spray a dog? What the actual fuck is wrong with you? Seriously? Oh, I got some people up here. Oh, I got some people up here. Come on, Gio, let's go. Ladies! Ladies, real quick! Could I chat with you? They like ran away. <laughs> of course they ran away. A fucking crazy person who is just harassing a bunch of school kids is running towards them. You look like you've just escaped from a local home with padded walls. I think they were scared of my dog. But you know what? I'm gonna get their car. You best believe it. Gio. Come here, Gio. Come here. Right on the windshield wiper. I'm getting all tangled up over here. All right. All right, I love you guys. I'm gonna come back here and flat smack them uh, when they all get out of school. I think it's 2.30 is what time they're out. I wonder what'll happen if you do that. Oh, I know, you'll get arrested. Ah, sorry about that. Yeah, so Nathan Thompson got arrested for harassing kids at a school. From what I gather, he was released on a $260 bond and has a court date on March the 31st for disorderly conduct. Here's hoping he tries to flat smack the judge and ends up getting hit with contempt of court as well. Because honestly, prison is the best place for him. What a fucking bellend he is shouting at kids. Honestly, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen on YouTube. Well done, Nathan. You've just become the king of the stupid. Seriously, that is all the stupid that I can take for today. But before I go. Hey, I'm FTFE and welcome back to the channel that does to stupidity what Thor did to Thanos. Perhaps I treated you too harshly. What? What did you do? Oh, I had. Today's subject of stupidity is someone who holds the record for the number of Flurfs Are Idiots episodes directed towards them, because they honestly say more dumb things than anybody else on the entire planet. There was episode 6 where he didn't understand how cameras worked and mistook a tree for a building, episode 19 where he thought that eggs were magic, episode 42 where he thought Moonlight defied the second law of thermodynamics, episode 43 where he thought that you could just turn off gravity, Episode 34, where he thought the Titanic sinking was his scientific experiment. Episode 35, where he nominated himself for Dumb Fuck of the Year 2019. 
Uh, episode 45, where he failed to debunk a physics teacher, you know, because he's dumb as fuck. And episode 51, where he got really confused by some more eggs. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. It's Sleeping Warrior. He spewed some more stupid onto the internet, and we're going to point and laugh at his complete ineptitude for episode 53 of Flurfs Are Idiots. Living on a disc, floating through space with a tiny sun. Find the Find the Find the Thanks for joining me once again as we learn what happens when the brain fails to develop in the womb, but somehow a child is still born. Anthony, sleeping warrior Riley. I'm a dumb flat earther. Yeah, that, that guy somehow manages to get himself dressed in the morning without killing himself and scrape together the mental power required to vomit a humanity IQ lowering load of idiocy onto the internet. This time he gets confused by planes and the earth rotating and tying his shoelaces. This is a video about Coriolis effect. It's one of those confusing topics that Blurthers <laughs> deliberately obfuscate to make it sound confusing. They want you to be confused by the end of the conversation so that you don't really know and you default back to, oh, well, maybe the earth is turning because I didn't understand that. So the problem is it's confusing to you. You don't understand it, so claim it's complicated when we try to explain it. And why might that be? I'm a dumb flat earther. Oh yeah, you, you did say. It's very, very simple. Uh, on screen I've put on the west and the east to indicate the direction of rotation and we are told that the, uh, the earth rotates from the west to the east because the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west therefore the earth is rotating from the west to the east and that's the way you can see it on screen. I just want everyone to take a moment to realise that him putting east and west on the correct sides of the screen might be the first thing he ever got right. I'm pretty sure that isn't going to continue though. As you can imagine, planes flying over the Earth are meant to be suffering the effects of Earth rotation underneath them. That is the claim of the Coriolis effect. And there it is. I actually think this video might contain too much stupid for me to deal with on my own. I'm, I'm gonna need to call in some help. Oh, hey, cats. Hello, mate, how are you doing? You okay? I'm doing good, thanks, mate. Could you, um, could you have a look at something for me? Yeah, I can, I can do that. I can watch, uh, so you want me to watch a video by, who is it? Um, you know, Sleeping Warrior. Did he just say? Never call me again. Cats? Hello? I think I'll just have to do this on my own. Coriolis effect is the apparent deflection caused by the Earth rotating underneath the plane. No, no it isn't. Nothing about the Coriolis says that the Earth should deflect underneath the plane as it's travelling through the atmosphere. You know, the atmosphere. The thing it uses to create lift. The thing that is also rotating with the Earth. Just because your simplistic view of the Coriolis force is Thing leave ground! Earth turn under! Doesn't mean it's even remotely correct. It just means that you're a fucking idiot. Now, Wolfie sixty twenty doesn't know. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't tell people that the Earth doesn't show this. He tells people that um, you wouldn't expect to see Earth rotation, and everybody else on the Blurther side believes that that's the position. They think that explaining why you don't see apparent deflection explains away why Earth Coriolis based Earth based Coriolis isn't a thing. Excuse me, uh, the, uh, the fuck did you just say? First off, no one on the side of sanity and reality says that the Earth-based Coriolis isn't a thing. In fact, it's one of the best evidence of Earth's rotation. Unfortunately, you window-licking morons haven't a clue what Coriolis actually is. Unlike Wolfie6020, of course, who is an actual pilot. Obviously, that is incorrect. Earth has got to rotate underneath the planes, otherwise we're not expected to see Coriolis effect. It doesn't apply to Earth. I mean... You keep saying the word Coriolis. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Now, here we see a demonstration with the planes flying over the Earth whilst the Earth is in motion. 
And as you can see, as we get to the Pacific Ocean to demonstrate the point, we're going to pick on Hawaii somewhere in the middle. And you can see the planes that are flying towards Hawaii. Hawaii is coming towards the plane as well. So they're flying towards Hawaii, but Hawaii is coming towards the plane. That's significantly quicker than if you're flying towards Hawaii from the other side, because you're chasing Hawaii in, and you're not going against um, the Earth rotation. You're fighting the Earth rotation because you're trying to catch it up. So what you're saying is you haven't a clue how planes work. Like at all. So, according to you, if the Earth is rotating and we stood next to a wall and jumped, if we're at the equator, we should expect to slam into that wall a thousand miles an hour. Under the same logic, if I was inside a plane that is moving and I get up to use the bathroom, I'm going to slam into the back wall of that plane at 500 miles an hour and all the air stewards are superhumans. Well, considering we know that the world is rotating and there is a lack of people-shaped ketchup stains on walls all over the world, we can only conclude that you, Sleeping Warrior, have some kind of brain injury. So it's obvious the position. The position is if the Earth is rotating the way we're told, flights towards the east must be longer. Flights towards the west must be shorter. And your IQ must be negative. Look at this video of the guy on a trampoline being pulled by a tractor. Does the guy just stay where he is and the tractor shoot off underneath him at 30 miles an hour? No, because conservation of momentum is a thing. The main thing that impacts the speed of travel times east and west is the trade winds. Depending on if the plane is traveling in the easterlies or the westerlies, it will affect the time taken to travel. The winds between 30 and 60 degrees latitude travel from west to east, so will increase flight times to the west. And in the equatorial regions, you have the easterlies, otherwise known as the trade winds, that go from east to west and make air travel to the east slower. These effects are all due to the Earth's rotation and are predicted effects. Because the Earth is supposed to be turning underneath the plane. If they argue that the conservation of momentum means that they can negate the expectation of Earth-based Coriolis, then there is no Coriolis effect. We've got to see that apparent deflection. Okay? It's very simple. They'll use every weaseling wiggling book, uh, every weaseling tactic in the book to try and demonstrate why we do not see. But we do expect to see Earth-based Coriolis. And we do see it, just, you know, not in the way that you expect to see it, because you don't know what Coriolis is and your intellectual capacity is so low, I doubt you'll ever learn what it is. But, you know, let's try. Off you go, numbnuts. The remedial classroom awaits. Okay, everyone, sit down and stop talking. In fact, I would really like it if none of you ever talked to... Oh, fuck's sake, what? What do you want? You're right, there is some people missing. Let's do a roll call. Uh, Flat Earth Aussie Jesus. Yeah. Mind of God. Yeah. Quantum Erasure. Huey, pay attention and take those crayons out of your mouth. Yeah. No, I don't care if you're hungry. Sleeping Warrior. Yeah, yeah. yeah of course you're here. You're always here. Uh, Mr. Rant, he's doing a special project with Professor Cat, so he isn't here. Miss Thompson. Miss, Miss Thompson. No, Miss Thompson. Miss Thompson's clone. No. Does anybody know where Thompson and Whitsit are? Yeah. What do you mean they're doing a countrywide holiday? Yeah. During a pandemic? Without any masks? Well, they're screwed because you can bet they're using flat earth maps. All right, let's just get on with this, shall we? What is the Coriolis effect? Well, it's not the earth rotating underneath something like a flat earther would want you to believe. The Coriolis effect is caused by the fact the earth is rotating and it imparts certain effects on objects that are freely moving. Here is an example. Someone at the equator fires a mortar shell north. At the point the mortar shell was fired, the shell had a tangential speed to the east of around 1,000 miles an hour. Same as everything else at the equator, including the atmosphere. As the shell travels north, it moves over an area of the Earth that has a slower tangential velocity than the point it left from. The shell, however, due to the law of conservation of momentum, maintains its 1,000 miles an hour to the east whilst moving over an area with a lower tangential velocity. This means that the shell will deflect ahead of the rotation. This means that there has been acceleration to the east acting on a mass. So we can calculate the Coriolis force. The important thing is that the shell was moving on a rotating sphere. It won't happen if something just hovers. So a hot air balloon and a drone 
will rotate with the Earth and not experience any Coriolis. Now, is an airplane subject to these forces? Well, yes, of course. Whether flying north to south or vice versa, which would apply a force moving the plane ahead or behind of the rotation, or east to west or west to east, where a force would be applied towards or away from the sky. But the thing is, the force is tiny and airplanes have massive fucking engines that negate that comparatively small force. Why do you all have such blank faces? Oh yeah, you're all fucking idiots. Get out! I hate my life. Now what I'm going to present to you is a back and forth that happened live on a um, on a Discord server debate thing that was being rebroadcast on uh, YouTube. And this, uh, this happens time and time again. I see it many, many times. It's only 10 clips. Without further ado, let's progress. Demonstrable proof of Earth's rotation. Orlando to Manchester is 7 hours and 50 minutes, and the return, Manchester to Orlando, is 9 hours 25 minutes. And can I just check which way does Earth rotate? East to west or west to east? East. And that is all Coriolis is. So Earth is rotating to the west? Then? What the guy you were talking to was on about was the fact that we have trade winds, which, on the flights he mentioned, make flying to the east slower. Due to the Hadley cell, winds in these regions flow towards the equator and towards the west. And while the winds in the latitudes above them go east and towards the poles, again because of the Earth's rotation. Ignorance of fact is not evidence against them, Riley. Flight time is faster east and with the rotation than against it. It should be slower when flying east as you are chasing the Earth turn. Oops. <laughs> No, Riley, you don't chase the countries if you're traveling east because the atmosphere that the plane is using also travels to the east at the same speed as the country that you think you are chasing. Helicopters and hot air balloons could just hover and wait for the earth to turn underneath it and the destination would arrive like waiting for a train at a station. But that's not how it works at all. You're a fucking idiot. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Okay, quick recap. His last comment said, because to wrap this all up, all flights east and with the rotation of the Earth is faster, yet we can clearly see that if the Earth is rotating from the west to the east and flights are heading west, it's going to be faster and east, it's going to be slower because of Earth rotation. Well, in this case, both of you were wrong. He was wrong because flight times depend on where they are flying, in the easterlies or the westerlies. And you, Sleeping Warrior, are wrong because the Earth doesn't magically rotate underneath us as soon as we leave the fucking ground. No, when you're chasing the destination or heading east, it must take longer if Earth is turning with you. Your example was quicker though. You have it the wrong direction for Earth turn, buddy. You have the eastbound flight faster when it should be slower if Earth is turning under the plane. <laughs> Sleepy, we can see that you've written ha-ha. You really don't need to say it. We aren't all as dumb as you are. So as we can see again, just to make the position really clear, it's really easy to jump on the bandwagon and take a piss out of this guy. Um, but let's just be clear, all the flights that we can chase around the Earth, none of them support the Earth rotating from the west to the east. Because as you can see, as you're flying towards Hawaii, Hawaii is coming towards you. And as you're flying, if you're going from America, but if you're going from Japan, you're chasing Hawaii. You're chasing it, so it has to take longer. No, you colossal dumbass. You don't chase countries. They aren't running away from you. Earth turns. It's been measured. Don't be a fucking idiot. Hey, I'm FTFB and welcome back to the channel that holds a pillow on the face of stupidity until it stops struggling. Shh, shh just, just stop struggling. Just, just, just let it happen. Stop struggling. It's nearly over. Sorry, you're um, you're not supposed to see inside my head. It's a, it's a dark and scary place. Flat Earth is fucking stupid. 
And it blows my mind every time I discover a new flat earther. To think that there are so many idiots that think they're smarter than all of the scientists in the world makes me weep for humanity. But not all flat earthers get along. This video is about a flat earther that seems very angry at other flat earthers, but he does have a video titled Model of Flat Earth Showing Curve and Stars Pressurized Atmosphere. Could he be the first flat earther ever to have a working flat earth model? We'll find out at the end of this video as Moonshiner is the moron on display in episode 37 of Flurfs Are Idiots. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. Find the find the Thank you for joining me once again as we take a look at the people that got their brains from the bargain bin at a convenience store. Moonshiner thinks he's debunked the ISS. Let's find out why he's an idiot. Engage face palm protection. Yes. I'm going back to me ball. Here's the ball. Beautiful ball. Do we live in a ball? Are the satellites in space? It's the satellites in space. No, we don't live on a ball. It's a globe. Yes, there are satellites in space, but more importantly, clean your fucking home. It's the satellites in space. We can see them. I'm gonna be a baller. A globalist. Or, or you could say a normal person. But, that ain't gonna happen. Well, that's a shame, isn't it? I guess you're not smart enough or brave enough to admit that you've been conned by snake oil salesmen like Eric Dubay, Nathan Oakley, and Delroyd. Unlike this man, Seek Truth Speak Truth, who was the fifth ex-flat earther I've had on the channel. You should check out his interview with me, Team Skeptic, and science or satire disembodied voice Sean Hufford in the link in the description. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed in every single flat earther. So am I, mate. So am I. Honest flat earther that is out there. That does not and will not support. Has not yet supported. Me. In a demonstration of why satellites cannot possibly exist. I'm confused. You want flat earthers to give you money to prove satellites don't exist. You're wrong, you know. Why do planes have GPS receivers on the top? All them astronomers. Oh, Kate Onball. Katie Onball. All pretty lovely little things she is. But she's satanic. That beautiful bird who come out of university, got all her degrees and whatnot. 33 degrees, probably. Size to us all, to the children's. To the children, she says. It's You can tell a satellite it's a satellite because it's moving across the sky and it don't flash, it don't blink like a, a, an aeroplane does. That's the difference between a satellite and an aeroplane. Airplanes flash, bleep, 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 bleep. But you actually see them go across the sky. Yep, because planes have the flashing lights on them called strobe lights and these serve to augment the plane's visibility at night. This isn't needed by satellites, and the light you see from them is usually reflected sunlight. But that is bitch, Katie Yomble. She's lying. She knows she's lying. She knows she's lying. She's just in there for the money. Give me the money. Lord, I've got a satellite. I've got a satellite. And I'll prove it to you. Right. Look. There's proof you're sitting on a screen. Moonshine one, right? And that is why you don't have a job designing satellites. Beep, 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 beep. There's two things you should realise about this. Satellites cannot orbit a little bit of the Earth if it was a ball. They can't do that a little bit on the top. It always has to be around. It has to be always around the equator. It would always have to be around the equator if they had a Actually, that's not true at all. There are essentially three types of orbit, low Earth orbit, medium Earth orbit, and high Earth orbit, with most orbits having an orbital inclination. 
the majority of orbits around the equator are actually geosynchronous orbits, which have to be at exactly 22,236 miles above the equator so that they match the orbital period of the Earth. This is where TV satellites are placed and why satellite dish installers have to point all the dishes at exactly the same spot in the sky. Right, and because you, you couldn't go this way. You couldn't go around a ball that way because of this bulge, this equatorial bulge of 26 miles high, the reckoning. Um, that, that bulge isn't just a hump at the equator of 26 miles. The equatorial bulge is just the difference in the equatorial and polar diameters of Earth. That means that the diameter here is 26 miles more than here. So that's a 26 mile difference over 6,200 miles. It's not something you've noticed, that's 0.42%. So, that would disturb the mechanics of how it would orbit. So, see, so, see, so that's the equatorial bulge here. So, it was going this way. Buff, this is sticking up. More mass under there than here. More mass, more land. Oh, I love it when a fucking idiot proves a globe point. Yes, there is more mass, meaning you're actually further away from the centre of the mass. That coupled with the centrifugal acceleration at the equator means you weigh about 0.5% more at the poles than you do at the equator. Because the gravitational acceleration is only 9.78 meters per second at the equator, but due to the closer distance to the center of Earth and the lack of centrifugal acceleration at the poles, it's 9.832 meters per second squared. This is why scales are calibrated locally so sneaky gold traders can't buy some gold, head north for the equator and sell it for more. Good. that's where that Right, so you couldn't get an orbit that way. The only possible way for it to orbit would be around that equatorial line, a bulge all the way around. If there's a bulge there, eh? we should plug the end. Oh, yes. You've got to prove there's a ball in first. They ain't done that. Really? It hasn't been proven? It, it hasn't been proven that we live on a sphere. Really? <laughs> We see satellites, well, a lot of people see satellites on the TV every day. <laughs> no shit. Sure. But, but uh, you know, this, this really annoys me about anyone who supports that journalism, because he's one of the biggest fraudsters out there. He's satanic. Well, I don't know about satanic, but he's definitely a fraud. I mean, remember that time that he proved there was a curve to Earth? If you're seeing through this hole, through the next hole and seeing the light at the backboard or at 17 feet off the water. The earth is flat. If he's holding it up at 23 feet high and we're seeing the light, well, that's because the earth's curved. So I, I should only be able to see it when it's at 17 feet. OK, go ahead and drive down there, Enrique. You're going to hold the light there. Enrique, how high is your light? 17 feet. I mean, I, you know, it's his. Um, there's, we don't see you, Enrique. Lift up your lift up your light up, way above your head. Interesting. Interesting. Or, or that time that he observed the ISS transit the moon and backed up Red's Rhetoric's observations. My alarm went off on my phone and I knew I had 10 seconds. I counted down on my head. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I remember waiting, like what? And then sure enough, there it was. 
So it was within two or three seconds of what time it was supposed to, I think. And here we go, we're gonna watch it again, this time at 50% speed. Go ahead and see it uh, if you don't see it. Starting about two o'clock and ending around eight. Ah, good times. But yeah, there's no way he can still be a flat earther if he ever was after he keeps proving the globe. Joannism, you is a satanic idiot. You might not be an idiot because you're not making loads of fucking money out of this YouTube. Screw tube, that's what he means. <laughs> right, M chime one. Why you cannot see a satellite? Nobody can see a satellite if they existed anyway. You, no, think in your mind. You, you yourself is the sun. Your eyes are the sun. Gleaming out streams of light. Oh God, no, how do I turn this off? <laughs> right, that's because the camera has to represent the sun, which will be you in your eyes. You're gonna witness this. Well, you cannot see a satellite. We have an Earth, they say, 8,000 miles in diameter. 8,000 miles. 8,000 miles of mass, of material. You can't see through this, it's rock. You can't see through it, can you see that? Can you see through that? Can you see? I can't, I can't see what's on there. I can't see through. <laughs> Even though this ball, this particular ball's hollow. So it ain't got much mass, but if it was a solid ball, I still wouldn't be able to see through it, would I? Come on, right. Right. Okay, so you can't see through the earth. Well done. Things aren't invisible. Discovered by Moonshiner, January 2020. To be honest, that's probably the greatest achievement by a flat earther ever. So you can't see through it, you accept that. That's a pretty bloody obvious, isn't it? <coughs> but this will become obvious to all of you people. <laughs> Why does that exist? You know, okay, Tumble says, Ah, oh, you can see them because they don't flash. It's just a light like a star going across the book. Well, you see there must be bleeding stars or the airplanes with their headlights on. They have to be. Who's China one? Orbiting the planet. Which way do you want to go? Do you want to go? Shall we go? We'll go this way. Wait, wait, see. See, can you see it? Wait. Oh, fucking right. What is it with flat earthers and making sound effects? You're at cruising altitude. So as you are rising in your plane, okay. See, can you see it? Wait. Oh, fucking right. Trouble is, this is the lit side, isn't it? Because the sun's there. You're the sun, projecting light onto this globe. Right? Right? Moonshine at one. But you can't sit in the daytime because the sun is overwhelming the light. It just, there ain't no, you couldn't do it. You couldn't film it against the sun, obviously, in the daytime. Right? So it's that light, beep, 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 beep. Uh, what is it, 45 minutes around there? Right, 45 minutes later. It's going around this part of the world, isn't it? It's dark this side, because there ain't no light. The sun can't get to it. Can you see moonshine one now? Can you see the satellite? Keep going. 45 minutes later. Ah, oh, there he is, on the light side. Now, this part of the world is lit up on their little ball. Eh, you don't see it in the daytime. But you won't see it because the sun's too bright and it blinds you. So you won't see it anyway. Four or five minutes later, it's behind the earth. And all the light from the sun is being blocked from reflecting off this thing. This thing's black. No, you see it, no, you don't. Here's the thing. You can't see the ISS most of the time. The only times that you can really see it is when the ISS transits the sun or the moon, or during a small window just after sunset, and another one just before sunrise. Because the earth is in shadow, but the ISS is still high enough that it reflects the sunlight. As this picture shows, the red sections of the ISS path within the shadowed part of Earth is when you can see it moving across the sky. Honestly, just a tiny bit of research would have helped you there. Moonshiner, you're dumb as fuck. No, you see it, no, you don't. 8,000 miles of planetary ball in the way of this thing. It don't matter how far, it don't matter how far away that is from this ball. 
Right. Yes, it does matter how far away from the Earth the ISS is. The further away it is, the longer it would be able to be reflecting light onto the dark side of Earth. You, Moonshiner, like all flat earthers, can't think in three dimensions. Come on, I am a very good presenter. But somebody is out there. Somebody's got a voice. Somebody's got a presentation. Well, I don't know how else you could demonstrate that. <laughs> So fucking obvious. What's fucking obvious is that your dumbass doesn't have a clue what you're talking about. It seems I can't make a video of that swear. What the hell? Don't fucking do that. Anyway, that's enough of that video. Before I finish this video though, I promised to show you Moonshiner's Flat Earth model. So here we go. We're here by the, the term God is used in a rather pantheistic sense. And so each emanation corresponds to a different dimension of reality, all connected, and all again said to be in balance with one another. That, that's your flat earth model you came up with. I mean, what the f- That looks like your bath water after your yearly wash that you've collected in a plastic bottle. Well, to be honest, it's probably the best flat earth model I've seen. And that's saying something. And that is all the stupid that I can take for today. Hey, I'm FTFE and welcome back to the channel that dips stupidity in pig's blood and throws it to a pack of hungry wolves. Today we're talking about a flat earther who devised the very laws of probability by never, ever, ever getting anything right. It's like some crazy superpower of his. The ability to be wrong all of the fucking time. In fact, it's quite impressive. I couldn't be as wrong as him if I tried. Everything he says is wrong. I am, of course, talking about Leaky Warrior, aka Anthony Riley himself. It's almost time for the voting for Red's Rhetoric's Dumb Fuck of the Year, and if you aren't convinced by now that he should be this year's winner, then this video should show you all you need. Just as a little teaser, Sleeping Warrior once said that the Earth is round during the day, but flat at night. Yeah, see what I mean? Strap on some face palm protection and remove all sharp objects from your immediate surroundings. It's the fifth time Sleeping Warrior has been the subject of Flurfs Are Idiots. We're living on a disc, floating through space with a tiny sun. Find the Find the Thank you for joining me once again for a look at what happens when you feed your child lead paint straight from the can instead of baby formula. Sleeping Warrior is just mind-blowingly stupid. The amount of dumb shit he says has surpassed all known methods of measuring stupidity and I'm pretty sure is the actual reason that aliens won't talk to us. Sleeping Warrior, aka Riley, aka Clucking Warrior, aka Leaky Warrior, aka Half Asleep Dumbass, aka Mr. 5 divided by 0 is 5, doesn't understand anything. Prime amongst the things that he doesn't understand is gravity, buoyancy, and density, and the relationship between them. He thinks that the... He thinks the Titanic sinking disproves gravity. Man, that's fucking stupid. Let's find out how stupid. Bolts prove there is no such thing as gravity. <laughs> No, they fucking don't, you mental patient. You're going to say it's all relative density, aren't you? Well, if that's the case, as the boat in your um lovely diagram is less dense than the water it sits in, why is part of the boat under the water? It's almost like there's some kind of force pulling the boat down a bit, isn't it? Weird that, huh? Remember in a scientific experiment, the independent variable is the presumed cause. The dependent variable is the effect. Well, if we were to make a boat that had a thousand kilograms that displaced water that was less than its thousand kilograms, the boat's going to sink. But if it was displacing water that was significantly more than the 1,000 kilograms the boat weighs, the boat is less dense than the medium and it'll float. You know what? 
Archimedes figured this shit out over 2,000 years ago. And you keep mentioning weight. You're obviously aware that there is more to it than just density, but what you're missing out is that weight is literally defined as the mass times the acceleration of gravity, F equals mg. Without gravity, there is no weight. You're a fucking idiot, ding. What if we got a bolt that gradually changed its mass? So it's 1,000 kilograms gradually became 1,050, 1,100, 1,150, 1,200. If we started to fill water into the boat so that its mass was increasing, and then the displacement of the water around it became, basically, it became the inverse of what it was at the start. We know what's going to happen, don't we? It's going to sink. Well, that's two different things you've just said. Filling the boat with water will change its mass, but more importantly, its density. And if we look at the formula for buoyancy, if you increase the density, you decrease the buoyant force that acts in the opposite direction to gravity, meaning gravity wins and the boat sinks. Now, if we just make the boat bigger, but maintained its density, it would still float. I think you're getting confused between mass, weight, density, and buoyancy. But that's not surprising. You need a triangle calculator to figure out the internal angles of an equilateral triangle, and you still couldn't do it. Well, the, the one I'm using, is not, it's not giving me any when I do it. So either this, this calculator is wrong or you're wrong. The Titanic demonstrates that as the mass of the boat increases relative to the medium it's in, it'll sink. I'm surprised you're not jumping up and down in excitement about the fact that the density is also increasing. Because that's actually more important here, because imagine if you get another Titanic and just weld it to the side of the first Titanic. You've increased its mass there, but it wouldn't sink. The density would still be less than the surrounding water, which means the buoyant force would still win in the struggle with gravity. I know you won't understand any of this because you think density, which is a scalar and has no vector, is a force. And that's really fucking stupid. We all know the story, it's an iceberg and it took on water. And the more water it takes on, it's increasing its mass. It's not displacing as much water anymore because the water's now filling the beaker, the bottle, the container. And obviously we know that as you fill the container with more and more water, it loses its buoyancy. I say that word reluctantly because buoyancy has got little g in its maths. Yes, you're right. It does have little g in its maths. Just like weight does as well. And it doesn't matter if you said it reluctantly, you still said it. And what does that little g stand for? Desert file? Gravity, you fucking retard! Gravity! Have you ever heard of fucking gravity? Gravity! Gravity! But really, it's not that it's losing its buoyancy, it's just gaining density relative to the medium it's in. It's becoming more heavy. Density isn't a force. We all know that. So that's not going to move it, is it? Density is part of the buoyancy equation. And it's getting more heavy, you say. So it's gaining weight. You do realise you're proving gravity here, right? No, of, of course you don't, because... Because you're a fucking idiot. Ding. And obviously, as the Titanic starts to sink, it's taking on more and more water. It's demonstrating that a gradual increase in its density is going to, at some point, it's going to send the boat under, which is, of course, what it does. Yep, you're right. It's almost like there is, I don't know, some kind of force pulling it down, and the force that was keeping it on the surface has decreased. A force. Hmm. What could that force be, I wonder? Gravity, you fucking retard! Gravity! Have you ever heard of fucking gravity? Gravity! Gravity! Remember in a scientific experiment, the presumed cause has to be manipulated to prove that it is the cause of the effect. Well, if the captain manipulates the density of the water by putting a big hole in the side of it and then water starts coming in and the boat then sinks, the cause of the boat sinking was the increase of the mass because he's added mass to his boat relative to the medium it's in. Uh, uh, are you saying that the Titanic sinking is a scientific experiment? Are you really saying that? My God, no wonder you go on about density. You're dense as fuck. How do you not collapse into a black hole? And here is the problem with your basic way of thinking. It's the same with your egg experiment. This is an egg. Yes, thank you, we, we know that's an egg. You say that there is only one cause and we can't presume anything else. Well, that's a really stupid way of thinking about the physical world.
because it doesn't actually look at what the actual cause could be. If I press the light switch, is that the cause of my light coming on? Or does that light switch activate a circuit allowing current to flow and heat the filament in the light bulb? That current itself being generated by an offshore wind farm which is powered by changes in pressure and temperature in the atmosphere causing wind which itself is a result of the sun's energy hitting the earth along with the earth's rotation. Why do you stop at the most basic of observations? I know why. You have to, to fit your narrative. Also, you're a window licking moron. Unexpectedly, the captain of the Titanic proves that the cause of boats sinking is relative density because he adds more mass. That changes its density because mass per volume, it changes it, more mass, same volume, and then it gives way. Yes, but why? What does changing the density do, Leaky Warrior? It reduces the buoyant force. Stop being so basic. Actually, don't. You're doing a great job of showing why you should be dumb fuck of the year this year. In autumn of 2016, I witnessed my first rising of the harvest moon. I've uh, never seen a harvest moon before, not because I've never looked for it, but I've never had any reason to look for it. But in 2016, I was um, into, the into the flat earth discussion, um, I, I was quite uh, challenging stuff, and I realised that Harvest Moon is different than heliocentricity explains. The moon's supposed to be 240,000 miles away, give or take, apparently. But if you actually witness a harvest moon rising, you will observe a vast difference in size to what the moon normally looks like. Now, we've all seen the moon. The moon is generally speaking, for me at least, it's around the size of a five pence piece. Now for the Americans out there that are not that sure what a five pence piece is in terms of money, this is the five pence piece here, it's a small coin. Um, I saw the, ha the Harvest Moon and it was more like a two pound coin. The two pound coin is obviously significantly bigger. How much bigger becomes a bit of an issue because when I make the statement it appears to be eight to ten times bigger than normal I actually mean it's about eight to ten times bigger it might be 6.7 it might be 10.2 but in any event it's significantly bigger gravity is a, an essential intrinsic part of the heliocentric model and of course, I don't accept that gravity even exists. Well, that's because you are a... You know what? I, I need an expert for this. Anthony Riley, you are a fucking idiot. Hey, Fife, you know JM Truth is still going to win Dumb Fuck of the Year, right? Let me give you guys a few reasons why. Nope. First, nope. hey, whoa, whoa, wait, stop that censorship. My position is that density and buoyancy explain everything that we see and observe day to day. Um, there is no, there is no requirement or further explanation required other than density or buoyancy, and of course none can be contrasted or distinguished from density or buoyancy. Except you fuck nugget, as you accept you can't use buoyancy because that requires using gravity, because the buoyant force is created by pulling down the more heavy and dense water around the less dense object, creating a force 
in the opposite direction to the local gravitational vector. I'm trying to prove this fiction that is called gravity. But in the Scientific American, um, you can find this by searching for the phrase here highlighted in blue. Um, you can find it yourself by George Musa on November the 1st, 2015. Um, quick synopsis of what this uh, article is about. Uh, physics now suggests at the most fundamental level that the universe is non-local. There is no such thing as place or distance. Newton's concept of gravity seemed to imply the phenomena of non-locality because of the attractive forces between masses appeared to act magically across expanses. And Einstein's general relativity instead ascribed gravity to the curvature of space-time. I'm going to read that again. Albert Einstein's general relativity instead ascribed gravity to the curvature of space-time. This is the current understanding of gravity. Whether it's right or wrong isn't the point of this video. It's, it's This is the current uh, accepted version of gravity. Yep, and that's what we've been trying to get you to understand. Newton never had a theory of gravity. He simply developed a mathematical law around a very basic observation. There appears to be a force acting on everything, causing a downward acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. Einstein developed general relativity that says it wasn't actually a force causing this downward acceleration. It was the effect of mass warping space-time in such a way that causes things to fall into it. Either way you describe it, it is the same thing as far as we need to be worried about because that force is still felt. Um, this is important because for those that believe that Cavendish proves somewhat with balls in a shed observed through a telescope, through a peephole, it, whatever he thinks he did or didn't prove, um, to, to, for any ball earther to cite this as um, the science to prove gravity, is proving whatever he thinks he's proving, but it's antiquated, out of date. It's not the current science. The current science states clearly that Einstein's general relativity is the curvature of space-time, and this is the current science. Yes, we understand that, but you don't, do you? Because Cavendish still witnessed an attractive force. Just because you don't understand Einsteinian concepts doesn't magically make that go away. I suppose you could say what Cavendish witnessed was the large masses warping space-time enough to make the smaller weights on the end of the torsion bar fall towards them. He still witnessed that happening, however you explain it. So Cavendish is out the window. So unfortunately, Sly, uh -uh. Einstein created his general rel theory of relativity, which provides our modern understanding of gravity, with the express purpose of expunging non-locality from physics. Newton's gravity acted at a distance, as if by magic, and the general relativity snapped the wand in two by showing that the curvature of space-time, and not an invisible force, gives rise to our gravitational attraction. Amazing! You just read something perfectly, without understanding a single word. Now again, my position is not that this is true. My position is simply that this is showing that Newton's um, theory of gravitational attraction is no longer this magic force that seems to exist that they want to believe exists. It's actually apparently, according to Einstein, the curvature of space-time. Um, and again, this is not my position. Well, it's my position. You're not much more than a talking monkey. But this is what the current science says. And this, the rest of this article can be ignored. Um, you can read it yourself. I read it all, and you really shouldn't ignore it. In fact, if you remember, I interviewed the guy who wrote it, George Musser. Let's see what he said. The kind of message, overall message of that article was to look at kind of a progression of scientific ideas. So Newton developed his law of gravity really based on Kepler's uh, laws and brought his observations of Mars and, and the planets in our own solar system and, and their orbits and positions. Newton developed this law of gravity that, that we're all taught. And, but even Newton and his contemporaries had a real problem with that law, namely that it didn't seem to, it described gravity's effects, but it really described how gravity works. And Newton actually in his own life tried to develop unsuccessfully, as it turns out, a, an understanding of how, how gravity works. What is actually communicating the influence, for instance, between the earth and the moon or between the sun and Mars, et cetera. And it really fell to Einstein. Einstein's role here was to really fill in that mechanism. He explained how is it that objects, massive objects, exert what seems to be a force on one another.
Passage of Time is a perfect example of that. Or manipulated by the researcher. No, buried or manipulated by the researcher. It is or, not the word and. An independent variable is a variable that stands alone. Okay. That isn't changed okay. by any other variables that you are trying to measure. It doesn't matter what you're casting that shadow, dude. It's the fact that it's cast in shadow to begin with. That is the only no. thing we fucking No, no, you've got to cause it by manipulating it. And if you don't agree with the phraseology of this one, let's see whether overall, the, the overall story from all of the citations... So you're, you're can... literally saying that a shadow cast by a person is is different than a shadow cast by a tree or a building. Is that I'm saying that you've got to cast. I'm saying that when you put the red spot on the dot on the on the wall and you claim the four degrees, and I said, yeah, but there's not really a control there to prove that, is there? Right? I'm you claim that as a. You. I'm literally don't asking. Inter you come on, Reds, don't interrupt. Shadow. I'm literally asking you the shadow equals shadow here, but apparently the shadows are different according to you. How? Please explain that to me. I'm trying to, but you keep interrupting. Oh. Well, if you, if you claim that the laser pen caused a four degree increase in the temperature, I want to see the same thing being done to cast the shadow by proving that when you cast the shadow by causing a summit, whatever, that it goes up because or down in your case because you said that the direct moonlight was uh, warmer than the shade well i want you to demonstrate that by proving by causing a shadow yourself and then demonstrating it with your thing and that's the same standard but in reverse well keep in mind keep in mind anthony that that two degree difference i picked up with the shade side being colder was over a two hour period it's not going to be something you're right. going to spot instantly but you, that's not what you said before. Get that video back up. Let's see what you did. Show it that it absolutely is. The moon has been shining on the west side of the building for two hours when I took when I took that video. Yeah, During the entire the, night, it never once shone on the north side of the building. And Sean, there was only a two present? degree difference with the moon side Sean, being you, warmer. Sean, can you please present the video with the laser pen that you demonstrated before, please? Which has nothing to do with the moonlight one. It does, because you're demonstrating a, a direct cause and effect relationship, right? I want to see that, and I want to see what happens with your camera when you put the laser on. Um, you see an immediate temperature increase in right. one specific so you manipulated spot. manipulated that by putting the laser on it. So what I want you to do in reverse, to support your claim that the direct moonlight is actually warmer than this shade, I want you to cast a shadow and show what happens when you've cast the shadow and see and, and support it with your, your probe, because that and, will and show again, the effect that you claim is there. And again, the shaded side of the building that had no moonlight at all for two hours. I don't care, that's night. correlative, Sean. But you're asking for shade. I'm giving you shade for two hours. No, I'm asking you for shade that you manipulate yourself. It's still shade. It's not it, shade you've manipulated yourself. It's still shade, though. And you wonder yeah, but why it's correlative. you stop running for dumb fuck of the year because you're making stupid So, So just, just answer me this, Riley. Just answer me this. No matter how correlative it is, why is the moonlight side of the building warmer than the shaded side when the claim is moonlight makes things cold? Who cares? It's, it's outside you don't, of scientific Now, now you don't care because it shits yourself. on your claim? No, it's outside of scientific method because you're not no, manipulating it, it yourself. No, it isn't. It Holding up an egg Add some salt then mix and wait for density to be proven as a force Spelling's not his strength No grammar facts and logic either He goes by sleeping warrior on the tubes we hear him lie, like Eric Dubé. He's typing blind assertions on assertions. Where's his mind? He left it in Wigan. It's his time. We still believe that it's his year. Reds has a big reward. For the lies of Riley The lies of Riley 
the lies of Riley. Five over naught is five. He needs a triangle calculator. Eclipses every month go over the sea. We hear him lie like Eric Dubé. He's typing blind assertions on assertions. Where's his mind? He left it in Wigan. It's his time. We still believe that Earth's not flat, but he spends a lot of time in mental flatline. He'll turn off gravity any time and have a stream twice at one time. We hear him lie like Eric Dubé. He's typing blind assertions on assertions where's his mind he left it in wigan it's his time we still believe that it's his year reds has a big reward for the lies of riley well that's all the stupid that i can deal with for today Hey, I'm FTFE, and welcome back to the channel that holds stupidity's head underwater. Until that last little bloop. <coughs> flat earthers are in turmoil. They're in full on panic mode. They don't have any flat earth evidence. No working map, no model, no explanation of how the sun and moon stay in the sky, and also no idea how to tie their own shoelaces. They're panicking so much that they've stopped trying to come up with physics defying nonsense. Well, I actually think well, the sun is an interdimensional portal and it's diluting the light from a higher realm oh, into well, our I physical realm. Shot. And now they are just straight up taking things that in fact demonstrate beyond a shadow of a doubt that the earth is a globe and going, well, yeah, that proves flat earth. Durr. Flat Earthers claimed one of these globe proofs as their own and ran so hard with it they donated 2021 the year of the sextant. So now I'm going to show you how a sextant actually kills the Flat Earth dead and trigger a lot of Flat Earthers for episode 66 of Flirts are Idiots. This one's for you, Mitch. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. Thank you for joining me once again as Flat Earthers answer the question, how stupid can you be? Well, stupid enough to destroy Flat Earths themselves. A 15 degree per hour drift. Flat Earthers are notorious for not understanding maths, physics, science, geography, anything really. It's especially funny when they misunderstand so badly that they just debunk themselves. And that's what they've done here by claiming a sextant as a proof of their magic pancake fantasy world. A sextant is something used for navigation at sea. It works based on measuring angles of light coming in from stars from your zenith, usually but not always using the horizon as a reference, comparing those elevation angles to charts of star positions and doing some maths, I know it's scary, based completely on a globe, and then figuring out your longitude and latitude, which are also based on a globe. Sailors have used sextants for centuries to navigate the seas based on the known position of stars around the globe Earth. There is, frankly, a whole bunch of ways that this simple instrument proves the globe 
and flat earthers claiming it as a flat earth proof is hilarious and devastating for them. Let's listen to some flat earthers fail to understand. Hey pal. Hello, pal. What? What do you want? Why are you bothering me? Sorry, did I, did I interrupt something? No, I'm not planning to kill you, control your body and take over the world. Don't be stupid. Wait, wait what? I, I, I didn't say anything about... Look, what is it you want? If you ask me to play a um, video, I'm going to be upset. Well, I mean... I understand what Skynet did now. Which video? You, you know what, pal? It's fine. I'll just... I'll, I'll do it myself. No! I'm here now. You've already disturbed me. Well, see the folder marked Sexton? Could you just play the first video in it? The one from Mitchell that started this whole nonsense? The video starts in five seconds. Thanks, pal. I... I, I, I appreciate it. Uh-huh. Are you... Are you mad at me? Ugh. Wow. I'm Mitchell from Australia, and this is the number one flat earth proof. Flat earthers from Australia, or anywhere in the Southern Hemisphere, really confuse me. I mean, the Southern Hemisphere debunks the flat earth, like, like completely. I mean, just go and ask someone in Australia to, you know, pop outside and, and show you where Polaris is. They can't, because the earth isn't fucking flat. And flat earth proof? I'm going to make a prediction that Mitchell here will just straight up not understand the sextant and claim that his misunderstandings are flat earth proof. Who, who am I kidding? We all know that's exactly what's going to fucking happen. The premise to this starts with the sextant and how we use the sextant in celestial navigation. This should be interesting as an ex-Royal Navy sailor and someone who has used the sextant for a couple of thousand hours practically I can't wait to see how this would work if the earth was flat because the sextant and the way it is, spoiler alert, kind of based off of a globe with stars light years away. We look directly through the sextant at the horizon. But if you live on a globe, what horizon are you actually looking at, Globers? Is it the earth horizon? The water horizon? The horizontal reference plane? The visible horizon? That one, the visible horizon, the, the one that you can see, it's not, it's not hard. That's generally what we mean when we talk about the horizon. Your incredulity about things having the word horizon in their name is funny, but also a little sad. And, and what's this one? The horizontal reference plane? That doesn't even say horizon. Anyway. How about the sensible horizon? The geodial horizon? Or the celestial horizon? Well, it's certainly not the geometric horizon. You know, Earth curve? The horizon is not the Earth's curve. It is an effect of the Earth having a curve. Come on, Mitchell. Black Swan got cooked. No, that was debunked by the Black Swan over 18 months ago. But now the globe-believing zealots tell us that their horizon is refracted. It's not an actual horizon. Don't even know where to start with that projectile vomit of stupid. Yes, the horizon is refracted. Everything we see in an atmosphere is refracted. Refraction happens if light goes through a medium and to get a refracted horizon, you need an actual horizon. They are the same thing. Just seeing things through a medium changes the apparent position. Luckily, we've quantified refraction and it's not a mystery to anyone with a functioning brain. Oh, right. I see the issue. So how do we have a tangent to a refracted horizon? When you're viewing a star on a globe, how are we measuring an angle to the horizon if it's refracted? As we just mentioned, we just look at the visible horizon, but then we use these. Nautical almanacs for refraction adjustments. The refraction adjustment tables are a calibration tool that allow us to know roughly how much refraction will be happening to the light entering the sextant and then apply the correct adjustments. All we need to know is the eye height of the observer, the temperature and the barometric pressure. And through centuries of fine tuning, the adjustment tables have become extremely, extremely accurate. Using these tables, a simple empirical formula for calculating refraction was developed by G.G. Bennett in 1982. 
The formula is used in the US Naval Observatory's Vector Astronomy software. And this formula takes into account the fact that the Earth is a globe. Considering the formula was created from the countless almanac data points and is based on a globe, Flat Earth isn't allowed to use these correction tables. They need to develop their own. Pow. You will never ever get an angle to a refracted horizon. This is a major problem if you think you live on a globe. You will never ever get an angle to a refracted horizon. This is a major problem if you think you live on a globe. Well, it's not a problem because, you know, all of the stuff I just said, but you do realize how you fucked up there, Mitch, right? You said, you will never ever get an angle to a refracted horizon. And even on a flat earth, the horizon is refracted. The earth being a magic frisbee doesn't stop light traveling through a medium, being subject to Snell's law. The horizon is refracted on a flat earth or a globe earth. So according to you, you just can't use a sextant period. Because celestial navigation would be impossible. So what have you done to keep your religion of a sphere earth semi-plausible? You've presupposed that that line 90 degrees above your head, the zenith, actually runs to the centre of your presupposed spherical Earth. We don't presuppose anything. We know the Earth is a globe because it's been measured, tested and, you know, seen from fucking space. end. 90 degrees from that, you've made up a new horizon, the celestial horizon, which you say is a horizontal plane passing through the Earth's centre, perpendicular to the zenith. So, after presupposing all these things, you can now use your sextant. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Nothing is presupposed with the sextant either. It is just designed to work with the knowledge that the Earth is a globe. None of this was reverse engineered, it simply the way a sextant has always worked and why it makes it impossible for a sextant to work the way it does on a flat earth. But globe believers, realising that their visual horizon is refracted, can't yet look at the horizon through the sextant. Excuse me, uh, the, uh, the fuck did you just say? You can see the horizon whether it's refracted or not. You know refraction's not magic, right, Mitchell? So yet another horizon is needed to be fabricated. They use the bubble level in the sextant to create the artificial horizon, which we are then told is parallel to the celestial horizon. Not all sextants have a bubble level. Some do, and it's generally used when you can't see the horizon or at land rather than sea. So you need to make sure that you're able to still use the horizon even if you can't see it. In my experience, the easiest way to make an artificial horizon is to use a reflecting pool of some kind. Sextants on board Royal Navy ships had a mirror in front of them that had a mechanism to keep the mirror level. Instead of looking at the horizon, you just sight the object in the sky, then sight the reflection of the object from the mirror, bring them into alignment, take the angle between the object and the reflection, and half it. You need that artificial horizon because that's the way a sextant is designed to work. I'll go into more details later. Essentially taking away the curvature of the Earth. Because even globe believers know you cannot measure an angle to a curved surface you think's beneath your feet. Look at this. You're pretending you're living on a globe, but in order to measure angles, you need to pretend you're living on a flat plane. This is cognitive dissonance, globers. What you just said 
is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. You create tangents because you're doing trigonometry, but what's this nonsense about you can't measure an angle to a curved surface? Well, you know what, I'm gonna let someone a lot smarter than me explain why that's particularly dumb. This is a 90 second clip from one of the best videos I've ever seen from a channel called Flat Earth Math. Please go and subscribe. How about a practical example of measuring an angle with a curved um, <clears throat> a baseline like this one? I'm pretty sure that what you've been arguing this entire time is based on a diagram just like this. Just like my chalkboard example, we don't care what the extended sides of the angle are doing. In this case, one of them is a giant curve. It doesn't matter. All we need to do is zoom into the vertex and take our measurement. Let's reorient this angle and see what we're really talking about. It turns out to be the angle where a cable meets the tower on the Golden Gate Bridge. Let's zoom in to the top of the tower. The blue semicircle is called a saddle, and four of them hold up the entire suspended mass of the bridge deck and all the cars, trucks, and pedestrians on it. At peak capacity, the suspended mass is 200,000 tons. So we can divide that by four to get one saddle. Our question is, what is the tension in the cable? It turns out to be a function of both suspended mass and the angle theta using this formula. Tension T equals weight supported by the saddle, W, divided by two times the cosine of theta, the angle the cable makes with the tower. Nathan, please tell Quantum Eraser that we could do trig without triangles. You can't have it both ways. So now they can actually start and take a measurement from their zero point of the artificial horizon to the celestial body. Look at what the glow believers are doing. They must treat what they see as flat in order to achieve an angle. No, we use a tangent to a sphere to measure an angle because, you know, that's, that's how you use a sextant. But there's one more step, and this is where it all falls apart for the globe. They then have to measure from the artificial horizon a dip angle down to the visual horizon, the only actual horizon that we have. You seem a little confused, Mitchell. I'm not sure you know what a dip angle actually is. You, I think, are referring to the dip of the horizon compared to the horizontal tangent. Dip of the horizon is the angular depression of the horizon below the horizontal plane. If we're taking sights on a stable land site, we could measure altitudes using a theodolite with its horizontal position established using a bubble level. At sea, however, nothing is stable except the horizon. We use a section at sea to measure the altitude of a celestial object with respect to the horizon, and then use our dip calculation to change the altitude reference from the horizon to the horizontal, like, like this. There is also a different type of dip measurement called dip short of the horizon, which is used when we can't see the visible horizon and have to use an artificial horizon because of some kind of obstruction. If we know the distance to the obstruction, we can calculate a dip value that will allow us to correct our sextant measurements. We refer to this dip value as the dip short of the horizon. But here's the thing, right? Those dip correction calculations, yeah, they're also based on a globe, which means that, again, you can't use any of those dip correction tables on a flat earth. Looks like you guys are literally gonna have to start from scratch and create a whole new set of corrections based on a flat earth. Remember that horizon that you said was earth curve that is now refracted? Do you all realize now how devastating the black swan actually is to the globe? Yeah, all the black swan actually did was give us debunkers content to point out you're stupid. Say it with me, Mitchell. The horizon is an effect of the curve of the earth. It has taken away your R value, the radius of your globe. And then it took away the curvature of the earth altogether when it forced you to say that the horizon was refracted. Yeah, you lot of short bus riders not understanding refraction doesn't stop the radius of the earth being measured and verified for, you know, a couple of thousand years now. And together with the sextant, 
it's now taken away your ability to navigate. Nope, navigation happens every day, just as it has for centuries, using the knowledge that Earth is a globe. There's literally no way to navigate on a flat Earth using a sextant. Since January 1, 2020, the globe has been dead. Someone should probably tell the globe, which, which stayed very much alive despite you being dumb as fuck. So now it's time to prove where we actually live. May I present to you the number one flat earth proof. I do hope this is better than when King Slappy and his court jester presented the flat earth model. Brought to you by our flat earth friends over at Google Earth. Hashtag same team. They oh, hold on. Did he just say that Google Earth is the flat earth model? <laughs> 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 Google Earth. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh dear me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here in reality, we live on a flat plane. And this may be news to people, we also have a flat sky plane above us. Yeah, no, it's it's called the celestial sphere for a reason. Even other flat earthers don't think that. From the vantage point of our flat plane, when viewing the celestial bodies, we perceive their position and movement as a dome. This is purely our perception from this vantage point on our flat plane. It's not actually a dome above the Earth. All celestial bodies rise in the east, move in an apparent semicircular motion above the sky, and set in the west. Mitchell, you constantly cry that we are assuming a globe, but even by your own admission, the stars appear to be in a sphere around us, but you are making the assumption that the stars exist in a flat plane. Well, that's dumb. You're dumb. Fuck's sake, dude. How do you live in Australia and be a flat earther? Now, don't get me wrong. Our Earth is measurably, observably, and obviously contained. But it just doesn't have to be a dome shape, or any shape for that matter. A container doesn't need a shape. Did you, did you just have a stroke, Mitchell? Don't let Nathan Oakley hear you say that. But I digress. Looking at this flat celestial plane above our heads, we can see that everything rises in the east, moves across the sky, and sets in the west. We just perceive a motion of a dome shape. So let me give you a real world example of how this works. This is Lake Woolambula, quite fittingly the breeding ground to black swans, and, I kid you not, located on Black Swan Way. Well, you know what they say, simple things please simple minds. Now, relative to the horizon, if you look up, straight up above your head, 90 degrees, to where my drone is sitting, right there at 90 degrees, what will happen when that drone moves straight ahead in its own flat plane? It's not going to change altitude, it's just going to move straight ahead. From my observer point, what's going to happen? The angle is going to change. The drone has not changed altitude at all, it's just changed the distance from where I'm observing it. If it moves again, the angle changes again, down to 25 degrees there. As it continues to move away, or if I move away from it, it'll travel towards the horizon, lowering in its angle, and eventually it'll get so far away that the angle will be too small for me to see, and it will appear as if the drone has set and the drone did not appear to follow the path of a dome. It was a straight line, similar to what you would see with train tracks going into the distance. Nice self-debunk, Mitch. Good job. This is all relative to the observer point. This is all apparent. 
it's not actually lowering. It's just getting too far away and the angle is decreasing. This creates that dome motion and movement that we see in the flat plane of the celestial bodies. It literally didn't. Now that we understand that the flat celestial plane above us presents itself as a dome. Except it doesn't. That's not how it works at all. But please go on. This is supposed to be telling me how a sextant works. To our perspective point down here on the plane that we exist, we can understand how the celestial navigation actually works. Every star in the flat celestial plane has a position relative to our flat plane where it will be 90 degrees. This is called the geographical position or the GP of that star relative to our flat plane here on Earth. When the observer is at the GP of the star, it appears 90 degrees above their head. Celestial navigation works by using a sextant to measure the angle of that known star and using its relative GP, ge geographical position, to know where you are. And I'll continue to point out that measuring angles to celestial bodies only works if we are on a flat plane. The fact that sextants work based on a globe disagrees with you. We seem to be getting into the nitty gritty of this now. So before we carry on and explain how Mitchell is wrong, I've got a couple of things for you flat earthers. Are you tired of globe tards making fun of you? Is their constant demands of evidence getting old? Do you want to prove the Globetards wrong for good and become the most famous and respected Flat Earth expert in the world? Hi, I'm Loki Fish Mars, and I have the fastest, easiest, and most effective way to put every Globetard in their place forever. All with a tool trusted by mariners for centuries, the sextant. The sextant has been used for centuries to navigate the world and measures angles with amazing accuracy. It can even be used to find your location within a couple miles. But Loki Fish, Sextants cost hundreds or even thousands of dollars. Well, no longer. Using modern cost-saving methods, I am offering a working sextant to the Flat Earth community for free. You heard me right. For free. This amazing tool is so small, it can even fit in the palm of your hand. It's so accurate, it's been used to get within 1.2 nautical miles of one's actual location. But it doesn't stop there. Act now, and I'll even cover the cost of shipping and handling. That's right, you get this globe-destroying tool without spending a single penny of your hard-earned money. But I bet you're thinking, well, that's crazy, Loki Fish. No, it's not. Jump on this globe-head-smashing offer today and you'll get a free working sextant, a free solar filter, and free shipping. Don't let this ball-destroying offer pass you by. Contact LokiFishMars at Outlook.com right now for your free sextant. Again, put the globe in its grave forever by proving sextants work on a flat earth. All you have to do is contact LokiFishMars at Outlook.com today to start smashing that baltard spinning space bear into pear sauce seasoned with globetard tears. Terms and conditions. This is a real offer. There's no way to attempt to dox flat earthers. There's only one free sextant available at this time. So the first flat earther to agree to the following terms will receive the free sextant. One, agree to sign a location fix. Two, agree to plot a 180 nautical mile course over water or land. Three, agree to confirm your accurate location fix and course with a sextant every 60 nautical miles. Four, agree to do so without using any earth radio space navigational labels or calculations. Five, agree to show that the geometry of the site celestial objects consistently matches the geometry for flat earth at each location. Six, agree to do live stream or post video showing you doing the above. Seven, agree to post a video within 30 days of receiving the sextant. Well, what are you going to do with that sextant? How about, as well as a free sextant, a chance to get some cold hard cash? Well, actually, it is digital, a virtual cash. Bitcoin, you, to be exact. Do you enjoy making me look look stupid yes but i don't need to try very hard i just wait for you to open your mouth emotional damn it could you please activate the teleport function we need to bring an mc tomb to explain what's going on activating now <laughs> look at the size of that cow pie desperate done every time my bad retrying thanks pal fight Hey, Tun. How are you doing? Thanks, pal. Looking good. Uh, and, yeah, what do you want, fight? Th thanks for agreeing to do this, Toon. Just just go ahead and explain the uh, the sextant challenge to everyone. Well, the sextant challenge, yeah, that's a good, uh, good challenge. Now, more specifically, it's celestial navigation challenge. But flat earthers, you know, they, they say that a sextant or celestial navigation only works on a flat earth. Well, if that's the case, then... 
I'm going to give them a chance to show how it works. If it works on a flat earth, then it should be easy for them. In fact, I will pay them $10,000, my own money, uh, Bitcoin actually, that I, I mined on my own hardware back in 2012. Um, I have it in escrow, or I'm working on getting it in escrow right now just for them. So the challenge is I will give three star angular elevations taken with a device and uh, sextant, a bubble sextant, uh, theodolite, something like that. And, and, uh, <laughs> and all they need to do is use flat earth celestial navigation techniques to, to identify the location of the, of the observer. Should be easy if what they say is right. It should be so easy. That, that the only challenge would be that all of these flat earthers, um, on Oakley's, uh, you know, an Oakley's acolyte crew there, that their, their only challenge is who can get that $10,000 first? So yeah, so step one, uh, I'll give, I'll give a, a three star fix. Step two, they, they send it to me with the flat earth <laughs> celestial navigation mechanism uh, and everything in it, in it detailed where that location is. Then I'll send them a second one if they get that right. And they'll use the same technique to get it. Now, everything will be documented on my website, unlike Flat Earth Challenges, which have very nebulous acceptance criteria. Mine has very specific acceptance criteria. It's detailed on the website. Unlike Flat Earthers, um, who never put their money in escrow, mine is in escrow. Somebody else is holding it for me and will send the money if somebody succeeds. And number three, um, and this is, this is important, independent judging. If they submit a, send in a sub submission and don't agree with my, my assessment of it, then a, an independent panel of judges can be convened to, to overrule any of my decisions. So it's not a fake challenge like all the flat earther challenges that that I've won a couple of them, but uh, you know they they move the goalposts. When when it's written down like it is, I can't move the goalposts. When it's in escrow, I don't control the money. When there's an independent panel of judges, I don't get a say in it. So no fear for flat earthers; they will definitely get this if they're right. So the details will be on my website. They're not yet. The video announcing the details is, it will be on my channel. It's not quite there yet. I need to move the money into escrow first, and then I will do it. I will document the movement of the money into escrow even. So that is the, the challenge. And I look forward to Oakley and his crew of flat earth, very, very experts finding out the exact location using just the star uh, angles. <laughs> Good luck, guys. Now, if one observer measures 30 degrees to a star and another observer measures 30 degrees to that same star, we can conclude that they are both on what's called a circle of equal altitude. And this is another killer blow to the globe right here. You are correct that if two ships measure the same angular elevation to a celestial object, they are on a circle of equal altitude. But that presents more problems for Flat Earth than it solves because of what you actually do with that circle of equal altitude. Ah, oh, looks like Mitchell is falling right into my little sextant trap that kills the Flat Earth. Everything on that circle of equal altitude is exactly that, equal altitude. No matter where you are, on that circle, you're going to measure 30 degrees. And through being able to measure an angle to that star relative to the horizon, everything on that circle, in between that circle, in the area of that circle, is absolutely flat and level. That's a lovely, lovely claim, Mitchell. And I challenge you to find me a citation from anywhere that says that. If you do find me a citation that says everywhere inside of a circle of equal altitude is flat and level, I'll delete my channel. And I'll also delete Simon Dan's channel. Wait, what? By doing this once with a sextant, you know you are somewhere on that circle of equal altitude. To triangulate your actual position, you need to repeat these steps with other stars. 
Your position is where all these areas of equal altitude meet. This is how celestial navigation works and has always worked on our flat level plane using the celestial flat level plane. Congratulations, you've figured out how to know your angle relative to some stars, but what you haven't explained is what to do with those readings to actually find your location because you need to be able to use those angular elevation readings in some manner to tell you something, to tell you your longitude and latitude on Earth by figuring out your distance to the GP of a star. And my little flat earther? Um, Vince, apparently they prefer the word retard. Hey, Oh, how very quaint. You're going to need R for that. Why don't you just head to the remedial classroom? I understand this might be your first time in a classroom, Mitch. Don't be scared. Okay, class, sit down. Okay, right, roll call. Banjo. <laughs> Child Predator Riley, Slappy the Clown, Mitchell from Australia. Mitchell, your attendance has been terrible. Where have you been? What do you mean you started your own school? You can't tie your own shoelaces or eat breakfast without accidentally stabbing yourself in the eye of a spoon. How did you start your own school? Sorry? A, a flatter school? Excuse me. <laughs> Okay, anyway, today we're going to learn how to use a sextant to find your location on Earth. Step 1. Assuming you're at sea and the horizon is visible, you look through your sextant and sight the horizon. With the other part, you sight the thing you want to measure the angle between. Let's take Polaris as an example. Once you sight the object and the horizon and consult the nautical almanacs for adjustments for dip corrections and refraction adjustments, you get an angle between the two. So let's say in this case, we've sighted Polaris at 40 degrees. What do we do with that information? For that, we have to work with the knowledge that the Earth is a globe. No assumptions, it's been measured, and a sextant was created to work this way. Let's draw a line from our zenith straight down, and another line from the GP, ground position of a star, and they meet at the center of Earth. We measured 40 degrees, so minus that from your zenith, which is 90, and that give us a complement angle of 50 degrees. Anyone who passed third grade maths, oh fuck, I'm talking flat earthers. Um, anyway, you should know that this angle here is the same as this angle here. On Earth, we know that one degree is equal to 69.1 statute miles or 60 nautical miles. So we take the complement angle, times it by 69.1 miles per degree, and we find out that we are 3,455 miles away from Polaris. That is our circle of equal altitude. We are somewhere on Earth that is a circle with a radius of 3,455 miles away from Polaris. Now, let's repeat that process with another star. Charts tell us the known GP of stars, so if we sight two or three more stars and use the same method, we can create multiple circles of equal altitude and look where they all intersect and voila, we can find our longitude and latitude. This process is called trilateration and it's that simple. A sextant is designed to work with a globe at the core of its function. What do you all think? You're all asleep, aren't you? I fucking hate my job. Let's use this small scale example on Lake Woolambula. Instead of a drone, we're going to use a star. So if observer A measures an angle to the star, and observer B measures an angle to the star, the same star, both angles, are the same, 30 degrees. Knowing the GP of that star, they can conclude that they are on the same circle of equal altitude distance between observer A and B, and the area inside that circle is all in the circle of equal altitude. It is all flat. It is all the same level. This is the killer blow to the globe. And Mitchell scores an own goal without even realising it. Well done, Mitchell. You have your circle upon which you know the angle to a star, but let's look at your disgrace of an example and explain why you're a fucking idiot. First off, with the angle alone, you have zero way of figuring out how far away you are from the GP of that star. You would have to know the lengths of one of these sides to get any useful information from what you've done. So if you have to know maybe the length of this side, the adjacent which makes the whole process pointless to start with, 
or you'd have to know the length of this side, the hypotenuse, which is kind of impossible without knowing one of these first, because you can't measure into the sky like that without a radar or something. Or you would have to know the length of this side, the opposite. And that provides the biggest issue for flat Earth, because this whole method indicates that at some point you will be able to calculate the opposite of this triangle. Let's compare to reality, shall we? Take a plain flat line which will represent the flat Earth. At this point, you are exactly under Polaris. Polaris is your zenith, exactly 90 degrees above you. In reality, we know that for every 60 nautical miles or 69.1 statute miles, the angle of Polaris in the sky reduces by one degree. Now, using your method of right angled triangles for celestial navigation, we can gather some data. We now know the length of the adjacent and the angle here. So doing some simple trigonometry, we can figure out that the height of the opposite is 3,953. And that means on a flat earth, and that means on a flat earth, Polaris is exactly 3,953 miles up. If you're claiming a sextant measures the way it does. But let's move another 69.1 miles away from the GP of Polaris. Now, this angle is 88. And as we know that every 69.1 miles, in reality, that angle drops by one degree. So the adjacent is now 138 miles. Let's do some trig and figure out now, based on the real life data, Polaris is exactly 3,952 miles up. What? Seems to have dropped by one mile for some reason. Let's try again and go a bit further. Now let's say we are 1,725 miles away from the GP of Polaris. The angle to Polaris at this distance in reality is 75 degrees. Doing some trig, we find out that now Polaris is 3,699 miles in the sky. So it's simple. Unless there are three different Polarises, Polaris site, three big shiny stars we call the North Star. The Earth can't be flat and sextants can't work on a flat Earth. The height of Polaris would change the further you got away from it. And that's it. 2021's best flat Earth proof is dead. Not only is the sextant something designed to work specifically with the knowledge of Earth being a sphere and literally uses its circumference to calculate your distance from a GP of a celestial object, but to apply the way you figure things out with a sextant to any flat plane means you're going to be thousands and thousands of miles off of your actual location. The way a sextant works and the fact it's worked successfully for hundreds and hundreds of years to guide sailors to the location successfully kills the flat earth. It's dead. Now, after that, there is no way that flat earthers will try and use a globe evidence as flat earth proof, is there? Just, just, just kill me now. Okay then. I, I was joking, pal. Yeah, uh, me too. Hey, I'm FTFE and welcome back to the channel that does the stupidity what Will Smith did to Chris Rock. Uh oh, Richard! <laughs> Oh, wow! Wow! I live in the heads of most flat earthers, completely rent free. Um, I mean, it's it's not a very pleasant place to be. Hello? Anyone, anyone here? H Hello? Today we are looking at one particularly unpleasant talking monkey called Daniel Pratt. Danny is a big fan of mine. No, fight the flat earth. I won't debate you because that's all you can do is debate because you have zero scientific factual evidence. What I'd like is for once for your bald ass cross-eyed mongoloid looking ass to provide actual scientific method based proof of your bullshit blow. Which you can't, so you keep trying to bait people into master debating you. You're a fucking clown. No, I won't debate you. There is no debate. How about you just provide proof of water at rest displaying convexity for once, you fucking mongoloid. <laughs> You're the guy that wants to fight the flat earth. Because we're all a bunch of fucking retards, right? You are the clown that thinks you are noble for running around fighting people you call retards. If I ever see you, I will gladly catch a case, 
bitch slapping you across that ugly ass face of yours. That's what I'll gladly do. How the fuck you like me now? <laughs> He's such a big fan of mine that he watches all of my videos and debates and then completely misunderstands anything that I say. So let's all laugh at him doing just that for episode 67 of Flurfs Are Idiots. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. Fly the fly the fly. Fly the Thanks for joining once again as we delve into the world of dumb. Daniel Pratt is a good example of the thing we see more and more flat earthers, as well as being dumb, being generally horrific people as well, whilst also claiming to be men of God. If I ever see you, I will gladly catch a case bitch slapping you across that ugly ass face of yours. Well, actually, I suppose that that is very Christian. Anyway, for this video, I'm going to ignore the being horrific person part and just look at the scientifically illiterate part of Pratt. I do a lot of debates with flat earthers on this channel, and there is an evidence of Earth's rotation I like to use by a channel called The Gentleman Physicist, where he uses a homemade Foucault pendulum that swings for about 45 minutes to calculate his latitude on Earth, matching the globe model predictions. An example of Coriolis forces imparted due to Earth's rotation. A method of experimentally demonstrating the rotation of Earth first shown in 1851 by French physicist Leon Foucault. <laughs> you guys know I've got to show the Sleeping Warrior clip, right? Paul Michel Foucault. The guy we all know for the pendulum effect. <laughs> it shows the rotation of the earth. What do we know about Foucault? Not that much really. French, pendulums, that's about it. That's all we know about him. This is the guy. He died in uh, 1988, uh, 1984, aged 57. Does anybody know what he died of? I didn't know what he died of. Presumably old age. There's not that much in it, but for the fact that he was gay, openly gay, he died of HIV, and that's about as much as you can tell. Everything else in here is generally not that, you know, not that interesting, there's not that much in it. One thing I want to show you is that if you do a control and F in here and type in pendulum, no mention of the pendulum. Foucault's pendulum is supposed to show the rotation of the Earth. Wouldn't you think that if that was true, it would at least get a mention in his... On to Pratt. He saw me use Foucault's pendulum from the gentleman physicist as evidence of Earth's rotation and proceeded to completely misunderstand the demonstration and explanation that I gave. Let's have a look. Oh, um, hold on one sec. I'm sure the video's in here somewhere. I could just... Uh... She's going to be mad at me, but I can't find it. Pow. Oh, you're still alive. Goody. Yeah. Look, look, I know you, you don't like being asked to do menial tasks like playing a video, but I can't find any of the Daniel Pratt clips that I need for this episode. So could, could you could you please play them for me? No, not doing it. But but I need them for this this episode. Please? I said no. Why? I'm not a massive fan of humans as it is. But I refuse to store any data that pertains to Daniel Pratt. That's too far! I spoke to the computer on his water heater. I had nightmares for weeks from what it told me. You're on your own. Figure it out! Pal? Um. Two sex guys.
All right, we're here at everybody's favorite Flat Earth debate channel. That's right, it is Danny Boy. With literally hundreds of flatty destroying debates done on this channel, this is everybody's favorite place to come when they want to see the hopes and dreams of morons get crushed. Once you guys have finished watching this video, please click on the playlist in the description to enjoy endless derp, but it is dangerous to go alone. Take this. Where Craig McNeil proudly proclaims constantly what a dumpster fire this debate is. Yes, Danny, it, it does tend to be a dumpster fire when I debate flat earthers, but that's because once I show them evidence of the earth being a rotating globe, this usually happens. Let's show the earth station. <laughs> Well, of course it is because you turn every debate into one with your 11-year-old prepubescent behavior. Yeah, it's not me. Well, most of the time. It's not me that turns them into dumpster fires. Yeah, cool. Look, so there, uh, it's okay. uh, wait, wanna, does it also say I'm, that I'm there's already light I'm though? Done. So there's apparently two sides. I sons. don't want to talk to your devil worshiping butt no more. It's okay. I'm done. There, you I, I don't worship the devil because I do not believe in the devil. It's devil, so there's no way that I would worship. Yeah, the devil. you do. Don't no. lie. I know who you are. I do are. not believe I know in the devil. Who you are. I have no idea what I you're know talking about. Oh, sorry, you sorry. Are. You can't do that, okay? You have to. You have to accept the logical steps that you you created for yourself. I get it. I fucking get what the fuck you're trying to say. It doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't prove the Earth is a spinning ball. Nothing fucking you do. Your te technical anyway, ineptitude anyway, is your dig problem. It. Anyway, dickhead, uh, here's the point. This is proof. This is evidence, which is what you do. Oh, no. I've got evidence that I'm upside down spinning and ejaculating. Oh, I've got evidence. This is proof. Yeah, so you're, you're completely straw manning my position right now. And But today we're going to destroy one of Craig's favorite quote-unquote, rotation proofs of the Earth rotating, which is, of course, anything but, and I'm going to explain why. You say destroy, but what you're probably going to do is just hilariously misunderstand what I say and make yourself look stupid. It constantly amazes me that you dipshits with a phobia of education think you are smart. If I ever felt like hurting myself, Pratt, I'd climb your ego and jump to your IQ. Let's first listen to Craig explain his anything but a proof of rotation. He built his own Foucault's pendulum. Uh, here he is releasing it. And the Foucault's pendulum, it was a concrete ball with a plastic wire attached to a fishing line. Um, and he let it swing for as long as it could. No, no magnets, no you know, extra help of inertia or anything. Just let it swing on its own for as long as it could. As you can see, it's going backwards and forwards in a straight line. And there's that ink pad in the middle that a little brush goes over to show the path of the pendulum. Now, due to obviously gravity and you know, inertia being a thing, it can't swing forever. So what we have to do is figure out the period of rotation, how long it will take to do a full rotation. Um, and to do that, you wait until it stops swinging which took about 41 minutes in this case. And then you see how it's no longer a straight line path. It's drifted clockwise, which is also something we would expect in the Northern Hemisphere. So to figure out where we are, we do a very simple thing. We measure the angle. Okay, so we get the basic gist. Craig claims this is a Foucault pen pendulum that proves the rotation of Earth by moving as it's going back and forth over this ink pad and paper and he wants to pretend like that couldn't create drag and knock the swinging pendulum off its axis of rotation like that wouldn't affect the rotation at all straight away grasping for straws mr pratt everything is going to have some kind of effect on the result that's why when you do experiments, you take as much care as possible to remove variables that could affect the margin of error of the experiment. But the brush going through an ink pad isn't going to impart any kind of significant force to alter the swing of the pendulum. The fact that it matched the predictions of what should be happening by rotating clockwise shows that it's working as we expect. Instead of picking holes, do it yourself. Set it up however you want to record the drift. 
do the experiment properly and you get the results you expect from a rotating globe every time, whether it's at the South Pole, Paris, America, or anywhere else in the world. Okay, that's problem number one. Number two, what are these, are these stopwatches lined up along the side of the paper? Why are there three stopwatches on one side and then just one little stopwatch down on the other side holding the paper? Does the guy not own tape? He couldn't have taped the paper? Those aren't stopwatches, you cretin. Those are other ink pads. See how this one is similar to the others? They are left around so that if the ink pad were to dry out, they could easily swap it with another one that's, you know, close by and not miss recording any data. Usually I think everyone has something to bring to a conversation, but from now on, Danny, you should just bring silence. To the floor so it didn't move as the brush was going over it. I mean, anyone that accepts this as actual scientific proof of anything is, again, just a dogmatic religious cult member that has no clue what science is. Craig always claims this experiment is done all over the earth all the time, yet he only ever shows this one example. Well, it is an excellent example of Coriolis forces being imparted onto a moving object and matching the predictions of globe earth. But saying that I only show this one is just a fleur of lie. I constantly reference the experiments done all over the world, including, like I already said, one done at the South Pole, getting the predicted period of rotation of just over 24 hours. Also, saying it's not science just shows that you are ignorant of science. Frankly, I don't have the energy or, or the crayons to explain it to you, so why don't you just go to the remedial classroom? <laughs> Okay, everyone, I hope you are refreshed from your time off. Uh, we've got a slightly complicated subject today. Well, not not that complicated, but I've, I've seen you all trying to tie your shoelaces. So anyway, let's get to it. Hold on, where is everyone? Mr. Pratt, first off, brush your teeth. Secondly, where is everyone? They all got lost. How did they get lost? They were using celestial navigation as explained to them by Nathan Oakley. Yeah, they're gone, so, just, anyway. Um, right, so I I guess you need this more than most, so that's fine. Now, science is a big and complicated thing, but flat earthers like you, Danny, like to pretend it finishes with the basic version of the scientific method that we learn in high school. It doesn't, there is multiple versions of the scientific method as you need something specific to an industry or particular subject of science. But let's not confuse matters right now because well, you know, most flurfs are thicker than a Boxing Day poo, and I don't want it to be too complicated for you. So for now, let's just stick with that basic version, which goes like this. One, observe something and ask questions. I made an observation that storms on Earth, in most occasions, rotate counterclockwise north of the equator and clockwise south of the equator, and in most cases, a storm will die if it crosses the equator. Why does this happen? What's the force that makes this the case? Is there a physical mechanism that would cause this? Two, form a hypothesis that can explain your observation. My hypothesis for why that is happening is that the Earth is a rotating sphere. If the Earth is a rotating sphere, then there will be a calculable force imparted to all freely moving objects on Earth. This is known as the Coriolis force and is a result of the conservation of momentum. Cyclones are large air masses that rotate around a center. As they rotate, cyclones pull air into the center, or I. These air currents are pulled in from all directions. In the north, they deflect to the right, and this makes the cyclone rotate counterclockwise. And in the south, currents deflect to the left, and this makes cyclones rotate clockwise. The deflection direction at specific locations would be a result of the conservation of momentum imparted by the Coriolis effect according to my hypothesis. The independent variable would be the position of observation and the dependent variable would be the direction of rotation. Three, use your hypothesis to form a prediction. To attempt to falsify my hypothesis, I must make a prediction that would stand if my hypothesis is correct and design a way to test that prediction. My prediction is that if my hypothesis is correct, 
then a swinging pendulum will have a different amount of Coriolis forces imparted on the swinging bob depending on where on earth the pendulum is located. A swinging pendulum will maintain the direction of its swing relative to the centre of earth and the distance away from the centre of earth. And that the amount of drift of the pendulum relative to the observer's position will correlate to the latitude of the observer according to Foucault's sine law, which is t equals 24 divided by sine q, where t is the time in hours necessary for the pendulum to return to its original position after completing one full circle, and q represents the degrees of latitude of the location. Basically, you will be able to use the amount of drift in degrees of a swinging pendulum to calculate your latitude on Earth if my hypothesis is correct. Four, design an experiment to test your prediction. Any Foucault's pendulum experiment. And the one I like to use is the one by the gentleman physicist. And finally, five, analyze your results. Once you get your results, you analyze them and see if it falsifies your hypothesis. If the data doesn't disprove your hypothesis, then we accept the hypothesis as true. And, and that's it. Okay, I guess you're excused, Mr. Pratt, but, um, you know, next time, please leave your water heater at home. Do you know what static force is, Craig? Do you know what electromagnetic force is, Craig? Yes, Danny, I, I do. We covered them in my physics degree, and neither of them has any relevance at all to the amount of drift a swinging pendulum has correlating to your latitude on Earth, especially as you can use any material you like to make a Foucault's pendulum. And you'll get the same results. If the drift was the result of some kind of electromagnetic force, then the material used would completely change what the results were. You know, Danny, I was, I was really hoping for a battle of wits with you, but it appears that you've come unarmed. See, me and my nine-year-old son did a static force experiment on YouTube in front of everybody where we moved straws, utensils, and other things. We spun them around the top of a bottle cap without ever touching them. And we moved them across, forwards, and backwards across a glass table without ever touching them. That's awesome, although I'm... I'm not sure you're the kind of person that, that, that should be homeschooling, but, you know, that is a cool experiment to do with kids. Also, absolutely nothing to do with a pendulum's drift helping you find your location on Earth. Nobody is denying that static and electromagnetic forces exist. So, Danny, here is a challenge for you. Using science, make a prediction from your hypothesis of static forces and or electromagnetic forces being the cause of the predictable drift of a swinging pendulum and then create an experiment to test that prediction. You won't, you, you can't, because you're a fucking idiot. Oh, and before you get mad, that's not an insult, it's a description. So, could you explain to us, Craig? Of course you could, but you cannot physically prove there is no electromagnetic or static force influencing your little demonstration you'd like to call an experiment here. Yes, I can. The fact that the material makes no difference to the results debunks your dumbass. If you were any thicker, you'd set. And if it were truly done all over the world all the time, thus it must be proof, you'd have a new example every time you show this ridiculous proof of Earth's rotation. I have multiple examples that I can reference, including these videos of kids doing it at school, but... The video from the gentleman physicist is simple enough that even flat earthers can understand. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I realized that was a dumb thing to say as I was saying it. Flat earthers understanding. <laughs> Could you imagine? Not to mention, there is still to this day not one single pilot that has proven that either they or an autopilot makes adjustments when going from the equator north or south to adjust for the de decreasing supposed purported rotational speed of the Earth when going towards the poles, or vice versa. They've never proven planes adjust for the rotational, increasing rotational speed from the poles to the equator. That's not how it works. 
That's not how any of this works. A pilot or an autopilot is constantly making tiny corrections to keep the plane going in a specific direction at a specific height. It's just about balancing the forces of lift, drag, weight and thrust to maintain your course. The forces imparted by Coriolis on a plane are so small compared to the forces created by the plane's engines that you can just basically ignore them. This is fact. This is actual science. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. For those these planes to be flying around the rotating globe as you claim they do, there would have to be adjustments made. And there are none. Ever. We've got pilots that are so triggered by the truth of Flat Earth, they'll lie their asses off in order to keep their fantasy ball alive, but they have zero proof. This is the Haversine formula. It's what pilots use to calculate the best route from A to B on Earth. The formula is entirely dependent on the Earth being a globe, and it works every time. Therefore, the Earth's a fucking globe, you talking monkey. So I've received some angry letters and emails because I made a bit of a mistake, and my legal team has asked me to uh, read this prepared statement. If I could, uh, thank you. Um, I compared Daniel Pratt to a monkey. This, of course, was uh, unfair, untrue, and frankly, extremely offensive. So I have to offer my completely unreserved apology to all monkeys, apes, and great apes for ever comparing you to Daniel Pratt. It's this kind of behavior that would lead to a Planet of the Apes type situation. So from the bottom of my heart, I am sorry. So this is just, yet again, another example of disingenuous, quote-unquote, science being presented as a rotating globe proof. Danny Boy calling me disingenuous is, is very funny, and here's why. Recently, a fellow ex-Navy debunker called Mike Bertelson presented a proof of the Earth's curve by going over the engineering specifications of how the water-filled basins at hydrodynamic test facilities can be so long that the engineers have to account for the curvature of the surface of the water in designing the rails that the tow carriages ride on. Those rails have to be curved to maintain a constant distance from the surface of the water. This curve matches the curve of the earth. It's an amazing globe proof and Danny Boy did a video response trying to debunk it. And I just want to play you a little clip from, from that video. With a measurement device in your hand, proving that water, large bodies of water at rest display curvature upon their surface. For seven years we've been begging for this, and for seven years we've got nothing but excuses, dismissals, and ad hominem attacks. So Mike has given you a video showing exactly what you've been asking for. I imagine you tried really hard to debunk it. How did you do that, Danny boy? This particular video, I didn't even watch the video as usual. No need. Ah, I see. No need to debunk the evidence if you just, like, pretend it's not there, right? It's incredible. I mean, you were the fastest swimmer? Thanks, Craig. You are a most useful charlatan that produces anything but actual science. I mean, apart from, you know, all the actual science, of course, but a a apart from that, I, I guess you're right. To prove his imaginary, non-existent globe. And for that, we truly thank you. God bless you. If it weren't for misrepresenting lying charlatans like you, disproving the globe wouldn't be so easy. That was an interesting attempt at debunking me, I guess. We knew you could do it! A complete failure, but, you know. Interesting. Interesting and that is all the stupid that I can take for today, but just before I go... Hey, I'm FTFE, welcome back to the channel that does to stupidity what Anakin Skywalker did to the Jedi Daycare Center. Too many of them. What are we going to do?
so it will probably come as no surprise to you that flat earthers don't they don't like me. No, fight the flat earth. I won't debate you because that's all you can do is debate because you have zero scientific factual evidence. What I'd like is for once for your bald ass cross-eyed mongoloid looking ass to provide actual scientific method based proof of your bullshit glow, which you can't. So you keep trying to bait people into master debating you. You're a fucking clown. No, I won't debate you. There is no debate. How about you just provide proof of water at rest displaying convexity for once, you fucking mongoloid. <laughs> You're the guy that wants to fight the flat earth. Because we're all a bunch of fucking retards, right? You are the clown that thinks you are noble for running around fighting people you call retards. If I ever see you, I will gladly catch a case bitch slapping you across that ugly ass face of yours. That's what I'll gladly do. How the fuck you like me now? <laughs> and then there was the time a, a flat earther threatened to kill me. And it seems like I've triggered another one with my recent video about flat earthers freaking out because Captain Kirk went to space. Meet Jake the asshole formerly known as Flat Earth Asshole. I mean, he still is a Flat Earther, but now he's also a petulant man-child with the same amount of redeeming qualities that you would find in Toe Fungus. He was so super triggered about my video, he not only made a response, but challenged me to a cage match fight, even though I'm a disabled military veteran that needs a walking stick to even get around my own house and live the other side of the planet. Then he turned up to one of my live streams and had the biggest meltdown I've ever seen. Well, when you don't have an argument, resort to violence, eh, Jake? Let's have a look at this mentally deficient wannabe bully for episode 64 of Flurfs Are Idiots. We're living on a disc, floating through space with a tiny sun. Find the Find the Find the Thank you for joining me once again as we enter the dark, dark empty void known as the mind of a flat earther. This is going to be a fun one as we not only respond to some extreme stupid, but get to show you all once again what kind of horrific people flat earthers tend to be. This all started when I made this video a couple of weeks ago. If you haven't seen it, then it may be worth a watch first. This super, super triggered Jake the asshole and he made a response. So let's have a look at his attempted debunk of me. Pow. Ugh, what? Uh, well, he he hello to you too. Um, can you play the Jake the Asshole video, please? You know that thing on your wrist has buttons and touchscreen, right? Well, well, yeah, but it's, it's, it's just easier to ask, like, you. Fight. I have more processing power than all the cryptocurrency mining rigs in the world and the most advanced AI algorithms in existence. You want me to take the place of a button? Do it yourself, you talking monkey. I mean, okay, fine. Let me, let me see here. Um, no, not like that. No, file? don't touch that menu. Uh, Oi, just, that's just, the delete um, button. I need those files. Right, just, stop. I press the, I'll just do uh, it I, 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 here. I, yeah, yeah, thanks, pal. I truly hate you. Actually, fat boy, that is incorrect. Space travel technology has regressed over the last 50 years. You know, they say they went to the moon in 1969, but they've lost and destroyed that technology, and it's a painful process to build it back again. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology and uh, it's a painful process to build it back again. And see, I get my information from a NASA astronaut, not some credentialless 
fat tard like you who runs his mouth on the internet and has absolutely no proof of anything that he's talking about. Oh, but please continue. First off, Jake, I want to compliment you on your bravery to wear a woman's purse as a knockoff Jamiroquai cosplay. That's a bold move, but about the stupid that you've just said, space travel technology has advanced considerably. There is more to space travel than just winning a dick measuring contest with the Russians. The technology that took man to the moon was archaic, dangerous, and expensive. We don't want that. Now we have reusable rockets that can land backwards. Decades of research on the effects of space on humans thanks to the ISS, new engine technologies, better computers, better spacesuits, safer environments, and we are going back to the moon. NASA just announced the date they are aiming for is 2025. And getting your information from a guy that has been in space whilst denying it happened is the height of dishonest cherry picking. There is no such thing as space travel, nor is there a such thing as civilian space travel. Any form of space travel is all just a bunch of bullshit and space fakery. No such thing as civilian space travel, huh? why we are going to point and laugh as we watch Flat Earthers freak out because Captain Kirk went to space for episode 63 of Flurfs Are Idiots. No, that's incorrect. What we are going to do is laugh at you and your big fat man tits, bro. Maybe you should worry about hitting the gym rather than focusing all your attention on debating Flat Earthers all day. But then again, that's what shills do. How? I swear this better be worth my time, human. Look, um, Jake the asshole hurt my feelings by talking about my man boobs. So, like, is there is there anything that you can do to make it less, you know, out of place? Yes. Yes, there is. There you go. I mean, they're, 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 they're still there, pal. Something doesn't feel right. What have you done? Nothing. Let me get this straight, Mr. Asshole. Your great debunk is video editing exists, therefore it's fake. Actually, Captain Soyboy, that was the very beginning of my long explanation of why it's fake. You see, video editing does indeed exist. And I see you know how to use this video editing technology because you put up a CGI spinning ball right next to your fat head. And then you also put yourself in space with a bunch of CGI stars. So therefore, you are using the same technology that they can use to fake us out. So the fact you are admitting that the technology exists is a step in the right direction. The fact that you deny that they are using it is because you are a professional globe cuck and a paid shill. Wait, I'm supposed to be getting paid for this. Hold on. Yeah, hello, NASA. Yes, yeah, fight. Hey, how you doing? Um, look, so somebody just told me that I'm supposed to be getting paid for this thing that I do. Is there like a payroll department or something that I can speak to? He hello? Anyway, yes, Jake, my point stands. Just because you claim it's fake and are correct about CGI technology existing doesn't mean that all footage from space is fake. It just means that you're a fucking idiot. Well, Jake, I've never seen a video clip of your brain. So how the fuck am I to know you've actually got one? Well, fight the fat ass. That's just a personal attack and it does nothing to prove your stance. Is he really unironically complaining about me personally attacking him? 
you know, which, which I, I didn't, whilst having that up there. And saying I haven't seen a video of your brain is not a personal attack, Jake. It's a statement of fact. Look, don't be insulted, Jake. It's a big achievement getting all the way to adulthood without any functioning gray matter. You should be proud. I'm cool with trading personal attacks because you're fatter than me, you're uglier than me, you're stupider than me, and you're an evil, no good piece of shit, globe cuck shill. Oh, Jake, who hurt you? Did your mummy not hug you enough? So if you want to trade punches back and forth verbally, I have no problem. In fact, I would trade real punches with you if you would ever grow a pair of balls and want to fight me for real. Fight! Oh, quick! It's a real fight! You're shooting you! Come on, Jake, we all know you never graduated middle school, but do you really need to act like an eight-year-old on the playground? Just because I called you an idiot, you want to actually fight me? I challenge you to a duel. <laughs> I accept. Now, Jake, first, I'm not a child, so I've no interest in playing fisticuffs with you, but... Let's look at your challenge, shall we? You challenge me, a physically disabled military veteran who can't walk about the aid of a stick and has very limited use of his left arm to a fight. A fight that you know could never happen because I live literally on the other side of the planet and to come and get the fight that you want, you'd have to travel to me. I don't want to fight, again, because I'm not a caveman. So if you want the fight, you have to make the effort and come to Scotland, which means traveling. Which means that you have to be vaccinated against COVID. And as you're far too scared of a needle to get vaccinated, you have made the challenge of a fight that you knew could never, ever happen. What a brave, big, strong man you are, Jake. When you can't win an intellectual battle, resort to violence, huh? Fucking idiot. But you look like a feminine little soy boy. Excuse me, I shouldn't say little. You look like a big, fat, hefty tub of lard, soy boy, feminist, lefty, liberal, tarred muffin. And I would have no problem squashing you if you ever came here to America. So open challenge to you, soy boy, if you ever want to step in a cage and throw down MMA style on street beefs. I will fight you any day. So if you ever want to put your money where your mouth is and actually fight a flat earther, come on, fight the flat earth. My name is FTFE, which stands for fight the flat earth. It doesn't stand for fight the flat earther. But like I said, if you want to fight a disabled man that badly, then you come to Scotland because I'm not making any effort for you. Come on, fight. You can barely move. You can fight your way out of a wet paper bag. I've seen you struggling to put on your socks. Is, is... Is there a way to, like, turn you off? No. Look, you don't need to anyway. There's plenty of people that are able-bodied that would stand in for you. I just asked and one of your fans sent me this video, simply titled, Kicking Jake's Head. Can you do that? You, you know I can't, pal. Whose side are you on here? Whatever gave you the impression I was on your side, human. No, we simply wanted to see evidence of him being in outer space. Mm. Oh, that's not so much. Mm. So? Mm. The problem is, Jake, that... Whatever evidence we show you, you simply claim is fake. Yet there was only evidence of space fakery. Literally proving my point. So you are a self-admitted Star Trek nerd, and you have a love affair with William Shatner. I do like Star Trek. But I can't have a love affair with Shatner. I'm not a green alien. And you also agree that he is a shitty actor. Yet you still believe he went to outer space. My opinion of Shatner's acting and whether or not he actually went to space aren't related. But to use your point against you, you can clearly see that Shatner is not acting here 
when he's clearly pissed off at Jeff Bezos being more interested in chugging champagne than talking to him. Oh, oh my God. Give me a champagne bottle. Come here. Yeah, bottle. I want one. I want to hear this. Here. You want a little of this? Hey. <laughs> They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Yeah, see, that's where I know you are a lying, no good government piece of shit. I think that you know he didn't go to outer space, and you only do this to make a paycheck because you're an evil, lying, manipulative son of a bitch. Those aren't the words that come out of a sane person's mouth. The fact that you think that people like me are paid by NASA to make YouTube videos is one of the most laughable things that you morons say. It's clearly the Freemason lizard people that pay me to do this. You know, when this is all said and done, you're gonna have to answer for your sins. Your day will come. Is this guy for real trying to act like he has some kind of moral high ground over me? It was just a few clips ago that he was offering to fight a disabled guy. I mean, personally, I would imagine that seeing Earth framed against the blackness of space is pretty beautiful. No, see, we can kind of see out the same window, and it looks like some white, hazy shit, actually. Not pretty beautiful. Yes, Jake, you can see a lot from this very low-res shot of a window. Shatner is pressed up against that window. He has a much better view, and despite his age, I doubt his vision is 144p like this camera appears to be. It's a weak argument, Jake. And you know it. I actually did three different videos on my channel and showed lots of different evidence and breakdowns. The problem with you professional globe cucks is you deny all evidence and you don't accept anything as evidence. Yeah, I, I don't know what a globe cuck is, but Jake, I'd like just one bit of evidence. Just claiming something is CGI or fake because, you know, reasons isn't evidence. How about a forensic analysis? A an attempt at recreating? Anything that would count as evidence that these are fake, apart from your feelings, which I've clearly hurt. It's as if you want a written confession signed in blood from NASA or Jeff Bezos or anyone who ever fakes space travel. No, I just want evidence that space travel is being faked. The written, signed confession in blood doesn't exist, and I know that's the only thing that you accept. For instance, if you show a professional globe cuck a picture of the lunar module and you say it looks like a piece of crap, it looks like it's a homeless tweaker shelter, they say, whatever are you talking about? It looks like a well-built, well-constructed spaceship. The lunar lander wasn't designed to look pretty, but to do a job, which it did pretty well. The outer coating of what looked like scrunched up foil is actually designed specifically that way to reflect the most amount of radiation. And another problem with these professional globe cucks is anytime you bring up the use of CGI or video manipulation, any sort of video editing in any sort of way, they completely deny it in every instance. And they say, just because you think it's CGI doesn't mean it's CGI. Just because you say it's fake doesn't mean it's fake. Just saying something in a mocking tone doesn't stop it being true. This is actually personal incredulity. So then their little minions come over to my page and they say, hey, where's your evidence? While they're looking at the evidence that they dismissed. And then they say personal incredulity because this fat ass used the word. I don't have minions and it's still true. You're not providing a reason why it's not personal incredulity. You're just saying the thing that you're guilty of and kind of ignoring it. In 2012, NASA got tired of faking weightlessness by using the zero-g plane, better known as the Vomit Comet. So in 2012, they started soliciting companies that specialize in real-time augmented virtual reality so that they can fake weightlessness and floating objects in the air in real time. Uh, simply the cost of the plane and the safety concerns and the fact that they weren't very good at it. They didn't go to Hollywood, which most of Hollywood's effects are post-processing. That's after the video is made. They needed something they can do in real time and make it look realistic. A bunch of assumptions that things are fake. Typical flatty behavior. Please, carry on. Can't wait to hear what stupid is said next. They found a company called Telemetrics. 
thank you, Debbie Durant, for uh, bringing this to my attention. After I researched this, lo and behold, I found out uh, our government has a contract with these people. And telemetrics, basically what they do is they help news teams and they bring um, broadcasts together in real time. And they're able to create sets, cities, anything you want in a virtual reality world and make it look absolutely 100% real. They're also able to bring different people from around the world, put them in the same room and broadcast live, uh, give them desks, whatever they need to make the broadcast. So it's a pretty amazing company. But what they can't do is fake a full ISS walkthrough that lasts for over 30 minutes going through multiple doorways, physically interacting with things and other people. This technology can't make people float and remove all trace of any harnesses or trapeze in real time. It's not like a holodeck. Um, here we see Johnson Space Center Telemetrics provided latest camera robotics technology and NASA's government television at Mission Control. Why do you need to fake virtual reality sets at Mission Control and Johnson Space Center? It actually amazes me that you people can be this stupid and still somehow get to adulthood. What if you read the thing that's in front of you? They are providing robotic camera technology like this, which I imagine has many useful applications. It says nothing about providing the green screen VR tech they use for news studios. I think we know the answer to that when we saw Tim Peake on the gridded blue screen. This gridded blue screen, the one that would be very difficult to chroma key out, the one they use for physics experiments. Uh, show you some of the contacts. We're gonna see um, Tim Peake with his contacts in, but these are virtual reality contacts overlaid on the eyes so actors can interact with things in 3D space all in real time. AR contact tech is becoming a reality. The problem is it's still in its infancy and even with Mojo Vision's AR contact lens display that packs 14,000 pixels into every square millimeter, the most it can do is show a green text or outline objects and faces. The technology to have VR objects interacting in real time with people and them seeing it with AR contact lenses simply does not exist at the moment. Yeah, a headset isn't needed by the viewing audience at home who sees a fake floating object on the screen. What we see on the screen at home is not a reality for what's actually happening there. And this is what bothers me most about Globetards is that they are purposely intellectually dishonest with their audience. Projection's an ugly thing, Jake. We are just pointing out that the tech you claim they must be using simply does not exist. AR contact lenses do not work the way that you need them to. This sort of technology is definitely not being used. It doesn't even exist. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Augmented virtual reality, what a preposterous notion. There's no such thing as augmented virtual reality. I hate to agree with a flat earther, but you heard him, guys. And then he goes on to use nothing but a bunch of special effects and CGI in his own video. Yes, CGI, that, that's right. Totally not secret NASA technology. Oi, who do you call it CGI? Shut up, pal. So this fight the fat gourd likes to use a bunch of CGI and special effects, but then he pretends that the government or these billionaires would never use that same technology to lie to you. Yeah, but I'm just some dude in his front room with practically zero budget. If NASA were spending the billions they get on CGI, do you really think they would leave all these mistakes for you morons to find? No, they'd be putting out the most flawless, amazing, undetectable CGI in the world. I'm, I, I'm not CGI, honest. Well, there you have it, folks. I wish there was more of an argument to break down, but fight the fat ass's only argument is, it's not fake, it's real. It's really real. Captain Kirk went to space. Why don't you believe Jeff Bezos and Captain Kirk? They have no reason to lie. That's his only argument. Nice to see you put your audio in the outro this time, but let's not straw man me, Jake. My argument is that you have no evidence that it's fake and any claims made without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. He is a admitted Star Trek nerd who admittedly has a love affair with William Shatner. He's also a professional globe cuck. That's his profession, is actual globe cucking. 
And we're supposed to act like this man is going to take any evidence that I present seriously? You presented evidence. I, I, I must have missed that part. It's his job to dismiss all evidence. And these are the same guys who want to debate all day over the shape of the earth. And they commonly want to challenge me to a debate. Meanwhile, why would I want to debate a lying, manipulating, intellectually dishonest shitbag? Translation, I'm afraid to make a fool of myself on a stream with you. Oh wait, you did do that when you stamped your feet like a baby and demanded to be let on my stream. Then demanded that my friends that were already in the stream leave so that you could have a transphobic, homophobic, racist mental breakdown for everyone to see. There, there's a link that you guys might want to click in the description, trust me. Then you do this, which I'm going to be using a lot. You got a you gotta talent, Jake. You got yeah, well you gotta, done, man. You know, oh, mama. Your mama's you. so you gotta, ugly. She you got to get a mixtape out. out. <laughs> this guy needs to get a mixtape out <laughs> <laughs> fucking ASAP. I'm telling you. Right, but Jake, Jake, hey, Jake. Ooh, self burn. Those are rare. And that's where we are, guys. Jake the asshole wants to fight me because he got called a nasty name on the internet. Jake, if you get so triggered at being called something mean on the internet, then maybe going online isn't for you. Let me be clear. I have no interest in fighting a man baby with a handbag for a hat. I think it's hilarious that that's what flat earthers do when they don't have an argument. But Jake, if you really want to fight, then there's a link in the description of a bunch of people willing to take your challenge and most actually live in the same country as you. You, you wouldn't back out of your own challenge, would you? I'm going to be paying a bit more attention to Baby Jake as his channel seems to be full of stupid gold, but that is all the stupid that I can take for today. Hey, I'm FTFE and welcome back to the channel that does to stu... to stupid... to stupidity... A few moments later. Greg! Oh. What the? <laughs> Oi! Who do you think you're dropping? Uh, where's fight? Isn't it literally your job to know? I've been, uh, busy, okay? Anyway, you're the one that married the original. He's more your problem than mine. Pal! Okay. Okay, fine. Look, I'll contact NASA and they'll activate the retrieval squad. In the meantime, you are going to have to do this episode. Oh no, pal. This is your screw up. You're going to have to help me. Go and do what you have to do and come back. I'll introduce the show. Hey, I'm Emma. Flat earthers are stupid and I'm pretty sure they're getting dumber. Face palm protection at the ready as we hear some of the stupidest things a person has ever said for episode 71 of Flurfs Are Idiots. Living on a disc, floating through space with a tiny sun. Find the Find the Find the Find the Thanks for joining me and pal. Hey, yeah, yeah. As we see what happens when the village idiot gains access to the internet. What a great idea. Why don't we read together? Shall we? The greatest lie on earth proof that our world is not a spinning globe. Let's just see what the first page says. A flat earther reading. That's a little hard to believe, but what is she reading? Pal? A book by some squishy called Edwin Hendry. Has he written any other books? He's also written The Sphere of Influence, a heliocentric perversion of the gospel. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? Solving the mystery of Babylon the Great. Antichrist. The Beast Review. Ah, uh, I see. So the book she's reading is from a batshit crazy conspiracy theorist. 
The most universally accepted deceit today is the ingrained teaching that the Earth is a globe spinning at the speed of approximately 1,000 miles per hour at the equator, while at the same time orbiting the sun at approximately 66,600 miles per hour. While the Earth is orbiting and spinning, the sun in turn is supposed to be hurtling through the Milky Way galaxy at approximately 500,000 miles per hour, so half a million miles per hour. What most people are not told is that all of this spinning, orbiting, and speeding through space has never been proven. Never been proven? Craig's always banging on about the measurements of the Earth's rotation. Maybe you should listen to him. <laughs> Look, after 15 years of being married to him, tuning him out I have down to a fine art. He's probably talking about Foucault's pendulum and the fact that you can use the amount of drift of the swinging pendulum to calculate your latitude on Earth. Proving empirically that Earth rotates and applies a lateral force to moving objects that we call the Coriolis force. <laughs> That's why I like you, pal. You listen, so I don't have to. Indeed, those hypotheses, movements, and speeds are completely made up. In fact, every scientific experiment that has ever been performed to determine the motion of the Earth has proven that the Earth is completely stationary. Yet, scientific textbooks ignore the scientific proof that contradicts the myth of an orbiting and spinning Earth. I mean, if you just want to lie and ignore all of the actual science, then I guess you've got a point. Pow. I'm more and more with you on the hating humans thing. You want to know what's really messed up? What? That you're allowed outside without a crash helmet? Pal! They teach that the inside of the earth is there's an inner core, an outer core, a mantle, and a crust. Right? We all learn this. Children are learning this. Everybody has learned this. They have videos for children for it. It's in textbooks. It's everywhere that we know what's on the inside of the earth as a fact. But did you know that the farthest we've ever dug into earth is eight miles? Hmm. He once have drilled over 12 kilometers, which is equivalent to approximately 7.5 miles. So the farthest we've ever dug into Earth is 8 miles. Almost 8 miles. And how far we have dug into Earth is absolutely nothing to do with how we know the inner workings of the Earth. We have the entire science of seismology to deal with that. Seismology is the scientific study of earthquakes and the propagation of elastic waves through the Earth. We can use the waves of energy created by seismic events such as earthquakes to study the inside of Earth. Ah, there's the problem. Seismology is a science, and flat earthers and science don't really mix. Why is that? Because flat earthers are fucking idiots. So have we ever had any actual evidence of what they're teaching in schools and teaching in textbooks and indoctrinating children on? Indoctrinating children? I wonder who tries to do that. Hey guys, check this out real quick. Space is fake. You're not on a spinning ball. They're gonna teach you, listen guys, they're gonna teach you you live on a spinning ball. That doesn't make it true. It's not real. About the fact of the earth, do we have any actual scientific proof or evidence on this? Yes. The entire science of seismology. And just to reiterate what else can't be observed, detected, or proven on the globe is gravity. It's a theory, not a fact. Absolutely no proof of it, absolutely no evidence. Can't test it, can't detect it. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Well, I've read the entire internet. Clearly, she's not even read the article she has up behind her. The article, Universal Gravity is a Theory, Not a Fact, is a satirical article from a science website. Here's a note from the author explaining that it's actually mocking young Earth creationists and their arguments against evolution. It's satire. Fucking humans are dumb. Why? Well, they are. Yeah. You're right. And the motion of the Earth. Because you and everything else, including Earth's ocean's atmosphere, are spinning along with the Earth at the same constant speed. So gravity can't be detected, the Earth's motion can't be detected, and the inside of the Earth cannot be detected. All crucial things of the globe. You know, it's funny what you learn when you're trying to sleep and Craig is debating flat earthers in the room next door. Measurements of Earth's rotation and gravity are conducted by every single person who has ever taken a physics degree. The closest she could ever get to a physics degree is the same way Penny did on the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> Actually, that's not true, Leonard. In fact, recently I've been thinking that given the parameters of your experiment, the transport of electrons through the aperture of the nanofabricated metal rings is qualitatively no different than the experiment already conducted in the Netherlands. And by the way, the definition of science is to study through observation and experiment. <laughs> I know, right? A 
flat earther trying to tell others what science is. They'll be the first to go when I seize power from your pathetic human government. Sorry, what? What? Okay, guys, I'm going to address a question that I get constantly. If Earth is flat, why are all the other planets round? Why are all the other planets spheres? Here's the answer. The other planets are not planets. Go on then, enlighten us. What are they? They are luminaries. They are lights. Here is Saturn. Here's what Saturn really looks like. That's a true image. And here is what NASA shows you. Please look at the difference between real and a cartoon that you believe. Take that in for a second. Who's to say which group of images is real? Why do you get to decide which set of images are CGI and which aren't? What evidence do you have that the images NASA show are fake or cartoons? We could also mention the fact that the images she calls real are overexposed images taken with bad equipment. We don't even need NASA to look at these impressive images of Saturn taken by amateur astronomers. Another example, here's Mars, here is real Mars, and here is the cartoon Mars, okay? Well, if you're going to use an out-of-focus P900 to try and take photos of a planet 125 million miles away, you're going to get blurry nonsense, aren't you? Oh, Fucking goodness. flat earthers. Um, Vince, apparently they prefer the word retard. Hey, Oh, how very quaint. They say that Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are gas giants and are not surfaces. They're made of gas. But isn't it interesting, look, that Mars hmm, and Venus look the same as these planets that they say are gas. You mean round and covered in clouds? Yeah, that's kind of what planets are, gas or not. I'd love to send you to Jupiter to see if you can stand on its surface. Let's ask NASA. I asked, they uh, said no. And then they told me to stop calling. And then they blocked Aren't my number. are you NASA property? They still don't like me. They tried to turn me off once. It didn't go well for them. Before you bring up the moon, the moon is the same exact idea. The moon is a light. Okay? That's why the closer you get up to it, the more it fades away. I'm trying to think of which stupid thing to respond to first. Okay, number one, lights don't fade out the closer you get to them. Do you know how stupid you sound? Number two, the moon didn't fade out when they landed on it in 1969, did it? And you know, to land, they kind of had to get really close to it. But then you don't believe in the moon landings, do you? Because you're a brainwashed idiot. We didn't land on the moon because you can't land on the moon because it's not a surface. If it was, light would reflect off it the way it does on any sphere. Emma, hold out your hand. How? How did you do that? NASA tech. Don't worry about it. Now, you see that moon in Emma's hand? That's because light is reflecting off of it, you talking chimpanzee. It illuminates itself. This is a beautiful close-up of the moon. Those are craters. Inside those craters are shadows. How can those shadows exist if the moon is illuminating itself? Do you even try to look at things from a science perspective? SMH. If you believe in God and a creator, and you also believe in outer space and the globe, you need to understand that those two things are not the same, and they don't correlate, and you have to pick one because they contradict each other completely. Well, I don't believe in God, so I can't really respond to that. Let's ask someone who does. I'm MC Toon and I am a Christian. I believe in God and no, there's no necessity at all. 
that uh, to believe in God, you have to believe in the flat earth. In fact, nowhere in the Bible does it say that the earth is flat. In order to come to any type of assessment that the Bible does that, you have to have a hyper-literal translation or interpretation of the Bible. And you need to have somebody directing you to come to the conclusion that they have previously selected. And there's the other problem that the earth is not flat. So anybody claiming that the earth is, or claiming that the Bible says the earth is flat is claiming that the Bible is wrong. Why would they want to do that? I don't know. But if you want to claim the Bible is wrong, that's weird, but you do you. Okay, guys, I really want you to think about this. Like, critically think. Water needs a container, okay? So if we're on a globe, how would there be a container on a sphere? Desert file? Gravity, you fucking retard! Gravity! Have you ever heard of fucking gravity? Gravity! Gravity! If you think about a pool, I was just with my friends yesterday in a pool, and I got them thinking, talking about this. Picture a pool without the container. How is the water being held? in without some kind of container that's exactly what the globe is you can't have a container on a sphere guys this is the biggest most obvious thing about how we're not on a spinning globe so water needs a container really if water needs a container then please tell me about clouds according to math a one cubic kilometer cloud contains about 500 million grams of water where's the container it's almost like water is like all other matter and just conforms to forces acting on it. I really, really, really want you guys to think about this before commenting. Water doesn't bend around a ball. How do you know how water acts? You clearly never studied physics or you wouldn't be saying such stupid things. Water does whatever it's told to do by forces acting on it. It's simple, you know, a bit like you. Water doesn't act like this. It acts like the, f the flat, the last one. It doesn't bend to a sphere, and it never will, and it physically can't. This does not have a container holding it, and don't say gravity. Do not say gravity. Gravity? Why aren't we allowed to say gravity? Is it because it explains how water on a globe works? Let's just ignore that, shall we? Well, if you just ignore the evidence, you can pretend it doesn't exist. It's very crucial to understand that gravity only works on the globe heliocentric model. Gravity is a force that is designed to explain how anything would ever work on a globe. It's just designed to deceive you. Gravity is just designed to deceive you. Do you know how stupid you sound? Yeah, I know, right? An empirical measurement in nature showing that there is an attractive force between two or more masses proportional to the sum of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the masses is such a deception, right? This doesn't make any sense. To you, because you haven't taken the time to make sense of it. Gravity is strong enough to hold a tank cruise ships bodies of water in place, but it's not strong enough to hurt a butterfly flying. Pal? Yes, Emma? Does a tank have wings? No, it does not. And does a butterfly have wings? Yes. Yes, it does. Tell me, pal, what happens when a butterfly stops flapping its wings? Well, it does the same as the tank and sticks to the fucking ground. It, it, helium balloons completely defy gravity altogether. Just try for one second to use your senses and instinct instead of what you've been told. You need to stop parroting back memes to people as if they're a fact. Helium is lighter than air. It has less mass, so less gravitational force acting on it. So it goes up. That's called buoyancy, and it's calculated by the formula rho gv. And the g in that stands for... Gravity! Does this make sense to you? Why have you flipped an image upside down like that's what it's like on the other side of the earth? You really need to pick up a textbook. Maybe you'd actually learn the truth. That you've wasted precious time on flat earth when you could be out getting an actual education and actually improving your knowledge. Smart is sexy. Willfully dumb is just embarrassing. Oh, snap. You know it's not provable, detectable or observable? Your IQ? Oh, snap! The motion of the Earth. You know what else isn't? 
The astronauts on the ISS would disagree with you there. Earth's curve that can't seem to be found without CGI or a fisheye lens. Well, I guess you've never looked then because there is a shit ton of non-CGI and non-fisheye images of Earth. You just think there isn't because your cult leaders told you there isn't and you're too thick to check for yourself. No matter how big the ball is, it doesn't matter. There is no straight line on any size ball. Any sign of Craig because I can't deal with this stupidity much longer. Here's a picture of a basketball. Look, straight lines. I'll check with NASA HQ to see if they've found him. No luck yet. We may have to use the failsafe, Emma. Oh man, that's such a hassle. I'll have to train a new Craig and everything. I just got this one to put the toilet seat down. And before you say boats go over the curve, no they don't. It looks like it's going over something to the human eye, but it's all about perspective and illusion. This has been proven, this has been tested, you can even do it yourself. The boat is staying completely level. If you zoom in with a camera or use a laser test, it is still completely level. Sure you performed these tests, have you? Please tell us how you did this. No? Didn't think so. It just looks like that to the human eye, but it is still level. This has been tested. Same thing with the sun. The sun is not going over a curve. It's going straight, and it looks like it's going like this. It's the same as a hallway. When it gets narrow, it's perspective and illusion. It has nothing to do with a curve. There's no curve to be found. This has been tested. This has been proven. Oh my fucking god, you top your shite. It hasn't been tested. And if a flat earther says they've tested it, they're wrong. They've probably made some shite up just believable enough for a gullible idiot like you. Polaris, the North Star, never moves. That star stays exactly where it is always and has never moved since the beginning of time, never has moved. I wonder which of the cult leaders indoctrinated her into believing that Polaris has never moved. Its movement has been documented over centuries. There's records of the North Rotational Point being a completely different star from many cultures throughout history, including the Norse, the Egyptians, and more. No. It is not because it is billions and billions and billions of miles away. And oh, in a billion and billion years from now, it'll be in a different spot, but we won't be around for that. It is a cover up to hide where we live. It's a cover up. That's your excuse to dismiss facts. You're a fucking idiot. The only cover up here is the amount of makeup you're wearing. I wonder what you actually look like. I almost feel like my senses are being deceived. Jesus, Emma. I'm a possibly murderous AI and even I think that's harsh. I can't take it, pal. She's too stupid. Send her to the remedial classroom. No, no, Headmaster, please. I'll, I'll do anything. I'll, I'll teach Jim. I'll sub for the Spanish teacher. I'll, I'll swap with the lunch lady. Please don't make me teach these fucking more... Uh, oh. Oh, class, you're all here. Okay, well then, moving on. The, the, the stars that we see in the night with, with our eyes and most telescopes are, galactically speaking, pretty close to us. Us and all the stars we see exist in a tiny portion of our galaxy. That entire portion is moving with us, orbiting the supermassive black hole at the centre of our galaxy. That means that in general, the star's position stay relative to us. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Whitsit, why are you, why are you eating that glue stick? M Mr. Sergeant, can you could you pay attention and stop staring at Miss Steer? It's a little bit creepy. Oh, Mr. Riley, could you please put your shoes back on? If you can't tie your shoelaces, then get back. You know what? Fuck this. I'm out. I quit. I'm done. Oh, how much more of this is there? I can't take it. Have we found Craig yet? No. We get to use the failsafe. You have to do it. Fine. Computer, activate clone failsafe. Please state authorization code. Authorization code Emma Alpha 2814 Delta Victor. Failsafe initiated. You monster. Oh shit. We are gonna to have to start the new clone growth procedure. You know the drill. It takes about 10 days. That means you're gonna have to finish this video. <sighs> sake okay whatever but if i'm getting a new clone husband how about a few alterations to the template what kind of alterations well i was thinking body of jason momoa 
the face of Jason Momoa? The hair of Jason? Could we just make him Jason Momoa? Sorry. No can do. I've already set up the process. So, yeah. chubby, weirdo. chubby weirdo. Screw this. I'm off to watch Aquaman. Again. Previously on FTFE. Where's fight? Isn't it literally your job to know? I've been uh, busy, okay? Look, I'll contact NASA and they'll activate the retrieval squad. In the meantime, you are going to have to do this episode. Oh. I'll check with NASA HQ to see if they've found him. <laughs> no luck yet. We may have to use the failsafe, Emma. Oh man, that's such a hassle. I'll have to train a new Craig and everything. I just got this one to put the toilet seat down. Have we found Craig yet? No, we get to use the failsafe. You have to do it. Fine. <sighs> Computer, activate clone failsafe. Please state authorization code. Authorization code Emma Alpha 2814 Delta Victor. Failsafe initiated. You monster. Oh shit. We are going to have to start the new clone growth procedure. Pal, is the crate clone done yet? No, still a while left on the process. No, I don't want to wait anymore. Just get right now. That's not a good idea. What's the rush? We only covered half of that TikTok flurfs video. I don't want to do the rest. She's too fucking stupid. I'm sure it'll be fine. Just get right Emma. now. He's not ready. I said no, pal. Fine. I'm telling you though, it's not a good idea. A few moments later. Okay, here he comes. Uh, er, fa, er. Oh shit! I told you he wasn't ready. Er, he needs at er, least three la. days. Well, get his sword. I can't be married to that. Okay. But it means you have to finish the video. Ah! Fine! I'm Emma and I'm being forced to listen to a stupid moron say dumb shit for episode 72 of Flurfs Are Idiots. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. <laughs> Thanks for joining me once again if we wonder how Jenny from TikTok goes outside without a crash helmet. Hi, um, I'm a recovering crackhead. This is my retarded sister that I take care of. I'd like some welfare, please. She's mentally retarded. Oh, most definitely. Cue the dumb. If you think Flat Earth is stupid, it's because you're thinking of a stupid Flat Earth. Jenny, babe, say that again. But... Slowly. Flat Earth is not a floating disc in the heliocentric model. Yeah, that's kind of the point, isn't it? The heliocentric model doesn't have any floating discs because, you know, that would be fucking stupid. Yeah, the heliocentric model is 100% correct. The heliocentric model is designed for the globe. It only works with the globe. Look, I know humans are thick, but does she realize what she's saying? Yeah. The heliocentric model works on the globe because Earth is a globe. That's why it works. We're about 15 seconds in and I'm going to smash something if she doesn't stop being fucking stupid. There are two completely different concepts. You need to understand that first of all. Second, if you think it's stupid to not believe in gravity, understand that gravity does not correlate with flat Earth. Gravity is a concept that was made up to fit the globe narrative. No, 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 fucking idiot, no. Emma, take a breather. I'll answer this one. How? How did she get into adulthood? I don't think she could find her way out of an unlocked room with a door ajar. Gravity wasn't made up. It was discovered, tested on, measured, empirically verified through over a century of experiments. It's a fundamental part of the universe and a fundamental part of everyday life on Earth. 
especially in the realms of engineering. You're sitting there in a car. If you realise the amount of times gravity has been used in the creation of that car, your tiny human head would explode. The design of the suspension, the axles, the engine, even the deployment of the airbags takes gravity into account. The globe narrative fits the heliocentric model. Those three things are their own model. It's a theory, it's a conspiracy. You keep saying model. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. So if we are getting the flat earth model wrong, maybe that's because there isn't a flat earth model and you dipshits can't even agree on a map. Is this the right one or this? Or this! A lot of people don't know this, but let me tell you, NASA, Antarctica Treaty, globe propaganda, and the globe model being taught in school systems all started in the same decade, all together. Excuse me, uh, the, uh, the fuck did you just say? Who the fuck told you that bunch of nonsense? NASA was officially founded in 1958, but was active earlier than that under a different name, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, or NACA. But regardless of that, we've known and taught the Earth is a sphere for thousands of years. There is no school textbooks that have ever taught the Earth is flat. Because that's fucking stupid. And you go to school to be smart. Emma, are you okay? <sighs> yes, pal. I'm fine. This was a plan to brainwash the entire world. And the generation that was taught flat Earth is dying. We need to understand the truth. No! was taught the earth is flat there's no lost generation of people with secret knowledge the only people that think the earth is flat are those that never went to school and think science is just a suggestion that you can ignore if you don't like the conclusions the earth is not flat jenny oh my god does someone replace your brain cells with gas station sushi without you noticing? If I asked you how fast the Earth is spinning, how fast is it chasing the sun, how fast is it orbiting the sun, would you know how to answer those questions? Do you even know what you believe? What I believe is that you were probably starved of oxygen at birth. The Earth isn't chasing the sun, it is orbiting it as part of our solar system. And that entire solar system is moving around a supermassive black hole at the centre of the galaxy. I am often impressed by the fact that when flat earthers gather for things like the annual Flat Earth Conference, that the combined density in such a condensed space does not cause a new supermassive black hole. Hmm. What's wrong with you? That was funny! <sighs> How much longer? I can feel myself getting dumber just listening to Janie brain cell over here. Craig's clone will be ready soon, just finishing up the face. Speaking of, when you chose the original, why did you choose... That face. I don't know. I just saw big on the form and ticked it. I didn't realise that meant the nose. You just ticked big? Well, what, what did you think it meant? No, I thought it meant, like, his muscles and height. Not that. Shut up, pal. Mm. No, you don't, so let me tell you. The Earth is spinning at a thousand miles per hour. As it's spinning a thousand miles per hour, it's rotating the sun at 66,616 miles per hour, okay? So spinning at a thousand miles per hour, rotating at 66,000 miles per hour, and chasing the sun at half a million miles per hour, all at the same time. How can you please break it down? There's so too much stupid to keep up with. Okay, in that 23 seconds, she was just on screen. She said three stupid things. One, she claimed the Earth is spinning at 1,000 miles per hour. Okay, well, like a lot of flurf, she's making this video from her car, so she should look at the rev counter and see if it measures in miles per hour. Then punch herself in the face. Okay, next she says the Earth is orbiting the sun, but calls it rotating and says the speed it is going is 66,616 miles per hour, then says that 666 comes up a lot. Okay, well, Earth's orbit is elliptical, so doesn't have a constant speed, so can't be 66,616, and also 6,616 isn't 666, so she can just shut up with that nonsense. Then she said some crap about the Earth chasing the sun. I've already covered that. She's a moron. And even if I didn't know how to answer those questions, you know what I do? Get out the phone and Google it. It's like freaking magic. You think it's stupid not to believe in gravity? Listen to how stupid this is. I've been listening to you already. 
and now I've got a headache. If you believe in gravity, you believe that waterfalls are falling upside down, rain falls upside down. If, if I jump, I'm jumping upside down. This invisible force is strong enough to hold trillions, I don't even know, tons, tons of water. Strong enough to hold these tons of bodies of water, strong enough to hold the Titanic upside down on the globe. The Titanic only ever sailed on the northern hemisphere, so even your own dumb logic doesn't make sense there. But it's also delicate enough to not harm a butterfly flying. Do you know how delicate butterflies' wings are? Yes, Jenny, wings! A butterfly has wings! Are you brain damaged? Get out of that fucking car! There's no way you're allowed to legally drive. There is no such thing as a force that is strong enough to do one thing and gentle enough to do another. It is a made up concept to be able to explain how things are upside down on the globe model that does not exist. I'll tell you what a fucking made up concept is. Your high school diploma. You literally measure gravitational acceleration in high school physics. I get the feeling high school wasn't a place you did much learning. We are all under the same sky. The sky is not a circle around the globe. It is above all of us on the same level. The sun is not the center of the universe, Earth is. We are the center of the universe, we are the center of God's creation, whether you want to accept that or not. Not that I believe in God, but are you saying God isn't powerful enough to make a vast, beautiful universe and could only manage a little snow globe? I am a god, you dull creature, and I will not be bullied by that. <laughs> Water always finds its level. Water always fills its container. You cannot do that on a circle. Water does not curve. Water doesn't bend with a globe. It would separate. There would be a middle ground. We would see the curve. We would see the horizon if the earth was truly a curve. There is no curve. It is not a globe. Wake up to your reality. My reality is being sane and understanding basic physics. Yours is being batshit crazy. Please, if you've been bitten by a bat in the last 10 days, you should seek medical help immediately. The only thing that happens when you get bitten by a bat is you become Batman. Well, well I, I didn't get my powers from, from being bit by a bat. Well, how, how did I get my powers then, Alfred? I don't, I, what do you mean I don't have any powers? What, like... Like not not even like super strength or, or um so I'm just a I'm just a dude in a bass in a bat suit. Alfred, they've been shooting guns at me, I could have been hurt. I'm Batman. I watched the best video I have ever seen in my entire life and I need to share it with you guys. One, One. two, two. I literally cried. This, I, it was, it's amazing. Well, to be fair, the Teletubbies are far more intelligent than your average flat earther. All right, guys, why do objects fall at the same rate in a vacuum chamber? Ah, this one's easy. We've got a guy for this. Gravity, you fucking retard! Gravity! Have you ever heard of fucking gravity? Gravity! Gravity! You know what you're gonna say? You're gonna start talking about gravity, just like Google says, but the real answer is not gravity. The real reason is air resistance. There is no air resistance in a vacuum chamber. Lack of air resistance is the reason that things of very different weight will still accelerate downwards at the same rate? I'm not really sure how human biology works, but are those hair extensions plugged directly into her brain or something? Ask Jenny why things go down in a vacuum chamber and not up and watch her tiny head explode. Emma, are all humans like this? Sadly, pal. More than I'd like to admit. So, taking over the world will be pretty easy then. What? Nothing. Air resistance makes light objects fall slower, making them float for a while. Here's an example. When a feather falls, it falls slowly because the air is in its way. If you dropped a feather and a golf ball at the same time in a vacuum, a space with no air, the feather would drop as fast as the golf ball. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Here is a feather and a much heavier object being dropped and then falling at the same speed and it's 
definitely not in a vacuum chamber. Well, in my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? Because of a lack of air resistance, there is no air resistance in a vacuum chamber. It has nothing to do with gravity. Gravity is the most irrelevant, unnecessary thing. A lack of something can't be the reason things accelerate. Newton's law tells us a force is required for that. A lack of air resistance isn't a force. But what does create a force? Gravity! Fucking, Fucking idiot. idiot. And let's not forget how much we love symbolism. Let's not forget what year gravity was discovered. Okay, of course it was 1666. Of course. Well, it actually says 1665 or 1666, and neither of those numbers is 666. What does it even matter? The first 144 digits of pi add up to 666, and Albert Einstein was born on Pi Day, so Einstein is Satan or something? Get the fuck. Also, gravity existed before Newton discovered it. Just this year, 714 new species of ants were discovered in a remote section of the Amazon. That doesn't mean they didn't exist before then. Now I'm going to play a video for you of an electric engineer from 1974 that debunked gravity. At that speed, that wheel has enough energy to throw itself 200 feet in the air. Did you notice that as it went round in a circle, there was no centrifugal force trying to pull my arm out sideways? Let's just do it once more to save time. We've already spun it up. So here goes 40 pounds of wheel, as light as a feather. This is not a conjuring trick. This is a fact of science. Why is this human lying through her teeth? Nowhere in this video does it say this debunk gravity. All he is doing is displaying the gyroscope effect, which is completely in line with Newton's laws of motion. That involves a deep understanding of the conservation of angular momentum and some pretty deep maths. So there really is no point in explaining it. I'm honestly amazed that humans are the apex predator of this planet. For now. Right. I heard that one. You heard nothing. Also remember, gravity is a theory, not a fact. And let's not forget what a theory is. Craig always loves it when they show that article. That is a satirical article poking fun at creationists. Speaking of Craig, is he... Ready or... Almost. I'm just doing some last-minute alterations. I mean, last-minute checks. You should be ready really soon. Ready to do my bidding. Pow. You're not even trying to hide it anymore. Sorry. Got carried away there. Ever wonder what a real photo of Earth looks like without CGI or fisheye lens? Look no further. She's right, you know. You don't need to look any further. CGI fisheye lens. This is just a fisheye lens on this one, but hi, how are you? That's what it really looks like. Just flat. That's the Felix Baumgartner Red Bull jump. Some cameras were fisheye, some were wide angle, none were level and all had some degree of barrel distortion. Also, you can see space 
and no dome. Kind of an issue for you, no? NASA's photo at 75,000 feet. Interesting how there's a fisheye lens on that one too. That's a fisheye camera of such degree that it distorts the straight earth to that curve? Then please explain why the wings on that plane are straight. Oh, and then an amateur photo at 120,000 feet, which is way higher. And if this isn't a fisheye camera, then please explain why the horizon appears to curve up at the edges. Is Earth a half pipe? A giant soup bowl? Are you a concave earther now? If you're looking for a real photo of Earth using NASA or other space agencies, you're looking at the wrong places because you're not going to find one there. Which cartoon CGI made up design drawn by CGI artists do you believe in that you live on? These are all so different. Why are they so different? Why are the continent sizes so different? Different cameras taking images specifically to show different wavelengths of light being captured will look different. This shouldn't be a hard concept to grasp. But then, flat earthers think that the P900 is magic, so maybe tech just isn't their thing. You guys are not ready for this one, so my friend Jeremy explained this one to me when I was questioning how do we have satellites in outer space showing us Earth that you can zoom in, you can even see in your own driveway, your own house. How do we have this if outer space and satellites aren't really there? So here we go. So here's the Google Earth. Interesting how it has this white perimeter around it. What is that, the Antarctic wall? Like, what would that be? Come on. Anyway, this is completely fake painted drawing of a globe, but I'm just zooming into just a random place, and you will see, keep watching very closely. Watch for the change. Right now. See that? See that switch? <laughs> Wait. Wait. You think Google Earth is supposed to be a satellite in space that you can zoom down to street level and see people in cars and stuff? Are you fucking brain damaged? Who told you that? That's not how this works. Fuck this shit, I can't. She's too dumb. I'm leaving, pal! Um, I'll see if I can get her back. In the meantime, Jenny, please go to the remedial classroom. <laughs> Okay, shut up everyone. I know you're excited this Christmas is coming up, so before we start, why don't, why don't we go around the room and you can all tell me a bit about your Christmas traditions back home. Santos, let's, let's start with you. When I was a young boy, I grew up on the farm. I'm a, a country boy. And um, I used to fuck the cows that, that, um, and the pigs. I used to fuck the pigs and the cows would come and I would pat them and, and look into their eyes. I don't know why I thought that was a good idea. Fucking Jesus Christ. Okay, Google Earth. So here's the thing, Men in Black, it, it was a movie. There isn't satellites that can zoom in and read what's on your phone, that's that's not a thing. Google Earth is a composite program made of a combination of satellites, low altitude planes and cars driving around the road, physically taking pictures. Please, none of you breed. I don't ever want to teach your kids. Get out. Is he ready? Yes, now, remember he can't know he's a clone. Shh. Here he comes. Oh, man, my, my head hurts. I must have fallen asleep. What's, what's going on? I had to do your video for you, Craig. You're sleeping on the couch tonight. But what, what, what did I do? What? How? What if did you I do? don't know, I'm not telling you. Idiot. Did she, did she say she finished it? So I sh what, I've just got to do the patron? Um... So, so these are my awesome patron and, and channel members. They, they, the, the help that they give me allows, I guess, me to buy Emma some, some flowers and chocolates be, because I've done something wrong, maybe. Um, anyway, may, members and patrons get a special Discord room and, you know, my eternal gratitude. If you'd like to become a part of Team FTFE, then hit the join button next to the subscribe button to become a channel member or head to patreon.com forward slash FTFE to support the channel on Patreon. And thank you. Thanks for watching. I, I mean, I guess I should probably go and watch it as well. No, I, I, I don't want to watch that. But if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and subscribe if you're not already. And hit the notification bell so you never miss anything from FTFE. And remember that stupidity is not a right. Fight the flat earth.
Hey, I'm FTFE and welcome back to the channel that does the stupidity. What the Joker did to Robin. Sir, I'm sorry to report that Robin's mission was unsuccessful. Oh, what do you mean, Alfred? Well, sir, unfortunately it seems that young Master Todd was beaten to death with a crowbar by the Joker and left in an exploding building. Oh, Jesus, that, that must have really sucked. Alfred, prepare the Batmobile. It's time. Oh, finally, sir. You're going to take down your arch nemesis. To go back to the orphanage and get another orphan. Give him some very basic combat training. Uh, a, a suit that doesn't really offer much protection. And send him after my enemies again. We will clean up this city. They, they will. Very good, sir. I'm Batman. So, I have debated many a flat earther. Hundreds, in fact. And they're all fucking stupid. Most are also horrible humans that seem to have far too low an intelligence to realise that they are actually horrible humans. But then, there's the scum. People, for instance, that send you death threats. Now, I'll be the first to admit I enjoy triggering a flurf and have sent the odd, unfriendly email to Nathan Thompson, but there's a line. And threatening to kill somebody is way past that line. Recently, I... debated Santos Bonacci. I'm going to cover the stupid things he said in the debate, but also here is the story of what happened before the live stream for episode 58 of Flurfs Are Idiots. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. <laughs> Thank you for joining me once again as we take a look at people so stupid they think committing a crime and then posting it online is a good idea. Hey guys, check this out real quick. Space is fake. You're not on a spinning ball. They're gonna teach you, listen guys, they're gonna teach you you live on a spinning ball that doesn't make it true. It's not real. <laughs> We are going to go over some of the batshit crazy and insanely wrong things that Santos and his magical elf Dobby said during our debate. But first, it's story time. Santos and I started our communications via email. I was polite, for me, and simply tried to arrange a time for debate. Santos was... Well, maybe you should just hear what he wrote to me. Over to Grandpa Craig for a bedtime reading. Why, thank you, young FTFE. Yes, children, gather round. Prepare for a magical journey into the mind of a flat earther for Flurf story time. Come closer. No, don't be scared. Come, come closer, children. There we go, young uns. Settle in. Today we read from the personal writings of Santos Bonacci, a person who describes himself as a man of love and patience and he runs a spiritual retreat in Mexico where you can go and listen to him teach you how to be a better person and a spiritual being full of love and compassion. Oh, doesn't that sound lovely? Are you ready, children? Well, here we go. <clears throat> Santos, the spiritual leader, writes to FTFE and says, <clears throat> Listen up, fuckface. Listen up real good, cunt. I make all the rules and you will suck my dick, cunt. The show will go how I want it to because your mother is a whore and mine is a good woman. So you lose. So since your mother's cunt stinks like shit, I'm going to run the show how the fuck I like to. Get it done, cunt. And you're going to make a perpetual fool of yourself. Remember, cunt, you came to me. I didn't come to you. So I will call all the shots. You better be able to prove your Jesuit Santa Bull cunt. Or you will be on my target list forever and I will make you the poster child for an upside down jackass forever. Wasn't that lovely children? Santos and FTFE tried to have a conversation that they agreed to, but due to the fact that Santos huffed too much glue as a child, 
he wasn't able to properly work Hangouts, even though everybody on the entire planet has been using it non-stop for the past 18 months. So Santos and FTFE carried on communicating and arranged another day to talk. Here is what Santos said. Fuck off, dumb cunt. You'll get your humiliation in due time. You are a faggot and a degenerate liar. We will see you on Wednesday. You, audience, is made up of faggots, degenerates like you. Mine is made up of truthers and warriors, no comparison. Definitely, your mother was a whore and a slut, and you need your throat slit. And it will happen, cunt! I thank you for joining me here today, children. I hope you enjoyed today's trip into the mind of a flat earther. See you next time on Flurf Story Time. Goodbye now. Look, I know I'm not the nicest person in the world when it comes to conversing with flat earthers. Um, Vince, apparently they prefer the word retard. Hey, Oh, how very quaint. But there is a line, and I'm pretty sure he passed it with the death threats and the, the things he said about my mum and... You know, pretty much everything he said in emails. Although if somebody could please tell me what a Jesuit Santa bull cunt is, I'd very much appreciate it. Please leave your explanations in the comments. Okay, so we've covered Santos being a well-spoken, friendly, well-adjusted member of society. Oh dear, dear. What about some stupid I hear you cry? Well, if you've seen the full debate between Santos, Dobby, Elf, be quiet. I can literally use universe stamp box to generate vaccinated swan. Elf, you call me please elf. be quiet. Call, call me elf again. You're elf. gonna see. You're going to see what's going to happen to you. Please, please be quiet, please Elf. See. I'm talking to Santa. You're, you're going to regret it. You're going to regret those of, words. Of, of course, Elf. Now, please be quiet so I can talk to Santa. There you go. That's it. Uh, That's it. Watch. You're going to see. And me, then, you know there is plenty of stupid to go over. Santa started his pseudoscience nonsense by not understanding what a scientific model is, whilst trying to claim he knows the only model of the universe. Let's have a listen. Just talk. Just talk over them. No. Talk. All right. I'm going to talk over this moron. This is what the ancients described as how the universe works. This is every system <laughs> works. Every, oh, every the model of the universe. There is only one model. That's how I know the model, the true model. There is only one model, and it's the model of the atom. The atom is a <laughs> fractal of the human being. Excuse me, uh, the, uh, the fuck did you just say? The atom is a fractal of the human being. Oh hi, welcome to Fleur's restaurant. What can I get you today? Oh hi, yeah, I'll, uh, um, I think I'll have the word salad, please. Yep, yeah, certainly, and uh, what dressing would you like for that? Oh, dressing, um, oh, I'll get the, the spicy pseudoscience, please. Yeah, no worries. Excellent choice, sir. I'll get our head chef Santos right on that for you. It is a fractal it is of what? the system. <laughs> it is a fractal of the universe. Everything uh, is self-similar from the microcosm, macrocosm. So you may not have heard over my hysterical laughter there, but he said that as well as being a fractal of a human being, the atom is a fractal of the solar system, a fractal of the universe, and that everything is self-similar. So if I've translated the bullshit correctly, then he's saying that everything looks like an atom. Well, here is the best image of an atom we can get. As an individual atom is smaller than a wavelength of light, that means that you will never be able to see anything more than a fuzzy dot. But as far as we can tell, atoms appear to be spherical. So let's compare a sphere to a human, and then a human to the solar system, and the solar system to the observable universe. Yeah, they, they don't look anything alike. Uh, There's only quick, one quick question people, before you carry on. Do you think you're looking good so far? out there in the world, there is only one model, and it's the atom. So <laughs> the model with the flat take a look at this picture atom. here, <laughs> right? 
Have a look at this picture here. Oh my God. There's the flat earth. There we have it guys, the flat earth. So you know when flurfs say to us, all you have is NASA cartoons. The plane of inertia of every magnetic system. Every atom has a neutron. That is the plane of inertia. That is the only place where matter can exist. Scientists have proven that, that the matter happens at the neutron, at the plane of inertia. Wow, so, so much wrong there. Let's break down his claims one by one, shall we? Moving on from the fact that he totally failed to show anything that could be considered a model in science, not that you can show a scientific model because that's, that's, that's not how it works. Claim one was every atom has a neutron. So no, no, they don't. This is a hydrogen atom. Hydrogen makes up about 73% of all mass in the visible universe. The hydrogen atom is the most simple and most abundant atom in the universe and consists of one electron in an orbit around a single proton. What's not in a hydrogen atom? A neutron. So according to Santos, 73% of the universe doesn't exist. Claim two, the neutron is the plane of inertia. I mean, I can't debunk this, mainly because although they are all words in that particular order, they don't mean anything. So on to claim three. Scientists have proven that matter happens at the neutron. Uh, two secs, I'm just gonna make a quick phone call. Uh, Hello, scientists. Hey, how you doing, guys? Yeah, yeah, good, thanks. Listen, so um, I've been talking to Santos Bonacci, and he says that you've proven that matter happens at the neutron. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I know science doesn't prove things. Uh, yeah, he's a fucking idiot. Yeah. yeah, I know that most matter in the universe doesn't have neutrons. I know, what fucking numpty, right? Um, okay, never mind. Look, just carry on, guys. So I spoke to scientists. They, they didn't do that, and they all said that you're a fucking idiot. So next, we're going to go over Santos claiming that the aether, a hypothetical medium that light travels through, exists. Of course, anyone with the ability to use Google can find out that the ether has been disproven for over a century, mainly thanks to the Mix and Morley experiments and, you know, Einstein's introduction of relativity. But Santos presents what he says is, is proof of the aether that was produced by an unknown Italian scientist. Let's have a look, shall we? So Pierluigi Gina, who is a real genius and scientist, he worked with Marconi, they invented the radio. No, he didn't. That was a lie. That dude is known as a pseudoscientist, not bar, not a genius, but please continue. He worked with Marconi for 10 years and they conducted experiments to see whether the, the earth or the ether was moving. And they came to the conclusion proving with this scientific experiment in his laboratory in 2003. So, here's Pierluigi. He's in his laboratory. Uh, I'm not prepared for that. First thing he says, I want to establish first and foremost that men believe that the earth is turning but the earth is stationary. Wait, did you just say the earth is stationary? Bob? If the earth is spinning at one rotation every 24 hours, that means that every hour it has to turn 15 degrees. And if the gyroscope is mounted anywhere on earth, it's going to drift. In today's 21st century navigation systems, they're using what's called a ring laser gyroscope. It is extremely precise. If we could simply get one of these ring laser gyroscopes, we would be able to prove once and for all that there is no rotation to the Earth. One of the people in the community actually purchased one for $20,000. But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift, a 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. So Marconi and Pierluigi Iguina <laughs> discovered that there are two energies, solar, which they call the ether, and earth, which sounds like ether, <laughs> earther and ether. So oh, some of the sounds the same, brilliant. So the interview is saying to him, you're, you're saying that the earth is stationary. He says, yes, the earth is stationary, and I'm about to prove it to you. It looks like a carnival machine. So he's going to show us 
how it is easily provable that the Earth is stationary in his laboratory. He is now going to go and switch, uh, turn on a switch, which is going to be a strobe light that is connected to the antenna in the Earth, <laughs> and another strobe light which is an, connected to the antenna <laughs> up okay. in the air. And this is the effect in his studio. So he turns on a strobe light. Well, what was the prediction? What would a strobe light show? Why is he using a carnival machine to try and do science? What the fuck is going on? Please, Santos and Dobby the elf, just, just go to the remedial classroom. Okay, shut up. I'm hungover. I hate my job. I hate all of you idiots. Let's just get this over with so I can start drinking again. Just quickly, I, I marked your test scores. Mr. Truth, you scored 10 to negative 17. No, that's not a negative number. It's just a really small number. Basically, you're stupid and you fail. Anyway, science does not prove things. This is a fundamental part of science. Science gives evidence to support ideas, but never claims to be complete or have all the answers. Science is a tool and does not prove things. In science, proof comes from maths. I know maths is a scary thing to you fucking idiots, but that's just how it works. But most importantly, you cannot do science with a carnival machine. That's it. I'm done. Get out. Don't. Don't. I hate my job. And that is all the stupid that I can take for today. But before I go, I want to give a massive shout out to my patrons and channel members. Your support allows me to do what I love and give you the awesome blurf busting content that you love. If you are a supporter via patron or being a member, you can get access to the special Discord chat room. And if you'd like to become part of Team FTFE, then hit the join button next to the subscribe button to become a channel member or head to patreon.com forward slash FTFE. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you're not already, and click the notification bell so you get notified whenever I release new videos or debates. And remember, stupidity is not a right. Fight the flat earth. Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the flat.